one it is jdf listen i don't know what i'm gonna talk about i just pushed record so i'm gonna speak from the heart i think today we're gonna talk about being yourself and being you and the hardest thing to do is to be transparent i think for me at least i was always stuck in this world way back in the days uh growing up as a kid of not saying no or being the yes man um but you know what transparency is all about is getting down to the bottom of the problem. If you have an issue with someone, honestly, the best thing to do is just go and talk to that person, confront that person, my not confrontation. There's a difference. Just confront, be transparent and ask them, hey, you know, instead of all the gossiping and all of this and all of that, is there an issue that we're having or is there a problem? And then you can work it out. So uh, sometimes I think, that's People aren't statement. transparent. And I know we all have to wear a mask in life. I know that. I get it. Because you can't say, how your day? how's your day going? You're going to be like, my day's crap. How's your day? I get it. We all have a mask. But at least being transparent and being a man of your word. Those two things, I think, will make you the toughest, biggest, baddest man or woman on the planet. Is because, number one, you can't buy trust. You can't buy your word. If you break it, it's broken. No one's going to believe in you. No one's going to trust you. So that has to be built from the beginning. If you say something, you got to do it. Just don't say it because it's getting you out of a situation. If you say it, then do it. That's your word, right? It's gold. It's priceless. You can't pay for that back. Also, it's not for sale, right? So being a man of your word, and then also just being transparent. You know, sometimes you got to say no. Um, don't just be the yes man. I used to be out there and say, oh, I'll do this. Yes, I can do this. Yes, I can do this. Yes, I can do that. The only problem is I said yes, and I'm not going to let people down. So that's where my issue was back then. So I learned just now to be you. Be you, but also be transparent. Be a man or a woman of your word. If you say something, then do it. Uh, and if you don't, then you need to own up. You need to step up and be responsible. There's no one better that I respect than someone stepping up and saying, you know what? I own that. That was my mistake. I apologize for that. What can I do to make it better? Sometimes we got to own up to our mistakes. And there's a lot of people that don't do it. So that's what I think we're talking about is being a man of your word, being transparent and just, uh, own up on your own BS. You know what I mean? All right. That's all that's on my heart. Have a good day. Not much advice I'd want to give you because it's the pain that drives your success. It's the stumbles that make you get back up. These lessons can't be taught. It's the experience one has to learn. Sometimes people say life isn't fair, but it's all how you look at it. There are lessons I could teach you but you're the only one that must make the choices. Sometimes we'll lose the battle, but you must win the war. Wounds hurt, but now they're battle scars. I had to let you fall because God picked you back up. Life isn't a race, it's a marathon. Your longevity will tell your legacy. Good job, Jay. Fall. Well, it's been a while since I wrote. I'm sure at times everyone has moved. See me. I don't want to go back to where I was. All I could do is pray and hope, shake it off. But when I do, my mind says, nope. I mean, how do I deal with this? How do I even cope? I don't want to slide, but it is a slippery slope. I'm struggling, I'm grabbing, I slip because I missed the rope. My emotions are overflowing like a waterfall. The words I speak are positive. Well, at least I think they are. Overall, with stress occurring regularly, it's too fast. It's a hand side. Emotions are throwing like a curveball. But how can you even breathe when the air feels like ethanol? I mean, I want to fight back my mind. I want to brawl, but when I punch, I'm on the ground. I mean, I see the takedown. I begin to sprawl, but I miss. All I can do is crawl. Then I disappear, I'm gone. And it's just me. Staring at the ceiling wall. I mean, people can see my pain. You can see it in my eyeball. The sun would shine, but the darkness moves in, becomes a rainfall. I'm all over the place, like a human pinball. 
So I delay and I begin to stall. Please, God, take my hand before I fall. What's good, everybody? What's up, nigga? What's up for the weekend, nigga? What's up for the weekend? How's everybody doing? Mike is quiet. Mike is quiet. Hold on. Mike is quiet. Mike is quiet. Ooh, Mike is quiet. Oh, shit. Let me go check something. Uh, why is my mic quiet? It's dumb quiet. I see it's quiet. Ah, man, it's about to screw me up. Because I hear it crystal clear. How is my sound, y'all? Goddamn. Jack shit. Mike is quiet. It is it is dumb quiet. I see that negative 20. Um chest test test. Oh, let me see what my man oh, man. Shout out to my man Eric up in this bitch early. Get your money up, not your funny up. Um, can y'all hear me? How's my sound? Is it better? Uh see it. It's not, it's not where it need to be. Um fuck. All right, give me a second. Hate to do this. Can y'all hear me now? Is it getting better? Gucci sweater? Is that like plus 20 dB? Oh my God. This should be blowing y'all eardrums out. Um, Your audio volume dropped from 10 to A7. Oh, shit. Give me a second. Man, this, this won't be happening, yo. <laughs> um... Give me one second. I gotta, I gotta work through some shams. April verse Brent for the twenty. Ooh. Challenging my manhood. Uh, give me a second. Let me. I gotta go into my computer. It's, it's my main mic settings. I'm pretty sure. Sound settings. Da da da. Uh. Oh, there we go. All right, there we go. I see what happened. Uh, give me a second. I'm about to, uh, I got to turn it back down so I don't blow y'all eardrums out. That is the problem. <laughs> all right, all right. And I will always love you. All right, we back. <laughs> we back. Um, sometimes what happens is my daughter, uh-oh, we a little too high. We a little too high. Um, I hate to blame it on my daughter, but. If I leave my computer open, uh, what she will do, test, 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 damn, still loud. <sighs> Man, test, 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 microphone, test one. Damn, I'm clipping. I can see myself clipping. She will mess with my settings and think it's funny. How about now? How about now? Okay, okay. We have 50%. Barely clipping, but we up there. We up. Uh, I'll do that 45. All right. We should be Crystal. We should be Gucci. How's my... <laughs> I'm good now. Turn it down. Turn it down. How, how is it now, Jack? Uh, my man uh, on Twitch, he be hitting me up. That's Jack, guys. Hearing my brother's voice. Damn, I miss him. Oh, man. I think a lot of people do. And look, guys, when I tell you I got the clip of all clips, <laughs> shout out to you, Eric. I appreciate you jumping out here, sponsoring this show. I got money. But um, I still think I'm too loud. Uh, man, I'm going to have to go through this again. How about now? Um, This is what be happening, yo. I do this. I want to say it was at seven, my regular game. All right, put a one if y'all like my sound. Or if, no, I'm clipping. I can still see me clipping. Maybe the program just wasn't loaded. I'm a little pissed off about that. All right, I think we good now. I see we're barely clipping. We clipping. All right, Jack said I'm good. 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 All right, let's let's start that. Let's start that all over again. 
Now. Oh, my goodness. Test, test, test. All right, I messed up. <laughs> I messed up. I messed up. All right, so what was happening was I was adjusting the output volume and not my microphone volume. And that was messing me up. I think we I think we back. I think we back. I think we back. I think we back. All right. You know, hey, guys, <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> it, is what it is. <laughs> it is what it is. All right. We got ones in the chat. How's everybody doing for the weekend? Yeah, you know I'm saying how's everybody What's up, doing? Man? What's up for the weekend? nigga? So y'all said y'all wanted to party up in this bitch. All right. We could party up in here. We could party up in here. Uh, let's let's let let's let my man ASJ kick it off. Right. Yeah, you know I'm saying uh, bust them crazy dope moves. All right. Bang, bang. Tell me, tell me how valuable they are. They got Power Rangers in Mexico. Yeah, I'm saying. Hey, 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 hey. Look at Patty. She's saying she want to peg him. Oh, my goodness. What the fuck? <laughs> I thought this was a family show. <laughs> look, hey, look, look how flexible ASJ was, right? Look at him. Don't say it's Brent. Don't don't say it's Brent. <laughs> don't hey, don't say it's Brent, man. Y'all challenging Brent's man. Y'all challenging Brent's manhood out the gate. Y'all like that's Brent in there. Come on, don't What was the the top of the knees and the bottom? Like God, he grabbing his ankles. Oh my god! It's a weekend. We have a party. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> oh, if, look, if you not dancing, if you not out your chair, if you not in your car, turning the mount volume up. Look, this is party time. All right, 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 Jesus, Jesus, he was popping that thing, I saw Petty, she was about to pull out the strap, hey, yo, what the fuck, <laughs> anywho, 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 guys, it's a family, show. today was my daughter's birthday, uh, yes, we, it's been 48 hours of straight partying, and ups, and downs, and she was actually pretty good, she's really good today, um, yesterday she was pretty good yesterday. We had a sleepover last night. I mean, she woke up a bunch of times. Um, we went to like a little kid's place this morning. Then we went to like two places in the afternoon, then cake ice, you know, cake. And, you know, my side of the family over singing happy birthday. And she was like, you gotta say, and how old are you? So we sang all that good shit. Um, so that's where we are with that. I got this damn man. These gray hairs coming in, but anywho. 
Uh, shout out to my little daughter. It was a little, not a kerfuffle, but uh, uh, <laughs> she did not want to. She didn't want to go um, with her mom. I was like, uh, what's going on? She's like, I want to stay with you, daddy. I'm like, Ugh, I got to stream tonight. <laughs> like, I got to stream tonight. <laughs> Shit, God damn. I got some fire for the weekend tonight. Um, so I was like, got to go to your mom's. I'm going to see you on Monday, though. I'm going to see you on Monday. You got a party. You got to sleep over tomorrow. You know, because she, she get two parties. Um, you know what I'm saying? Uh, that's, that's just how it works. Uh, party with dad, then party with her mom, and then, you know. Uh, all that be all that. So, uh, anywho, shout out to all the uh, Aquariuses out there. If you believe in that astrology bullshit, yeah, you know I'm saying. Nope. Um, anywho, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. We about to be testing some manhood. Challenge my manhood. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And shout out to my man Dust coming in. Everybody like the stream. Please like the stream, guys. The sound may be off tonight, which is like blowing me. Um, but we here. We hear, I mean, we got more Power Rangers stuff. I mean, look, back in the day, Water. this is the ish I used to watch. You know what I'm I mean, along with Power Rangers, but bro, Captain Planet, he's our hero going to take pollution down to zero. You know, he's our powers uh, magnified and he's fighting on the planet side. Like that's fucking bars and shit like shit. Let's go planet. By your powers <laughs> combined, I am Captain Planet. Captain Planet, he's Come on. Hero. Take pollution down to zero. He's our powers magnified, and he's fighting on the planet side. Captain Planet. Now this shit was low key racist too. Yeah, I'm saying. But come on, this shit used to go so hard. Don't act like don't act like y'all didn't watch this shit because you had to watch it either before or after Power Rangers though, and everyone wanted to be fire. <laughs> there we go. There's our boy. <laughs> There's our boy. <laughs> no, there we go. I know. Brother starving. Yeah, I know, I know, I know some of y'all childhood crushes like, damn, are you really taking it back and shit, boy? <laughs> you pay for this, Captain Planet. We're the planet tears. You, you can be one too. too. Cause saving our planet is, is the thing to do. To do. <laughs> it's not the way. Hear what Captain Planet has, has to, to say. Yo, where the fuck Captain Planet live at, though, right? Let's get to the real questions. Oh, no, not a flatback. Coach King is up in the building. Oh, my God. That's you. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Look, man, when I be doing these Ranger streams and someone from Coach Gang pop up, I'll always know. You know what I'm saying? That's you. Oh, man. Hey, where was Captain Planet living at, though, man? In the ocean and shit? You know what I'm saying? In the ocean? In the ocean? Oh, man. Oh, my good guys. This is what I be doing. I just be uh, <laughs> trying to find content for you guys. Things that I enjoy. Hopefully, you guys enjoy them, too. Um, to just get the Power Ranger, get the juice going. Yeah, you know I'm saying, but we got a great. I'm talking like a great show tonight. I'm talking like when I look, we we going back to 2007. ASJ eating his words, but I'm gonna show y'all something. You know this Indiegogo stuff. <laughs> hey, you know how to get. You know how you want to make some money fast. You want to make some money fast. I'm gonna tell you how to get rich quick. You got to be a, a semi celebrity. Semi celebrity, like. Semi celebrity, yeah, 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 be famous and shit. Just a little bit of famous, just a little bit. And then what you want to do is launch an Indiegogo. You like Indiegogo? Yeah, 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 Indiegogo. What the fuck is that? Oh man, Indiegogo. You go, you come out with this movie called Survivals End and shit. Everyone's like, who the fuck is Survivals End? Like, who is this? Who would make a Survivals End? Who has the survival skills to make a movie about surviving? Okay, you probably like, Henry, who is this? Who, who can make a survival movie about surviving? You like, you go down, you like, oh shit, what's this? $12,000, you like, what the fuck? You got $12,000. Now here's the thing, guys, here's the thing. <laughs> Before y'all go berserk. <laughs> Before you go berserk. Before you go crazy. He never got the twelve thousand dollars. I'm saying he never got it. He never got it. Sorry. I had to look up some of this shit to, to I had to look up the rules so I could speak accurately. 
Okay, that's why I had to look it up. So the way Indiegogo works is you set a goal, right? And you run a campaign. So the campaign was two hundred and seventy five thousand dollars. You're like, OK, we want to raise two hundred seventy five thousand dollars to do this. All right. What, what was this? ASJ, t- tell us what's tell us what's going on, man. Kick that dope stuff. Kick it. Kick it for us one time. Come on, survivals in. Let's go, baby. Hey, everyone. My name is Austin St. John. Whoa. <laughs> oh, Austin St. John. All right. Look, man, Austin saying PP John. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know. But look, he wanted to run a movie, right? You like, man, look, when I when I went down the ASJ, the deep dark depths of Austin St. John, <laughs> holy shit. I start digging. I was digging. Dig, bro. You like to dig. And I'm like, wait, he had an Indiegogo movie? Like, yeah, man. Shit ain't that shit ain't pop off like he was supposed to pop off. Like, what do you mean? I thought he was, I thought it was. I thought it was I thought it was gonna pop off. He's like, no. Hey everybody, this is Austin St. John. Guess who I'm with? Aisha. <laughs> Aisha. You didn't know that. Wait, 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 wait. All right, here's the thing, guys. When ASJ came back, he was hot as fish grease. You know what I'm saying? The Red Ranger. He had all the little, all all of them on him, right? You know, riding his coattails. What? Wait, wait okay. So what had happened was we're talking about <laughs> not what had happened was you know, <laughs> Mister fighting off three guys, four, four guys that didn't look like him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The Survival's cow. end. All right, my new upcoming feature, and I have an Indiegogo yes. plan. And Support she, him. I'm excited because she. She's all for it. It's all, I'm totally for it. It's going to be awesome, it. you guys. Come on, let's donate and get this happening for Austin. Wait, wait, wait. Are donate. You for it? Yes, and I need you guys to donate because I want to see Austin St. John on the big screen again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Yes, absolutely. Oh. Now you've heard, all right? Thank you guys already who have donated, and those of you who haven't, thank you in advance. All right, ASJ. Shout out to him. All right, that was the donate campaign. You're like, damn. What's the movie about? All right, let's get back to it. I wanted to personally welcome you and thank you for visiting my crowdfunding campaign page for my new feature film, Survival's End. Ooh, it's going to be gritty, bro. It's going to be like a hunted part two starting ASJ and shit. You're going to be like, yo, I never knew about this shit. Either apparently not too many people did. The film is going to be an action packed edge of your seat thriller about what happens in the two years. Get your popcorn. Controllable Ebola virus strain <laughs> oh. in the United States. New York has fallen. 90% of the world's population is either infected or dead. The government has instituted martial law and worse. Death Ooh. squads to purge the existing population. Not the purge. Oh, shit. All this is happening. And the only person that's going to save us is ASJ. Nope. Humanity oh, shit, is on its man. head, and nothing is as it seems. It is my character's calling to provide some semblance <laughs> of security and peace to the survivors of the worst plague Ooh. in world history. Get to it. I hear it. Look, I hear it returns because if you think about it, he was over in, um, he was uh, playing EMC or. Uh, you know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. I'm saying EMT. Sorry, a hero returns. Like, well, you know, Will Smith thought he was. You know, I am legend. No, no, no. Meet survival's end. <laughs> you remember me as Austin St. John or Jason Lee Scott? Oh, Jason Lee Scott, boy. The leader and original Red Ranger of television's Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. I like how he throw in the leadership. Leader, original Red Ranger. Okay. But what most of you don't know is that after a very successful film and television career, I went and decided to serve my film. Wait, wait, he said film successful film career. Like uh, we got to call a cap. Stop the cap community and my country as a paramedic with tactical medical (laughs) liabilities. Then I chose to do it again overseas in conjunction with U.S. military operations. I spent years training, preparing and learning how to apply countless survival skills in the field skills necessary for all of us to make it home alive it was that career path which prepared me for my upcoming role in survival's end oh real survival techniques oh man then he was in the jungle holy shit survival's end is another exploration into edu fiction by multi-award winning producer and director daniel e springett the survival skills that you will see in this film are real they are applicable in real life or death situations 
The characters in this film, like myself, will have a moment to <laughs> oh choose the right survival skill that will have the right or the wrong effect on their ability to survive. The Blu-ray DVD will offer educational content as well as bonus commentary supplied by myself as well as a team of survival specialists. Anyone get the anyone get the Blu-ray? <laughs> oh my god. Blue, take actual real life survival <laughs> skills and have managed to wrap them into the film that you are going to watch. Oh no. Help bring our vision to life. Look, man, guys, 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 look. Help bring our vision to life, man. Watch. Don't do it, brothers and sisters. Don't do it. Don't, I'm telling you, don't do it. We are very excited to make this film, but we need your help to make it happen. As appreciation for your donation in helping to make this film happen, okay, well, we, we get. created all sorts of various level budgetary incentives. Anything from <laughs> limited edition t-shirts to a chance to be an extra in the film, as well as a unique survival camping trip with yours truly as your guide. Now, this is, this is where I wanted to hone in on. Very intimate survival trip with your guy and this is one ASJ this is not the first time he's offered um something like this part of an Indiegogo uh when we get to the order you'll see another thing where they're basically trying to pimp him out uh you have to realize when he came back from overseas he was you know rumored to be charging 25 to 50 thousand dollars uh for guarantees so they thought that would transition into film but it didn't no matter how you decide to participate, I want to personally thank you for your contribution to humanity by supporting Survival's End. All this right. film will confront your innermost. <laughs> All right, ASJ. I, I will let him cook. Let him cook. Uh, but we got some other stuff to get to. You like, like you like Henry. Wait, 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 wait. What kind of videos is on this website? Shout out to Daniel Springen or whatever his name is. Uh, we do have some tips for you guys compliments of ASJ um, and let, let's let's hear one of them okay this is all right so this is tip number 28 this is tip number 28 not not 26 <laughs> not, not number one either it's 28 it's 28 so let's hear tip 28 and when you go to the video like you look at the uh, page you're like where's all the other ones like hey shut up Henry shut up man Shit, we talking about that. All right, so different things that you can look at for fire material. Things like this, brown, extremely crackly. Not a lot of life left in this. <laughs> this is going to burn really well. It's going to put off a dry smoke. Dry smoke is great if you're not trying to give off your location. Of course, you still need to be considerate of who is downwind. They pick whoa, 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 whoa. Is he being hunted? Come on, man. <laughs> is he being hunted? Oh, no. That can cause you problems. Now, in all honesty, though, the, the tips you've given are, are, are legit. You do want to go for the dryer shit. You're but. trying not to be found. <laughs> but dry materials, great for low smoke fires versus green leafy. Green leafy means it's got lots of fluid. It's still alive. Water. Water, green leafy materials are going to put off a ton of smoke. It's not so bad. So if I'm trying to set up a smoke signal, if I'm <laughs> trying to grab somebody's attention, lots of stuff like this is going to be great. The difference is going to be the dry stuff ignites with ease. This stuff is going to be harder to ignite. So you're going to have to be careful with your kindling. You're going to have to take a look. All right, all right, all right. So you kind of you kind of get the feel right now. Look, guys, when it comes to ASJ, I know he be capping. I know he be capping. But, you know, before we ain't going to even belabor the point, we just going to get into it. Uh, there was a story, but, you know, you see the Indiegogo. We're going to come back to Indiegogo um, a little bit. You know what I'm saying? This going to be a little it's going to be a little unorganized stream. Uh, there was a story about how him and Twee. Uh, I guess he would rub up. She would rub up against him, and then he would be starving. Yeah, that brother's starving. Yes, sir, brother. And he literally would rub his dick on her. I don't even know how even nice nice to say it, but you know, like Henry, that's a lot. That's that's pretty heavy. Why would you? Why would you say that he would do something like that? Like you better have proof, man, because we don't want ASJ to come out and say he didn't do it. Now, when he did do this. I imagine maybe some people caught up on that shit and did it with some backlash. I don't know for sure because the original video was deleted. But the thing about the internet, you know, it's it can be forever. And the way you solidify something being forever is people react to it, right? Reactors react to it and then they re-upload. And then that video that you want it deleted, 
is here forever. Okay, you like shit, and you like, well, where is it? Like, look, <laughs> look, look, the look, ladies. look, 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 look. <laughs> you like, well, Henry, you you got it. I'm like, look, man. And before I show it, I want to thank each and every one of you guys who have been going through. And Brent came at the perfect time <laughs> to see his boy ASJ talk about rubbing his dick up against Tweet. Um, uh, you guys came at the perfect time to hear this story. Because people think, you know, you got to get it from the horse's mouth and shit. You know, all that bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Shut up, bitch. Um, but, you know, here is here it go. So you can hear it from the horse's mouth on, on what, what's going on. What's going on? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, let's do it. Uh, here we go, y'all. This is one ASJ. Like, ain't no way ASJ. Ain't no way ASJ said that shit. Like, look, so my man right here, let's let us let us put some respect on the creator's name. Uh, DHR Fire Studio. Let's give him a thumbs up. You know, let's drop a comment. Sometimes when I drop a comment, like, oh, man, this is gold. Thank you. You know, just something. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> all right so um, he'll probably get notified like, yo, hey, uh, Henry put a comment on your shit. What's going on? Uh, anywho, uh, let's hear it. What's up, y'all? DHRT. Welcome back to my channel. So uh, we're going to react to my boy. What? It's the mighty. What? <laughs> oh, I hit the wrong button. All right. Sorry. Austin St. John. My tribute to Trini, the Yellow <laughs> Ranger. Also John. <laughs> Any so, sexual discovery was not mentioned. Um, <laughs> Yo, <laughs> Brent me here, he like sexual discussion. Nah, it was nothing sexual. I just rubbed my dick on her. She saw it and shit. She smiled and shit. Yeah, I'm saying, but it was nothing sexual and shit. All right. Um, two days ago was a tribute to the original Yellow Ranger Blue Train of the day of her passing, September 3rd, 2001, <laughs> which was Tuesday. Uh, all right, let's I did get a video on this. Everybody ha has done a video on this. Uh, uh, enough in my mind. It was Tweet Trang. She yeah. played Trini, the Yellow Ranger. All right, <laughs> here we go. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to talk about her death too much because I want to stay on the positive side. Yeah. So many incredible things that are just too wonderful not to discuss rather than the fact that she was killed in a car accident. The stuff you don't know. You know she was beautiful. She had the silky long hair. Man. Uh, typical to Caucasian descent. <laughs> man, my man is starving. Yeah, that brother's starving. <laughs> <laughs> now look, guys, 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 guys. Um, sometimes if you if you try to find this video, I remember watching it too. Uh, it, it it's gone. It's like off. It's off off the main. Be probably because he was talking about ripping his dick on her. But you know, RIP tweet. Buttermilk skin. To be honest, look, he talking. Look, it's sexual already. Oh, she was nice. She had that buttermilk skin and shit. Like yo, <laughs> hey yo, what the fuck? She was my crush. Oh, my like, brother starving. Yeah, I did not become a fan of Mighty Morphin yeah. Power Rangers until 2002. When ABC Family we used to play these Spider Man, um, X Men cartoons, and then I used to always wait for the Power Rangers TV show to come on. And Mighty Morphin was my favorite at the time. You know, I don't like it how I used to right now, but it's still close to my heart. But Trini was my favorite Yellow Ranger, and she was my crush. Sorry, Kimberly, but Trini is my favorite <laughs> no, crush. Sorry. sorry. Just beautiful, and not just on the outside, but on the inside. Now, why would he delete this, right? <laughs> she truly had this very caring spirit. That is not to say that she wasn't a little bit mischievous. Ah, uh, here we go. Get your popcorn. And at times, devious. <laughs> Uh, known to participate in pranks and never get caught because she naturally looks so innocent. For instance, in the command center where we shot early, here we are wearing, you know, these, these thin layer spandex suits and the air conditioner in that room was at sub-zero and we're wearing next to no clothes. In between shots, we used... All right, let me just repaint it. In the command center, sub-degree temperatures, only wearing the spandex, no clothes underneath. Okay, she's known for pranks. <laughs> Let's hear this shit. To uh, sit in the little command center, and I would usually lean up against the counter. I'm freezing my butt off, and the girls are. Tweet would come over, and 
make sure you kind of lean in and move the wrap up and try and stay warm. Well, I was an 18 year old boy and she was gorgeous. So once or twice I may have had a reaction that I truly could not control. Hey, it's dig out art. That's just what it is. Struggling for self control. She's trying to pretend that she doesn't notice. Then I realized she's got a devious side. She's like, oh, I'm so cold. And then I would notice that maybe just her booty would wiggle a little. <laughs> Her booty was wiggling. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Nah, nah. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. RIP tweet, RIP tweet. These are these are ASJ words. You know, maybe he embellishing and shit. You know, you never know when he's telling the truth and when he's just embellishing and shit. Yeah, you know I'm saying. Uh, he has this thing when people are not here to, you know, revisit history and shit. Really could not control. I'm struggling for self control. She's trying to pretend that she doesn't notice. Then I realized she's got a devious side. She's like, oh, I'm so cold. And then I would notice that maybe just her booty would wiggle a little. Trying to flirt with you or something. You should have got her number after that. She was great about it. I mean, she <laughs> totally turn around and, you know, been like, Austin. She would get these grins on her face. And this was the only way I learned how to tell she'd been involved in something like a practical joke. Everybody's being accused of something. And she would just sit there and she would just have this little grin on her face. And her eyes would twinkle. And I was like... <laughs> she never got caught but i knew just so you know that i know she knows that i know and now we all know that i knew back then what i'm telling everybody now that they didn't know then so that we're all Brad, aware just of it, it out did, uh, three train what's the prankster which i had no idea she did which I'm so <laughs> So is this an admission that like she saw she saw him at an attention? You know he was you know, military and shit. You know what I'm saying? Maybe you just got here. Maybe you just got here. I'll just let it run through without without me interjecting. So like imagine you like oh I'm cold and shit. You get up on him and shit, and you look down. You're like yo is that is that a flashlight in your pocket? Or are you just happy to see me? He's like I'm kind of happy happy to be close to you and shit. You know what I'm saying? You, you keep doing this to me on purpose. You know what I'm saying? You keep doing. That is not to say that she wasn't a little bit mischievous and at times devious, uh, known to participate in pranks. And now, is it a prank? Women, women in the audience. I know I got about five of y'all. Do y'all be going around pranking men, getting Nate Johnson's heart, and be like, <laughs> just point and leave and shit? Uh, just let me know. Put a yes in the comment. Women only, please. Caught because she naturally looked so innocent. For instance, in the command center where we shot early. Here we are wearing, you know, these these thin layer spandex suits and the air conditioner in that room was at sub zero and we're wearing next to no clothes. <laughs> hey, there she go right there. Hey, you gotta you gotta zoom in and see if ASJ got something going on. You like oh, Henry, where you where you where you getting that, Henry? I'm just trying to see for research purposes and shit, right? Like what the <laughs> Anyway, let me stop playing. <laughs> in between shots, we used to uh, sit in a little command center and I would usually lean up against the counter. Freezing my butt off, and the girls were. <laughs> Tweet would come over, and she just kind of lean in and we would wrap up and try and stay warm. Well, I was an 18 year old boy, and she was gorgeous. <laughs> so once or twice, I may have had a reaction that I truly could not control. I'm struggling for self control. She's trying to pretend that she doesn't notice. Then I realized she's got a devious side. She's like, oh, I'm so cold. And then I would notice that maybe just her booty would wiggle a little. <laughs> Yo. This shit is wild. This is wild. R.I.P. Tweet, but goddamn, man. Goddamn, 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 man. Shea. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, a lot of people were like, uh, would mention this story. But now it's like we never saw the clip. I never saw the clip. Um, I want to say I've seen this reaction, this video before. But not with this story. And I've seen the beginning part. Um, because if you if you type in like um, tribute and shit. But I, this one, I don't think I could find anymore. I, I don't think you can find it. So uh, for him to delete it, maybe it may be some, you know, like uh, maybe he <laughs> didn't want people to know they used to get him rock solid. You know what I'm saying? But anyway. You or something. He should have got a number after that. She was great about it. <laughs> Uh, but do, the the issue is, do you think she knew? Do you think she knew? Uh, but anywho, guys, look, guys, we have a great story. We're going to come back to ASJ. <laughs> We're going to go back to it. Uh, here was the survival's end. If you guys don't remember, uh, this is the the um, stuff uh, that he was trying to raise the money for this movie. 
Now, it never got to fruition, but we do have a trailer. <laughs> You're like, Aaron, you got the trailer? Why you ain't play the trailer? Approved for all, all. Look, I ain't even watched the trailer, guys. I'll be honest. Sometimes when you're going down the AS Jury train, you just be like, all right, man. Once you get too deep into it, you just get sucked in, man. I think I watched like five of these goddamn movies. So uh, anyway, let's watch the ASJ trailer together. <laughs> I'm saying let's see what it, let's see what it was. Despite the mounting death toll, health experts claim the flu epidemic is under control. Hospitals in Hong Kong are running low on medicine. Damn, maybe they knew about the, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> they knew about it before, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> maybe they knew about it before. It might a bad flu outbreak, and it might be a week before they get new supplies. Games over. But as CCTV's Kathy Yang reports, the city is telling people there is no cause for alarm. Not another step, young lady. I am scared. I know. The scene at the rush hour in Hong Kong. <laughs> it's Jay, man. Hey, he got the blicky on there. Like, what the hell? I am scared. On surgical masks as a nasty strain of winter flu claims more lives in the city. What if I am? How did they not fund this, man? Oh, my goodness. Infected. <laughs> a mutated variant of H3N2 has claimed at least 100. Oh. <laughs> 42 and raised the number of severe cases to health experts urge everyone to get practice remember what what the hell is this <laughs> heart to heart honey just like we practice remember <laughs> <laughs> yo what the fuck is this yo heart to heart hey i'm gonna have to use that i'm gonna have to use that like yo heart to heart baby heart to heart and shit you know what i'm saying just like we practice, but on a woman of age. <laughs> My goodness. How did they not get the funding for this, guys? With the rise in the Will Smith who? Number of admittances, some of Hong Kong's hospitals are reportedly facing a shortage of beds. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. He about to put him down. All right. He about to put him down. All right. All right. All right. Oh man, YouTube don't like showing blickies on the uh, live screen in the hands. They'd be like, hey, is that a blicky? Even though you know it's fake, they'd be like, man, it's suggested. <laughs> Putting down the president and his daughter. <laughs> hey, yo, what the fuck? Look, man, sometimes I just can't take it, but uh, shout out to Packer Sky. He's like, I'm telling kids this was the last of us. <laughs> Oh my goodness. All right. So look, guys, we gotta we gotta talk about someone else who who did the indie go go. Um, and the reason why I titled it indie no go is because uh people been doing these indie go go's and then they ain't been getting them. They ain't been getting them. All right, we can't do the order right now because that's the main event. But we do have <laughs> we do have like Jesus, man. Everyone be trying. Like you got it's an A for effort, right? These Power Rangers always try to leverage their celebrity uh, for a for a movie. And like you like shit, how much you need? They like, look, man, shout out to Michael Copen. Um, now, Michael Copen's story is is is, is crazy. Um, we going we going to cover a little bit of it and then we going to get into um, this JDF clip. You know how they was like, we were all together. <laughs> Be like that's cap. Stop the cap. That's cap. Jason, look, he got he look. There's a video that shout out to the actor O2 for finding where Jason was like, look, I told these guys from day one I ain't with that shit. <laughs> he was like, wait, wait, wait. So and then you then you have the uh Billy talking about uh four and a half were with it. Uh so when they say we all agree, you like, bruh, <laughs> y'all stories is inconsistent as shit. Inconsistent to say the least. Only the two people saying we all did is the people who made the video. Like, yeah, we all agreed and they turned their backs on us. Like, nah, nah, nah. No, 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 no. You got Amy Joe saying, like, nah, they wanted more money. Um, and now you're gonna see uh later in this tonight that <laughs> that uh Jason was like, they wanted more money. I was happy. And I told them from day one, I'm not striking. <laughs> and then you're going to hear Austin St. John where he, he basically was like, oh, yeah, I was leaving no matter what. I was like, what the hell? But anywho, let's get into another indie no-go. Like, God damn, man. <sighs> Jesus. Now, look, guys, I already explained to you how it works. Unless you hit the go, um, they don't get paid the money. The money goes back to the people. I actually looked up the the rules right here. Oh, man, did it just man. 
There we go. What happens? All right. So you get paid out. Uh, the way Indiegogo works is if you hit your goal, you get paid out. OK, you get paid out. Um, oh man, what happens if I I forget the tab I had if I. Project fails. OK, da, 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 da. if your campaign doesn't mean goals. So you're here, go right here. If your campaign does not meet its goal by deadline, all your backers will be refunded by Indiegogo within five to seven days. So essentially, when you um, <laughs> you after whatchamacallit, if you watch if you sorry, after you give your money, if they don't hit the goal, you get your money back. And that's 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 all in cool. However, there was. Uh, where are we at? Where are we at? This is the order where they met their goal. And this is where the issue comes in. You like, oh shit, y'all met the goal. <laughs> and y'all and now y'all like, where's the money? Uh they spent that shit. But anywho, uh, let's get into Michael Copen right now. Here's Michael Copen's story. Like, look, guys, these guys be pitching. They be pitching. They like, oh, let me pitch this movie and shit, Henry. No, no, it's cool. I'm on my break. I'm gonna be heading home soon. It's cool. <laughs> I mean the graphic the graphics are the graphics guys. I mean what what do you expect? What do you expect? And I believe this is Time Force guy. I mean you might know this ninja. I don't know. Give me a phone. Is he holding him up with the Ranger Blicky? <laughs> is he got the Ranger? <laughs> Look, man, if you want my money for a, a, a movie, you better have a real blicky, you know what I'm saying? Okay, dude. Hope this number works. I don't get paid for this, man. Um, anyone know this, new, this guy? <laughs> Wes, hey, it's Lucas. Yeah, I'm back. Look, we don't got a lot of time. They killed everyone in the future. They took Jen. I'm sorry, man. Let's do it. Send me a location. Send me a location. I'm on the way. All right, all right. Movie voice. Okay, cut. Take five. <laughs> oh, how was it? Great. Michael Copen, guys. Now look, guys. This guy does not have like a clean slate. Um, he he was accused of some very heinous allegations between him and an eleven year old, which we're gonna get to. We're gonna touch on it for a little bit. Uh, not a lot of time, just a little bit of time. But uh, this indie Power Rangers movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Power Rangers movie. Cat script ready for next month. Oh, put it in my trailer. All right, guys. All right, thanks. Hey, what's up, guys? This is Michael Copen. And as you know, <laughs> I live a tough life. I mean, women throwing themselves at me all the time. I love boys in my... But it's not about... Now, you like women throwing themselves at him all the time. Now, what if I told you, like, yeah, women do be throwing themselves at him. You're like, who the fuck will be messing with Michael Cope? And I'm like, all right, look. <laughs> what if I told you it was Kim Kardashian? You'd be like, no way. Kim Kardashian plays hard to get on reality show. Uh, but you know, there she go and shit. Yeah, you know I'm saying he was he was one of the ninjas on there. He ain't smashed though. I don't think so. Yeah, you know I'm saying he ain't have enough zeros. He like Power Rangers guy. Like I don't even get royalties and shit. She was like, nope. <laughs> he went in for the kiss and she was, you know, you, you ever go on for the kiss and they do the ah the, ah <laughs> that shit happened to me once uh once in my life. That's crazy. It only happened to me once in my life. Uh, shout out to her. Uh, she's straight got me now i think about it, like damn she did get me um but yeah you go in for the kiss and they do the ah, the, ah you like what you like uh hey yo what the fuck hey but it's kim k man <laughs> it's kim k shooters gotta shoot and you know shout out to her and odell beckham jr i hear i hear it's pretty hot now uh but hey there there they go right there you know what i'm saying hey a toast kim k he was with her he was with her keeping up with Kim Kardashian, <laughs> keeping up with him in, a, in New York. I mean, but it's just a storyline, though, guys. It's just a storyline. Um, and he was an actor. You know what I'm saying? Typically, these uh, re reality shows is filled with actors. Um, they not like known actors or well-known actors, but uh, actors nonetheless. Uh, but uh, he, it didn't work out. It didn't work out. So anyway. About that. It's about making a movie. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> And not just any movie. <laughs> Power Ranger movie, as you can see. Hey, Mike, they need you on. Oh. 
Now, if you don't know what season I'm from, I'm from Power Rangers Time Force. So I'm trying to keep along the same storyline where Lucas goes back in time to get Wes to help him save the world. And we meet some cool friends along the line. You know, and you know what I never understood? Like, um, the Power Rangers people always want to make Power Ranger movies. Um, and there's probably nothing wrong with that. But like, if you do like something completely different, it may come off better, per se. Each other safe and we become each other's good luck charm. Oh, look. Hey, Joe, over here. <laughs> Lucky Penny. Heads up. Oh, did I mention <laughs> we have original Rangers? I mean, this, the, the production is decent, though, right? It's going to be crazy. Blue Crew, baby. Blue Crew times two. Blake Foster. Ooh. This is Aaron Cahill from Power Rangers Time Force, Pink Ranger, and I want you to donate. I'll make it look no shit! Oh no, she didn't. No, she didn't put the put the, the put the puckered up Botox lips on the camera. God damn! I want you to donate. I'll make it look. Oh, what happened? What happened? What happened? Um, hold up. Something happened. Something happened. Something happened. We were we were we were cooking. We were right here. And I want you to donate. There y'all go. I know, I know, I know y'all want them lips. Yeah, that brother's starving. <laughs> I know y'all want them. Hey, yo, what the fuck? <laughs> this is Steve Cardenas, a.k.a. Rocky, the Red Power Ranger and the Blue Zeo Ranger, and we need you guys to donate. This is Azeem Risk, your Black Mega Force and Super Mega Force Ranger, and I need you to donate. Hey, and there's cool giveaways and prizes. Hey, David, yo, what, what's this sister doing? She like, this nigga really got me on camera and shit. <laughs> she looked like a deer head, like, like, hey, 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 why am I in your frame? <laughs> she got the death stare on, like, brother, brother, brother. Look, look, sister is not ready. Hey, this is Walter Jones. Hey, you know you- Hey, get it from the horse's mouth. <laughs> get it from the horse's mouth. You gotta come and dance with me at the premiere after party. It's gonna be on. What up, man? This is Austin St. John. Hey! <laughs> now look who's in the background lurking. Lurking. You see him right here? You see him right there? There you go. Your boy Zach Taylor McGinnis. You know, Mr. I hate JDF himself. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying, yeah, David, call him out, call him out, call him out, call him out. <laughs> call him out. Hey, hey, he said, hey, he was with Galactic Productions and shit. Where he at? Where he at? Galactic Productions all over. Because remember, guys, it was a package deal I back then. Donate. Ooh. Hey, and there's cool giveaways and prizes. Hey, she like, hey, get that camera out of my face. <laughs> hey, this is Walter Jones. Hey, you know you got to come and dance with me at the pre- you see the galactic production? You like, there go the galactic production on the banner, you know what I'm saying? We're after party. It's gonna be on. What up, man? This is Austin St. John. We're getting ready to rock this. We're about to make the best movie ever because that's how we roll. That's what happened when the Rangers get it on. You know what I'm saying? So Austin St. <laughs> John, Red Ranger, getting it done with the best of the Rangers. That's how we're gonna do it. You better check it out. Hey guys, it's Jake. <laughs> Oh, look, fine, like, look, man, I get y'all what you call it. Power Ranger Time Force. You know what time it is? It's time to donate. We want to make you the movie that you want. We want to make you the movie that you need. Okay? So if everyone pitches in, we can get this thing done. Now, we're not making a Power Ranger movie. We're just doing an action-packed film with an awesome plot line utilizing original Power Ranger actors. You see how it works? It's like everyone has like kind of like the same thing. I mean, even JDF, he's no exception. He, he did like a similar Power Ranger movie. Five minutes so we're back, Mike. Okay, thanks. Now, I need your help to make this big. You know, I'm thinking huge. Expendables meets Pacific Rim meets Twilight. <laughs> Not Twilight, but more like Looper, uh, Total Recall, <laughs> the future to the past. Bro, it's, it's too much, man. It's too much. It's too fast. Now, let's get to, I mean, the Indiegogo failed. It, you know, it, it is what it is. Uh, we saw him in Kim K. You like, oh, shit, we got the Kim K. Um, we saw his Indiegogo. But here's the thing, right? The issue with him came from a, a young lady, if you will. Um, 
let's let's go down to Michael uh, Copen or whatever, right? Some allegations came to light. You like, wait, what allegations? What allegations? All right, it was rumored that he was he got frisky with an eleven year old girl on set. All right, and she actually outed him like like bad. Um, we we can go through a couple excerpts. All right, so here we go. Uh, Michael Copan, who played Lucas on Time Force. Among her words in that essay was a statement, don't even get me started on the reality, which I know for a fact that multiple women, multiple women, multiple women has reported this guy. Um, and the people in the organization know, and they did nothing. He was invited back multiple times until more of us women was alerted. Then uh, joined sits expressly that uh, they would never do another con if he were present. Yeah, that's fucked up, man. Uh, other Twitter users quickly revealed that the actor in question was Michael Copen, who played recurring actor Felix Targaro on One Tree Hill. Man, y'all watch that shit? Uh, that some of us girls was accused of, you know, being harassed at icon conventions and were as young as 14. God damn, man. Um, young women stated that they uh, complained to Icon repeatedly that Copan had, among other things, groped their backsides and pressured them to come to his hotel room. Uh, but that Icon had continued to invite, you know, him to further events. Um, and I know what she's saying. Well, it's her word verse. He is her, you know, all that good stuff. Um, but I mean, these these are some 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 heavy allegations. Give me one second. I got to I got to go into my uh, Insta. Uh, because I have her story saved. I'm pretty sure I do. Uh, because she posted him and posted her. And here you go right here. So here is the lady uh, in question. that The one that spoke up right here. You know, hey, my account has was hacked in efforts to delete this post. So she came out and they said, no, no, no. When I was 11, look, she added him. When I was 11, Michael Copan in me. He brought me into his music studio in California and had me thinking he was going to help me. Instead, he took advantage of me. The abuse lasted years. God damn. At the time, I was afraid uh, to tell my mom because she was going through a lot. Now that I'm older, I finally found the strength to tell her there is an open investigation, but I'm frustrated at at the pace Uh, they're moving. I uh, pace they're moving. I hope all of my supporters have words for him. Michael, you took my innocence. Oh, man, it's crazy. Innocence from me, and it was wrong. My circle is tighter, and I'm so much stronger. If any of you feel you are alone out there with Dark Secret, you're not alone. I'm here for you. Hopefully, my story will help others. I mean, you know, and they always do this. And this girl is not like some random. She like, look, one point she got. She's more popping than him now. I I noticed you. Oh yeah, I, I've seen her before. I've seen her before. Um, uh, she be she was with the uh, you know like the you know King Batch type people and shit. You know the the Viners uh, on their come up. And I know brothers are starving. Yeah, that brother's starving. <laughs> um, but this was you know this was major back when she posted it. When did she post this? Oh man, it just it just took me <laughs> it took me out. Um. It took it took me out. It took me out. I got to go back in. I got to find it. Uh, when did she post this? Because this is interesting. Sorry, guys. Uh, don't look at my save stuff. Did ignore, ignore, ignore. Uh, in 2015. So in 2015, she posted this. And when did the the indie go go stuff come out? Like, um, this is gonna kind of hurt, right? 2015. No, nah, that's cool. I'm on my break. I'm gonna be. March 25th, she has the Indiegogo, and May 12th. So this likely killed any shots at him raising money. Any shots. And likely had a negative impact on his career. Hey, you dropping a movie? She was like, "Mm, mm mm-mm, I'm coming out. Uh, But anyway, what do you guys think of this Michael Copen story? Uh, it's a little short one. It's a little quick one. Yeah, I'm saying I know people are like you got to cover it. You got to cover it in depth. And I'm like, man, I don't know. I don't know how to cover it in depth. I like that, man. I don't know.
But anyway, we can take a little uh, breather. I do got more Ranger content. Um, not this one. <laughs> you like, nigga. <laughs> this is going to be a soundbite at some point. This is the Kia Optima Prime. This is the only way to prevent people from stealing your Kia. Nigga. <laughs> anyway, 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 I'm cooked. I'm cooked. I do got some Power Ranger content, I'm sure. I'm sure y'all don't care about what me and Khalifa has to say. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we go. Fortnite. I don't know if you guys play Fortnite, but now you can play as your favorite Ranger. And I know, you know, the Red Ranger is out front, but the green is in back. I see this is a White Ranger right here. Anyway, um, if you want to play as the Rangers, hey, this is money. This is money. This is how you um, how you take your IP and you still make it work for you beyond beyond the ages, beyond the ages. Now, we're going to have to do a little straightening right now. This this next segment is going to be straightening after we get through all this Power Ranger. We saw him doing that. We saw him doing that. We saw AI Granny. Uh, Toy Life, what's this? Yo, know, Dust should definitely be doing videos like this and shit. <laughs> he should be making these toy videos. Where Chanzo at? <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> Why is this more creative than the goddamn Power Rangers? <laughs> All right, all right, all right. <laughs> y'all get this. <laughs> Stop motion for the win. Look, man, look, man, look. Uh, we do got to do a Drew stream. He mentioned Austin St. John's chair. Uh, we'll, we'll save that story for the Drew stream. Uh, I think that's all my Power Ranger content. I mean, this is like a serious Power Ranger shit. Oh, but JDF and Walter is in this joint, you know what I'm saying? Challenging my manhood. Master die. Oh man, I forgot. Every time this cop this this go go power rangers, this go I'm gonna get hit with a copyright. Yeah, you know, I see Mike Bradley in the chat. You know, he need to come up and start talking up to uh, these business relationships about people allegedly being blocked in uh, backdoor green room conversations uh, because he was like, nah, that shit not true. Ceratops. Sabertooth Tiger. Hey, they're going to Yellow Ranger. We're going to get to Karen Ashley. Yeah, you know I'm saying. <laughs> Dinosaurus. Well, then it's time for. Oh, I knew it! <laughs> now, if you guys don't know who uh, Kendata Force is, big, big name in the community, you know what I'm saying? Big spender. This is like. You think Brent spin like Kendata, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, it ain't even about that, but he's just popular with the Rangers. So if you say, hey, I need you to be in my short, they'd be like, say, they'd be like, say less because he got like a million, million subs on like multiple platforms. His videos do uh, phenomenally well. So, you know, it, you know, whatever they want, they do. For me to return the favor, I'm going to have Alpha teleport us to wherever he is right now. You're a Power Ranger, right? You vowed to protect innocent lives. Are you trying to pull a prank or Hey, I need a scammer uh, <laughs> sound effect. Something, Chris. Stick to skits. You're so funny. <laughs> I'll see you later. See, being a Power Ranger is not just about being powerful. It's Challenging about... Challenging my manhood? Challenging my manhood? Working together. Being a team. There is one that is not completely <laughs> reliant on the grid. A power unlike any other. Hey, the goat, he makes an appearance. Even when you think he is not going to be here, he shows up. All right, it's morphin' time. 
Chris. It's good to see you. But first of all, you can't you can't dress as me. It's too awkward. It's like me interviewing me. Dude, you need to demorph. Demorph now. We we'll get talking. All right, all right, we're not watching that twice. It's just it's just too long. It's just too long. Gotta make sure we clear. Uh, some more stop motion for you. There go, there go tweet. <laughs> I know when Austin's here, he'd be like, <laughs> look at her, look at him. <laughs> not the batteries though. Not 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 him and the dead batteries and shit. <laughs> Challenge my manhood. <laughs> hey guys, I'd be loving the stop motion. Are they about the trainer? Like, what the fuck? Hey yo, what the fuck? <laughs> anywho, anywho, that's the way my mind works. That's the way my mind works. All right, now let's let's get into it. Uh, we know about the whole, you know, when we left and shit, it was, it was everybody, it was everybody agreed to leave, man. When we, when we said we was going to leave, everybody was in, and then they changed their minds on us. And fuck Jason David Frank, man, because, you know, he's the backstabber. He stabbed us in the back, man. Fuck him. All right, so let's get to it. <laughs> let's get to it. Um, I, do I need to play it again for you guys? I feel like I played it enough. All right, because we now we got ASJ. And then we're going to have JDF. Now, this is the clip to end this whole we were all in agreeance bullshit. Now, look, if you, Brent, you're going to say JDF is lying. <laughs> you're like, he's lying. He's lying because Walter and Austin said so. you like, bro. <laughs> bro. <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. Everyone's lying except for them. Right? Everyone's lying except for them. And I know, I know. All right, all right. So let's get to this clip. Let me let me title this shit up. Yeah, you know I'm saying you like you don't got this clip. And shout out to the actor O2 because he be fucking finding this shit, man. The actor O2, man, he like a clip historian. How the hell he find a clip with 300 views that captures the deleted video? Uh, ASJ talking about um her, her getting him hard. Like what the fuck? <laughs> hey yo, what the fuck? <laughs> like what? <laughs> How do you find that? That's a, that's random. That's random. Uh, but anywho, this is this is probably gonna be like the fucking highlight of the night if you ask me. Cause I mean, do really people really care that Karen Ashley uh and company got a hundred and fifty some odd thousand dollars and never put out a fucking video, not a product for it? You like, wait, 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 what do you mean she collected a hundred and fifty thousand dollars? I didn't know she collected a hundred and fifty thousand dollars, like from fans, I mean, does it matter? Did you donate? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Did you donate? ASJ versus JDF leaving Power Rangers. Let's see if I can get all this shit to fit. You know what I'm saying? Woo, cancel. Okay. Ooh, look at my spelling. Look at my spelling. My spelling be off. Like, damn. Spelling off, but mm, let's fix it. Cause this is gonna be a clip. Actually, um, I don't want to tell y'all this, but I, I do want to do this big video to just end it to just prove that these guys were just lying for money and shit. Like, hey man, fan we're fucking subs are down. Well, we are charging fucking HBO prices, but shit, man, we got people. People should want to be a part of our giveaways, man. Pay 20 bucks, you might win something that's, that we say is worth $2,000 that no one could sell for $2,000. You got to you got to come on, man. Just join the fan work. Hit the fan work. Hit the fan work. Anyway, anyway, uh, where's Drew at, man? We got to do the Drew stream. Um, cuz like all these ASJ stories that uh, that the actor has found and other people has found, all this revisionist history bullshit. Um, I love that we have these old interviews because the, the tune that they're speaking in these 2007 interviews is way different than the, the rehearsed, the newly scripted, the fan work video. You're like, well, that ain't what you said in 2007. What the fuck's going on? ASJ, where we at, baby? What do you mean? <laughs> now, let me get my timestamps uh, correct. Like, God damn it. Look, man, y'all be getting hit with straight history lessons. 
straight history lessons. Also, also, um, we have a clip where JDF member Francis was talking about, hey, I want he wanted everyone to do a con for free. That clip, I have a, the clip where it talks about it. Um, because what happens is when people send me these clips, um, I do, I do read. But before we get to that, right? What was the current situation for David Yost? What was David Yost's situation before we get to the ASJ uh, story, right? You're like, <laughs> you know, because he won't name names. He won't say who was for and who wasn't. Well, it doesn't matter because you, and soon you're going to see, um, <laughs> you're going to see uh, people talk about uh, how they was never leaving ever. It was like, no, nah, fuck that. Y'all go leave and y'all get y'all go to peace conference. All right. Anywho. Uh, this is David Yost about to talk, right? This is David Yost. He says, look, I lived in an apartment with no furniture. I slept on the floor and used boxes to put my TV on, says the actor David Yost. OK, of his early days in Los Angeles before being cast as the Blue Power Ranger. So you mean to tell me this guy who didn't have shit is about to go with fake Jerry Maguire with no fucking plan other than let's just strike and we strike it no matter what. Uh, nope. Anywho, uh, luckily, his time having almost nothing <laughs> to his name only lasted three months. You know, once he started making a living from battling uh, the space witch, a.k.a. arch villain Rita Repulsa, success was an instant, if baffling. So he went the rags, the riches, guys. He's saying I went the rags, the riches. While you know, these two these two guys right here, yeah, I'm saying dumb and dumber are complaining about money. Uh, but we filmed 40 episodes. Then once it aired, it became this thing we couldn't explain. He smiles. He was happy and shit. Um, the stratospheric success of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers outstripped anything that had been expected of it. it you know, you know, this was all good. Uh, but the point you want, the thing you really want to take away, right? You want to take away um, is this part right here. This is the part that stuck out to me the most. Hey, I live in an apartment with no furniture. I slept on a floor and used boxes to put my TV on. Uh, so you have this guy who is practically with nothing uh, on his show getting something. And remember, ASJ's plan was just to strike. It was act for more money if they say no strike. Um, they don't know how much money. No one says how much money they wanted. But Jason was like, they wanted a million per episode. Now, someone said, hey, that was a million in production per episode to be spread out amongst all people. It, it could be true or it could be 1 million per actor. Who, who knows? Who knows what JDF meant? Uh, this was that interview way back in the day that uh, no pink spandex did not put on YouTube. Uh, for what reason? We have no idea. Uh, you you got to go ask Lisa. Um, but I just can't see someone living in an apartment with no furniture, nothing, no other career prospects, if you will. Following, you know, the youngest cast member in striking with no plan, who's, you know, mostly known for throwing parties. I'm just, I'm just saying it just it just it, the math ain't math to me. Uh, so them two left and the rest is history. You know, three left, three stayed and uh, three went on to be great. And three went on to be, you know, you know, R.I.P. Tweet. She he, she did have the most potential out of all these motherfuckers. Uh, but, you know. What are they doing? What have they done? What what major films have they been in? Because sometimes you get jaded because you're getting fifty thousand dollars a weekend at a con, and you like, well, I should be getting fifty thousand dollars for a movie. They like, nope, no, you popular to people who used to watch the show. Outside of con world, no one fucking knows you, man. So, and you know, it's not like you the next, you know, Tom Hanks or Denzel Washington. It, it just is not there for you. Okay. So, anywho, let's keep it going. Let's get back to ASJ and what ASJ said. You know what I'm saying? Let's see what we got to say. I think it starts at a minute, but we're going to listen to a decent amount of this. Because he's about to say, like, he's about to say in so many words, I knew we were going to get fired. <laughs> you're like, boy, wait, wait, wait. You're, you're, you're twisting his words, Henry. No, 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 no. You're going to hear him talk about someone asking for more money and getting fired. And it ain't the original Yellow Ranger. Even though he knew her story. Let's hear that first one because he talks about getting jumped again. You know, he he be man. You know.
there's a lot of history and wisdom and uh, focus and honor that the, the blade itself <laughs> signifies. And uh, one of the blades that, uh, that I had was about nine, nine centuries old. <laughs> One of the blades he had was nine centuries old, hand made. Oh my god! Not the cow. Uh, like you, the guy, dude, who be hearing this shit? He be saying a blade that was nine centuries old. That's nine hundred years old, guys. Look, nine hundred years old, handmade. You know how much money that'd be? Oh shit! I almost spilled the Gatorade everywhere. I'm sorry. Uh, you know, you know. Look, 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 man. You look. Let me put on closed caption. Maybe they'll catch up. Nope, closed caption not available. Um, it depends on my mood. You know, some days you want jeans, other days you want shorts. It's kind of kind of that way. I love the katana, dai katana. Uh, it's probably one of my absolute favorites. Uh, there's a lot of history and wisdom and uh, focus and honor that the, the blade itself signifies. And uh, one of the blades that uh, that I had was about nine nine centuries old. <laughs> You know, he had the fucking Hattori Hanzu night. The Hattori Hanzu from fucking Kill Bill talk. Nine centuries old, Ninja. Come on. 900 years old. You know how. <sighs> you know what you got to do to preserve something that's 900 years old? Why did no one pick up in the, in the audience like. You said nine centuries? Yeah. You, as in 900 years? Because it's 100 years in a century? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just like, come on. He got one that predated Christ, man. I swear to God, man. <laughs> this guy, his fucking stories, man. Oh, we got to put together a compilation of ASJ Cap story, the liability story. 900 years, man. Come on. And look, I didn't even catch this the first go around. I'm like, I just been listening. I was like, let me put on my listening ears. And then I hear this shit. I'm just like, brother, <laughs> brother, brother. <laughs> Spectacular play. Set this thing up and take a sash and drop it in the air and as it rested across the blade, it split. It was it was a serious, serious weapon. Um, so my katana is uh, so <laughs> Hey, some people walked out, it was like ninja, nine centuries, man, you got it, man. I gotta go. At this point, you can you nothing you can say, you can you can't take him serious anymore. Uh Brent, when you go see him, maybe like, hey, you still got that nine hundred year old katana and shit? <laughs> You know, I, I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry to do this, guys. We gotta, we gotta fact check him right quick. I know he was about to cook, but I just. When was the katana created? I just want to know. I'm just sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. All right. Not, whoa, 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 the math ain't math. Ain't. <laughs> oh my good. Whoa, whoa. Okay. Maybe 700 CE. Whoa, whoa. The first original Japanese sword that are considered uh, the precursor of the modern katana began during the period, the high end period of 700 CE. Katanas were mainly used by samurai, the, the military nobility of feudal Japan in. 11 oh, man you mean to tell me he got one of the first goddamn katanas he got one of the first ones made come on man <laughs> come on come on asj come on man it's like we want to believe you we really do but when you be doing shit like this it makes it hard it makes it hard maybe he can give one of them to them to the government to, to to pay off his fucking debt talking about 900 years old all right all right all right, all right, all right, all right. i'm sorry guys i'm sorry i'm sorry let's let's get back to it have you ever heard of uh, Eskimo or Arnes? <laughs> okay, it's uh, the short sticks. And I, I picked this up when I was in Thailand. Uh, stick fighting over there. And it's, it's quite brutal. But <laughs> stick fighting in Thailand, man. We This guy, he, this is the most interesting man that ever walked the planet, guys. Uh, you know, very, very simple, pretty much extremely <laughs> effective. And I like that for street applications. You know, nobody's going to. Oh man, the answer 06 said, stop the bullshit, ASJ. You don't even have an artifact. <laughs> hey man, we, we, you, 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 you calling them a you challenging, you challenging his manhood? manhood. <laughs> he got the, he gonna he gonna slice you up with that 900 year old katana. I'm not gonna get arrested because I have a couple of sticks <laughs> in my car. And uh, you never know when you're gonna jump something. And since you know this is an omega and it's not a morpher anymore. I carry a couple of sticks. Um, 
And then I also like the Chinese double broadswords. Two swords at once. Uh, very different, the Japanese arts from, well, most of the Japanese arts from the Chinese arts. And that uh, some of the, a lot of the Chinese arts are circular. Bro, I swear to God, y'all, we could just be like, all right, today, guys, we're just going to go through all the ASJ stories, and then we just going to have a good time. You're like, no way. I'm like, yeah, we bought two. <laughs> In my opinion, I think they're more fluid, and a lot of the Japanese arts, including their weapons, which are much more hard and linear. So. Uh, uh, no. First movie, it was going to be Jason. It was going to be the, the lead. All right, now he's about to talk about the first movie, guys. The first movie, the lead star was going to be Jason. Let's hear it. Let's hear him out. Andrew. Well, I hadn't really left the show. The, the first movie was slated before Walter T and I walked off the show. It was actually a month before filming the, the movie that I was like, see you guys later. He said. Um, so they did some mad and furious rewriting of the script and uh, rewrote it up and I think Jason Frank, Tommy. Don't fucking say you think, you know, you know, you know. I think, oh, it's, look, man, <laughs> look, look, look. Acknowledge me. Is the, the head in the first movie. I don't think I've even seen it. But, uh, so it was rewritten. He don't even think he's seen it. Oh, he's just capping. This is how you know the hate is real. It's like, oh, I think it was running up for Jason the lead. I really haven't seen it. You like, bruh, bruh, stop. Just stop. Well, I hadn't really left the show. The, the first movie was slated before Walter T and I walked off the show. It was actually a month before filming the, the movie that I was like, see you guys later. He said, um, so they... Did some mad and furious rewriting of the script and uh, rewrote it up. And I think Jason Frank, Tommy was the, the head honcho in the first movie. I don't think I've even seen it. But uh, <laughs> so it was rewritten, very carefully done. And then, you know, the new guys were brought in and shipped out to Australia and kind of went from there. I think he's about, uh, is this where he taught? Uh, let me make sure. No, he's about to get to it now, guys. But he, he didn't know that um, Jason was going to be the lead. He thought he was going to be the lead. He really didn't see it. Come on, by It's 2007. Uh, you you lying through your teeth if you think uh, you didn't see it. Now, the bigger question is, right? I ain't going to say it. I ain't going to say it. But you got to think about it, right? I don't want to go there. He's asking about uh, the episode when he left where they were originally supposed to stay. I had, I had let them know that uh, there were a few things that I wasn't happy with on the show. Uh, there were a lot of things, I won't even get into the negatives because there, there was a lot of things that were great. But uh, there were a few things that I wasn't, wasn't comfortable with. There was never really the Hollywood type. And I liked my jeans, my t-shirts, my big on dressing up. And, uh, you know, sometimes I have a hard time with attention, although I'm used to it. And I adjust well, I love seeing you guys. But they weren't, uh, they weren't real keen with my character leaving the show, because at the time, I guess the ratings were, were through the roof, and my character was doing real well. And uh, once I had explained to them that I was going to go regardless, my mom got sick, and I went to Family's First, and we'll be next one. And, uh, you know, they said, okay, well, and they started developing Tommy more and more as a leader, which was easy to do. He was a very strong character. He was an exceptional martial artist, still is an exceptional martial artist. So it was easy for him to slide into it. It made sense. Um, what you supposed to take away from that is he said he was leaving no matter what. Oh, I'm leaving no matter what. Um, and, man, I want to say he didn't leave. He didn't fulfill his contract. He walked off set. He walked off set, and then that's when the settlement happened. But 
notice right here, there's no settlement talks or no lawyers involved. Hey, there was some things going on that I didn't like. And then I told him I was leaving. That's right. But we got to keep going. We got to get to the seven minute mark. <laughs> um, sorry, sorry guys, this is so old. They didn't record the people who were at answering questions. And shout out to my brother, uh, brother 115, uh, who uh, <laughs> who playing me in chess and shit on the late night. Yeah, I don't mind like coming back for some, of the, for some of the pickups, a few episodes here and there. Uh, Forever Red was a lot of fun. So, you know, coming back to do something like that for the show, I think would be cool. And I think uh, yeah, I've had some pretty serious whispers going on all weekend. So. Now that I shave, maybe I look young enough to do it again. I don't know. So, uh, what do you think? With or without the whiskers? I don't know. With or without? Don't you make you look more mature? I don't know, guys. How do you how do you prefer ASJ with or without the beard? You know what I'm saying? That helped a lot. I gotta tell you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> Okay, so he's about to tell the story of Zordon, right? Now, what you don't, what, what I didn't even know until watching this, that Zordon is not really Zordon. If you, if you, if you get the get get the drift, I'm about to that he's about to say. So he's going to tell you what they did to the original Zordon, <laughs> which goes to show you that you know, I don't think he just thought this through. I don't think none of them did. Well, they didn't exactly write that into the script in that, uh, you know, they said Zordon, you know, appears as this floating head and this electronic pylon or something to that effect. It's been years since I've read that script. But, uh, you know, what they told you it was going to be in the beginning, because it was, it was all being created at this point. There was no baseline for it. We didn't know what we were going to make of Zordon or Alpha 5. And Alpha 5 was actually just really itty bitty little lady they stuck in that outfit. <laughs> Poor soul. <laughs> her name was Romy and she was really she's really a great girl, but God we feel sorry for her that thing. But uh, you know so after the show had very little budget to begin with, so you start seeing them duct tape things together and you know pushing this up and really bad graphics. And the guy who was originally cast as Zordon got a bit of an ego and decided he wanted, you know, all this money, blah, 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 because they were using his voice and likeness. So they what do you know? What do you know? What do you know? The guy, <laughs> the guy had a bit of an ego. <laughs> and the guy who was originally cast as Zordon got a bit of an ego and decided he wanted, you know, all this money, blah, 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 because they were using his voice and likeness. So they fuzzied out his face a little, so you couldn't really identify him. And then they brought in a voice actor who redid all of his lines. So they essentially said, thanks for your likeness, and now we're getting rid of it. Um, they were good at that. So it, 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 was, it wasn't exactly intended to be that way, but that's kind of... <laughs> you see it? Look, look, Cheyenne caught on. So he's talking about himself. This is the shit I'm talking about. Hey, let's what you call it. Let's uh, let's strike. OK, well, they fired the Yellow Ranger um, who wanted more money before it even start filming. Yeah, I know. But we got we got we got some we got some we got some skin in the game. Yeah, but they started with Zordon and he thought he was hot shit and they fire him, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we got skin in the game, man. They're going to. They're going to negotiate with us. We're going to get Jason David Frank, the golden boy, to be on our side. Yeah, 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 no. <laughs> no. But you, you see how he, like, he went into it knowing that, hey, these two people before us asked for more money, got fired. We are going to be different. How it turned out. And in the beginning, they were going to hire a real ADR actor who could actually sync it, you know, the lift movements, kind of like Rita, rather than bring in, you know, someone who could do all the, the movements. 
they just were like, oh, we'll use the old read of repulsive footage rather than hire a new one and reshoot the same sequence. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of funny. All right, but now you see. Now let's get to Jason. Now look, guys, it's two clips of Jason's that seal the deal. Now I got I, one is gold and one is just one is this is the easy one right here. This is the easy one. Oh, yeah. To say that sound that in the bad way, it was always helping Kimberly. Tommy, Tommy, who's like, oh man, you always gotta say Tommy. I love you. I love you out there, Amy. But the Green Ranger was very exclusive. They only put like one Green Ranger per toy in a box. I remember when I collected G.I. Joe, it was Storm, it was Storm Shadow or the Ninja, not uh, uh, not Snake Eye, Storm Shadow. I would go to Toys R Us and I shuffle through the boxes and they only put like a couple in the box. So I was like, darn, I had to get that toy. Damn, damn, dust is cooking in the chat. Oh my That's goodness. A truthful statement. Yep, yep, yep. Sometimes you know who you who you align with can make or break your career, man. So see, when the Green Ranger came out, they didn't think I'd be around for a long time. They ran out of Green Ranger Green Ranger footage. That it was a Japanese show. They just didn't know what to do. So when I was on Green Ranger and all the toys were going crazy, and then they saw my personality. And then I knew what I was talking about, and then they saw a guy that was willing to work for free just to be structured in life, just to have structure. And the, the blessing of being here in front of a light, you know, I made a lot of money, and he was in one year, I had to pay like $212,000 in taxes, okay? Now, even if I made, even if I made $2,000 a month back then, I'm blessed because I'm an actor. So you gotta remember your passion you have a, we all have a purpose in life, but passion doesn't mean profit. Passion means, I'll do it for free, dude. That's my whole career I've done. I've done like Bad in the Sun. You know, did, we did. This is the shit that Walter, that Walter and them other people doing cons they don't get. Um, and this is one year ago, guys. This is what, 2021, uh, New York. So you're like, God damn. He, I, I'll do shit for free. Or they want uh, guarantees and fucking flights for uh, Zachary Taylor McGinnis or their agent at the time when it's like, no, 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 just 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 get me there. Transformers. I did all this other stuff. And that, I mean, they pay for Transformers. They, they pay stuff, but I'll do it for free. Legend of White Dragon was my own universe. It was like one of those things where you've got to be passionate. Guess what? My first Comic-Con and I still and you can vouch if you were in my line and you didn't pay for a photo, you got a photo. There ain't not one person here said, I didn't get a photo. You got a photo. Oh, yeah, do a photo. I'll hook you up, man. It ain't no big deal. And you all got one of these. And if you did it, you're all getting one again. Give it to your friend anyway when you leave. But I'm saying that. Look at that. This is marketing. See, this is what people don't get like that. Be doing cons and shit. Oh, you want to you want to you want a photo? Boom. Here you go. Here, here's a photo. You paying? You not paying? OK, who? Here, here's a legend of white dragon. What's that? That's called marketing, guys. It's marketing. And guess what they're going to do? They're going to post up and say, hey, I took a picture with JDF, uh, Legend of the White Dragon. That's passion. And I never had the heart for any other reason for the profit. So I never bullied the brand. I need more money. I just got more money because everyone left. I didn't even have to ask for it. It was like, these people left. They want a peace conference. Cool. <laughs> I couldn't. <laughs> Yo, the peace conference joke always hit hard. All right, all right, all right. Sorry, guys. I hate when I'm sorry. Sometimes I uh, stop it. Uh, but this is clip is fine, but the next one is go. Now, one person here said, I didn't get a photo. You got a photo. Oh, yeah, do a photo. I, I'll hook you up, man. It ain't no big deal. And you all got one of these. And if you didn't, you're all getting one again. Give it to your friend anyway when you leave. But I'm saying that's passion. And I never had the heart for any other reason for the profit, so I never bullied the brand. I need more money. I just got more money because everyone left. I didn't even have to ask for it. It was like, these people left, they wanted a peace conference, cool. I couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> but you have to understand, guys, and I want everyone clear out there to understand that it was it, if Jason asked for more money, I would have won. I couldn't, man. It was structure. I was happy. I, I, I couldn't leave. I, I couldn't just, in my heart, I couldn't say, yeah, yeah, we're all gonna go on strike and leave. That's not good to do to your business. You got, if you leave a job, you gotta give two weeks notice. We can't just walk. And I'm not a walker, I'm not a quitter. So I said, from day one, and Amy and Dave can vouch for it, from day one, I ain't walking. I just, it's not in me. Wait, 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 what do you mean, JDF? D David and Amy can vouch for me? You said from day one, you're not walking? 
E is that after the, after they said, "Hey, I'm not paying." He was like, "Yeah, all right, cool. I'm not leaving." Oh, you know, oh, where, where's that ASJ? No, we all agreed that we was going to strike. He said, "Hey, hey, hey, ask David, ask Jason, ask uh, Amy." I said from day one, "I'm not leaving," which completely contradicts the whole. We all agreed to leave. Yeah, guys, <laughs> and I, I want everyone clear out there to understand that it was it, if Jason asked for more money, I would have won. I couldn't, man. It was structure. I was happy. I, I, I couldn't leave. I, I couldn't just, in my heart, I couldn't say, yeah, yeah, we're all going to go on strike and leave. That's not good to do to your business. You got, if you leave a job, you got to give two weeks notice. We can't just walk. And I'm not a walker. I'm not a quitter. So I said, from day one, and Amy and Dave can vouch for it. From day one, I ain't walking. I just, it's not in me. Can you please? Nope. You can go ask for whatever you want and better the show and do what I'm good. I'm better. I don't need to better myself. I'm good. This is better in my life. So when the Green Ranger left, uh, ever it literally the world it was more like not bringing them back to sell toys. It was more of a legality. They were it was a legal thing because kids were calling or parents were calling Fox saying my kids not eating. <laughs> what the fuck? Look at the semantics. No, they agreed to act as a unit. Like shut up, bitch. <laughs> like come on, man. You kill. You keep moving the goal line. You're like no, they agreed to act as a unit. Like. He just said, hey, I'm not leaving. So it means it shows to me that he was not with the fucking unit. Now, whatever you want to do to kind of justify and make that ASJ and Walter are right. I'm just like, bro, talking to Brent is like talking to a brick wall, guys. He fucking hates Jason David Frank. He's not stupid enough to go uh, uh, Zachary Taylor McGinnis. But make no mistake, Brent hates, hates Jason David Frank. Um, and I'll just leave it at that. If he denies it, then we can we can rev it up a little bit more. My kids not going to school. I, I mean, the, the, it, it, it went on strike. Kids were like signing petitions. People were freaking out. So Fox said. But anyway, let's get back to the uh, from day one. He, he ain't striking. He ain't with that shit. Fuck that unit, that fake ass unit that ASJ and Walter keep talking about. $2,000 a month back then. I'm blessed because I'm an actor. So you got to remember your passion. You have a, we all have a purpose in life, but passion doesn't mean profit. Passion means I'll do it for free, dude. And that's my whole career I've done. I've done like Bad and Son. You know, did, we did Transformers. I did all this other stuff. That, I mean, they pay for Transformers. They, they pay stuff, but I'll do it for free. Legend of the White Dragon was my own universe. It was like one of those things where you've got to be passionate. Guess what? My first Comic-Con, and I still, and you can vouch. If you were in my line and you didn't pay for a photo, you got a photo. There ain't not one person here said, I didn't get a photo. You got a photo. Oh, yeah, do a photo. I'll hook you up, man. It ain't no big deal. And you all got one of these. And if you didn't, you're all getting one again. Give it to your friend anyway when you leave. But I'm saying that's passion. And I never had the heart for any other reason for the profit. So I never bullied the brand. I need more money. I just got more money because everyone left. I didn't even have to ask for it. It was like, these people left. They wanted a peace conference. Cool. <laughs> I couldn't. <laughs> but you have to understand, guys. And I, I want everyone clear out there to understand that it was it, if Jason asked for more money, I would have won. I couldn't, man. It was structure. I was happy. I, I, I couldn't leave. I, I couldn't just, in my heart, I couldn't say, yeah, yeah, we're all going to go on strike and leave. That's not good to do to your business. You got, if you leave a job, you got to give two weeks notice. We can't just walk. And I'm not a walker. I'm not a quitter. So I said, from day one, and Amy and Dave can vouch for it. From day one, I ain't walking. I just, it's not in me. Can you please? Nope. You can go ask. When he said, can you please, I wonder, is that him imitating uh, Jason David, for, I mean, Austin St. John, asking him to walk? Or It probably was Walter, because, you know, if you guys don't know, uh, they had, like, some on-set beef and shit. It was probably Walter who asked him to leave, and he was just like, no. Ask for whatever you want and better the show and do what I'm good. I'm better. I don't need to better myself. I'm good. This is better in my life. So when the Green Ranger left, uh, ever, it literally... The world, it was more like not bringing them back to sell toys. It was more of a legality. They were, it was illegal. Hey, notice Brent didn't say he didn't hate JD, Jason David Frank, right? Because <laughs> kids were calling, or parents were calling Fox saying, my kid's not eating. My kid's not going to school. I, I mean, the, the, it, it, went, it went on strike. Kids were like signing petitions. People were freaking out. So Fox said, we need him back. Because I originally left to do VR Troopers, which was Cybertron, which was yeah. a one-man show. They said, do you want your own show? I said, yes. 
And so how come? I want to get away. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. I think every everyone knows the story. <laughs> everyone knows the story. And look, yeah, we did play the Walter clip, you know. <laughs> Only three of them went to go talk to a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> no, I said I didn't like him. Oh, you know, semantics, man. Look, here's the thing. I'm happy you said I didn't like him. I didn't like him. So we have this thing in my house, right? My daughter is not allowed to say hate. She is not allowed to say hate. So if she say hate, I'm like, hey, what are you doing? She's like, oh, no, I don't like that. <laughs> I just be like, and this is Brett doing the same shit my daughter do. I didn't say hate. I said didn't like. <laughs> it's the same shit, my nigga. But anyway, uh, let's, let's keep it moving, guys. Uh, this is the, if you don't, you know. Maybe, maybe, maybe that clip ain't enough. That clip ain't enough. All right. Now, look, guys, this is the, you about to see the real Jason David Frank uncut, unscripted. And this is this is like the nail in the coffin. And shout out to the actor O2 for finding this gold, <laughs> this gold, this gold. Now, look, guys, if you if you keep following into the, the Brent trap, I can't help you, man. Like, you know, I tell people to ignore him. Y'all can't, y'all can't do it. You can't do it. I tell you like, look, he hates Jason David Frank. Absolutely hates him. Um, so when you, when he says, Oh, I just don't like him. Like, no, 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 no. You hate him. Um, so anywho, this is the, this is the clip that end all clips. Okay. This is from 2015. This is Wizard World. Ironically, I believe, is this the one that Walter couldn't get into? Like, man, I can't get into this fucking con, man. You keep blocking me. He was just like, shut up, bitch. I'm not blocking you. Challenging my manhood. Uh, your agent is with that dumbass, stupid ass, goofy ass, all for one and one for all bullshit. Stand on your own, too. I can't, man. I'm not wealthy. I can't fly myself in. He's like, dude, just shut up, bitch. Look, you don't get it. Do this shit for free. No, man. I'm used to getting a certain amount of money. All right, all right. All right, well, cool, cool, cool. I'll be at Wizard. I'll be at Wizard World Con uh, by myself and shit on a panel, and you can be with Zach Taylor McGinnis doing some fucking toy shop somewhere. Uh, anywho, let's get back into it, guys. Let's let's get let's get back into it. Now, this is a great clip. We got to listen to seven minutes of it, and then we get to Karen Ashley and the fucking order and where the money went. Because guys, you know there was a time that you know. Let me just let me just we'll we'll, we'll save that speech for when we get into it. So this is Wizard. World Comic Con 2015, if you will. This is true. People are like, I want to be a fighter. I'm like, okay, go to, go to the class, get punched in the face for about a year, and then like that, and then decide that you want to fight. You know what I mean? So, thank you, man. Do you have a question? All right, now this is where he. Remember when friends was like, no, he wanted to do an event with all the Power Rangers to bring everyone together. Um, and you like, well, we don't have no fucking proof of that. We don't. We, he's not. He never said that at a con. Well, 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 well. Now the actor O2, he found this clip for another reason. But I, I listened to like the the whole clip, and it's some gold at the beginning. Gold. Uh, would you ever? I mean, do you think you will ever fight Austin St. John? No, that's a silly question. <laughs> All right. I mean, does he have any amateur fights? Sorry. Look, man. Sorry. Look, look, look. This shit is all. It's, it's gonna. It's gonna be there, man. Everyone be like, "Yo, you think he going You gonna fight Austin St. John? He's like, he's not a fighter. Does he have any amateur fights? And, and the answer is no. But he does have a nine hundred year old katana. If you if you believe uh, uh, that cows can fly. I want to fight him. I mean, everybody like this whole. Do you think? Yeah, I've said a lot of stuff before. I've said stuff and. You know, it's just going off of what was said to me that he's got 300 fights and all this other stuff. So I was like, cool, let's just do Ranger versus Ranger. It got blown out of proportion. Now he's coming on tour. We never did before, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> now he's coming on tour, which he's never did before. Um, look, Jason, like, obviously he can see through the bullshit and a lot of people can too. And shout out to my man, <laughs> the answer 06, who said, Dust, Brent's going to donate to his commissary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, man, look, I, I, I can say it. Hey, he hates Jason David Frank. He can say, oh, I don't like him. No, 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 no. You hate him. Uh, just admit it. Uh, you know, the truth shall set you free, if you will. Um, I'm just saying that I've stuck to who I was and I was proud of who I was, you know what I mean, and did what I did. And uh, I know quite a few people that knows them and stuff like that, and these guys weren't proud of who they were back in the days. So and I don't care what anyone says, they weren't. And this is why, like, my pants. 
shout out to my man Darrell Draman who said, "Hey, waiting for you to accept this request." <laughs> oh my goodness! Somebody sending me uh, they they're requesting money from me. Like God damn. Anyway, uh, but anywho, uh, salute to everyone who donated. But here's he's about to go in about um, the Power Rangers in the community uh, charity event that he wanted to do with everyone. I want to make sure that you guys hear. A lot of people say Power Rangers ruined their life. You can go watch panels. Power Rangers never ruined my life. It gave me my life. It gave me my fans. But it's your choice. Let him cook. Reach out to the fans, and get the fans, or sit back and think the fans are coming to you. You guys have been enough cons to look around and know that. You know what I mean? But as far as me and Austin, we don't have an issue. I'd like to do something with the original cast only if it's for a charitable, a charitable event. Because when we all get together, it's going to be a big thing. And I'm not going to have no promoter jam a high price ticket up, you know, where and say, hey, you guys see the range. I want it to be for charity. That's what I'd like to see. You know what I mean? Pick a good charity and we all get together. I haven't seen Amy for years. I haven't seen Austin for years. I've seen Walter, Dave, I stay close to. It's not Angel Road at all times. Oh, you're kidding. I'm Guys, did y'all hear what he said? Did you hear what he said? Look, 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 look. Ah, oh, let me go. Look, did you see what he said? <laughs> did you see what he said? All right, all right, all right, all right. Let me go. Let me go. Let me go. Let, let's go do some research. All right, TZ. Well, let me, let me see. Got the caps lock on. Give me a second. Shit, all, right. all, right, all right, let me see. Hopefully, pop. All right, all right, all right, cool, cool. All right, make sure I go to Francis' channel. Let's see. I gotta go through all these goddamn videos. Jesus Christ, where is it? Uh, I gotta go, to Otis. Otis. Do, 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 Boom. Fair use to Francis. I can give you an exclusive thing. Oh, and shit. I'm probably gonna get. Oh, all right, Brent. I'm gonna drop you down if she's about to give this exclusive thing. All right, let's get the exclusive story from Francis. I'm probably gonna get a lot of hate from this, but I'm I'm Team JDF, so I don't care. Ooh. But um, y'all remember this? <laughs> y'all remember this? Uh, there was a time. This was when ASJ first came out, oh, came back shit. on scene. Um, wait, and Jason, wait, 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 he just came back. Did, did, did JDF say, hey, he's doing the tours now? Holy shit. All right, all right, all right. I won't react. I won't, I won't react. I'll just, I'll just go. And shout out to my man, Steven A. Sorry, go, 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 Power Rangers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You smoking tonight? What you smoking on? Lenny, yeah, put it in the chat. Approached all the Rangers, the original ones, and said, let's do a free event. Let's make it amazing. Let's make it big. Let's make it, it will be amazing if we do a free event right mm -hmm. obviously Tui is gone so who else would it be Karen Ashley exactly okay so I understand that a lot of people were upset with him because he said he wanted a free event so when you say free event you talking Karen Ashley you talking ASJ you talking Walter you talking uh David Yost and Amy and Amy, okay. Yes, yeah, so it was going to be a whole MMPR reunion. And that's what he wanted. He had a vision to do a <laughs> free event, the first free event, the first time they ever got together, all of them. Oh, my phone is going to die. But, um. Oh, man. Oh, man. Look at that. And I see Stevens making that Green Ranger kush. Anyway, shout out to my man, Dust. What does he say? What does he say? Hey, look at that fancy. <laughs> Fancy suit used to wear for his streams. I know. Oh man, guys, you guys don't remember. Uh, was that still laptop? No, that I can know. That's um, that's when I first got the desktop. I believe. Um, I can only tell because how crystal clear that shit is. Oh my goodness. Uh, but you heard you heard it from Francis right there, right? So now this is like proof that a hey, a hey, Francis was she was telling the truth. I know Brent like no anything that bitch say she is a fucking lie. She's a fucking liar. She's spread this this anti anti uh water water Jones propaganda, <laughs> the propaganda machine and shit. Uh, but anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey man, I know, I know. Like 
that's when I was doing like the professional shit. Like I was like, look, I'm breaking. I'm, I was breaking stories left and right. Um, and I was like, let me, that was my uniform per se. And I got that from one of the, the YouTubers who was quote unquote, like mentoring me at the time. And he was like, look, if you wear a suit and you know, this shit, this type of attire, people will take you more serious, uh, which they do. I, you know, I, I would say is some truth to that, but you don't understand. Like, you know, how, like I had to make sure my hairline was crisp. My hair was cut. Um, you know, beer, it was kind of, you know, relatively presentable and shit. Like it was a big ordeal. And, you know, I'm trying to do that is just, it's just not the move. So anyway, let's go back to JDF. Just confirming the, the Ranger story is true. We can run it back for the (laughs) non-believers. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Well, she's only a liar to Brent and you know, that's enough to piss her off. If you say she's a liar, (laughs) he got you. Look, he, so look guys, he sent me timestamps and shit and it's just weak as shit. I'll be honest with Brent. That's why I was like asking him a bunch of questions. Uh, it's like a friend wouldn't say this, that that's his argument. A friend wouldn't say what Brent thinks a friend would say. It wasn't like, oh, she lied or anything. It was like a friend wouldn't say that about a friend, which is an opinion, not necessarily a fact. So, anywho, uh, let's keep it going. Power Rangers ruined their life. You can go watch panels. Power Rangers never ruined my life. It gave me my life. It gave me my fans. But it's your choice. Either reach out to the fans, get the fans, or sit back and think the fans are coming to you. You guys have been enough cons to look around and know that. You know what I mean? But as far as me and Austin, we don't have an issue. I'd like to do something with the original cast. Only if it's for a charitable, a charitable event. Because when we all get together, it's gonna be a big thing. And I'm not gonna have no promoter jam a high price ticket up, you know where, and say, hey, you guys see the ring. <laughs> Look at this, sem- <laughs> Look, semantics guy. I never said she lied about tweeting. Like, bro, you said I don't believe anything she say. Like, semantics guy. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck, man? Oh my goodness, man. <laughs> I hear with the bullshit. <laughs> Get out of here. All right, anywho, uh, let's keep it going, guys. Ranger, I want it to be for charity. That's what I'd like to see. You know what I mean? Pick a good charity and we all get together. I haven't seen Amy for years. I haven't seen Austin for years. I haven't seen Walter, Dave, I stay close to. It's not Angel Grove all the time. You know what I mean? Um, and I haven't seen a lot of people, but I got no issues. But that's not his, that's not his profession. I know it might be something people want to see, but, you know, you're not a professional. And sometimes when, you know, I'm a doctor, all right? I'm a <laughs> oh, shit, sorry. Uh, he's about to go in on ASJ. I, I didn't rewind it back far enough for you guys. Uh, let's hear him go in on ASJ. So he's about to say, look, I'm a doctor on TV. I'm a doctor on TV. I'm a doctor on TV. <laughs> <laughs> so if, you need, if you need a doctor in the house, let me know. Because I can do the best I can, and they'll look at you and say, sorry, we lost him. I'm just a doctor. I play one on TV. <laughs> That's when we knew Power Rangers was science fiction, when Tommy got a doctor. <laughs> yep, right there. All right. So let's go back to the charity event, guys. This is the charity event uh, that, <laughs> uh, whatchamacallit, let's go. And then decide that you want to fight. You know what I mean? So, thank you, man. Do you have a question? Uh, would you ever, I mean, do you think you would ever fight Austin Saint John? He's not, he's not a fighter. I mean, he's, does he have any amateur fights? No. I wouldn't fight him. I mean, everybody, like, this whole feud thing. Yeah, I've said a lot of stuff before. I've said stuff. And, you know, it's just going off of what was said to me, that he's got 300 fights and all this other stuff. So I was like, cool, let's just do Ranger versus Ranger. It got blown out of proportion. Now he's coming on tour. I mean, he never did before. But anyway, um, I'm just saying that I've stuck to who I was, and I was proud of who I was. You know what I mean? And did what I did. And, uh... I know quite a few people that knows them and stuff like that, and these guys weren't proud of who they were back in the days. So I don't care what anyone says, they weren't. And this is why, like my panel, I want to make sure that you guys hear all positive stuff. A lot of people say Power Rangers ruined their life. You can go watch panels. Power Rangers never ruined my life. It gave me my life. It gave me my fans. But it's your choice. It's either reach out to the fans, get the fans, or sit back. Shit, did I miss it? Did I miss it? I think the fans are coming to you. You guys have been enough cons to look around and know that. You know what I mean? But as far as me and Austin, we don't have an issue. I'd like to do something with the original cast. There you go, right here. Only if it's for a charitable, a charitable event. Because when we all get together, it's going to be a big thing. And I'm not going to have no promoter jam a high-priced ticket up, 
you know, where and say, hey, you guys see the ranch? I want it to be for charity. That's what I'd like to see. You know what I mean? Pick a good charity and we all get together. I haven't seen Amy for years. I haven't seen Austin years. I've seen Walter, Dave, I stay close to. It's not Angel Grove all the time. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, and I haven't seen a lot of people, but I got no issues. But that's not his, that's not his profession. I know it might be something people want to see, but, you know. All right, so there, there you go, right? That, that is what he wants to do. And shout out to Mr. Monster, you know what I'm saying, who is on the playback watching, uh, which we call it, throw it back, if you will. Um, what does he say? Red Ranger knows how to throw it back. Indeed, he does. Indeed, he does. But, you know, J, JDF was a visionary. And he knew that if they all got together at a con, because, you know, everyone is gone fucking separated, you know, with people challenging people's manhoods Challenge and shit. Man um, that it would be a major opportunity for them to interact and interact with fans and level up and say, hey, all the money going to charity is like, uh, nope, no, I can't do shit for free. I, I, I'm not wealthy like you. He's like, it's just for a fucking weekend. Nah, 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 nah. And you go fly me and my agent. He's like, oh, my God, guys, why don't you get this shit? It's so simple. Everyone, they couldn't see past their fucking noses. And as a result of them not being able to see past their noses, look what they're doing on the weekends. Hey, hey, they, they, they got to make money. Hey, get it. You know, I'm not trying to knock them or anything, but they could have been much bigger if they just was like, you know what? We just gonna just follow Jason's lead. We like if you here's the thing, right? I'm a YouTuber. I follow people who are more successful than me. Okay. It, hey, they they they're successful. Let me follow how they how they got success or whatever. Let me follow that. And that's the this is the blueprint right here. Okay, he's he's going live every day. Um, and talking to fans, maybe I'll start going live. Okay. All his con, none of his content is behind a paywall. Okay. Let me not create fucking fan work. Um, he's not doing giveaways in exchange for subscribe members. Okay. Um, he's so much bigger than me. All right. What is he doing different? Okay. Well, he does a lot of shit for free. Oh, he's going on channels with like, uh, three followers with people who just want to interview. Okay, cool. Let, let me start doing that. No, 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 no. They're like, no, no. How big is the channel? No, I'm not working for free. No, I, I want to get flown out with me and my booking agent. I mean, he needs to be there to see how much money I make because his ass don't trust me that I'm not going to cheat his ass out of his percentage. Like, you know, shit like that. It's so stupid, guys. I'm telling you, if you want to be successful in life at anything, right? Find someone who's already successful. Copy what they do. Reach their level of success, then start changing some shit. I'm telling it's the easiest, it's the easiest way. Even my thumbnails look like other people's thumbnails. Like, I'm not stupid. Uh, but you know, some people think they are smarter than other people without proven success. And you know, you see where their career is, you see where his is, you see the relationships that he has versus the relationships that they don't have, the relationship that they wish they could have. And you you kind of like, well, what went wrong? Well, you signed with Zach. He fired Zach. Oh, I'm going to fucking hire him. All right. Well, you hire him. If this guy is the goat and he fired him, you think it's personal. He's like, no, no, no. That dude does bad business. He's bad. He's bad for your reputation. He's talking shit about me at cons. And you went there and then you coming up to me asking me for $1,500 to pay him to stop talking shit at me. You got to be like, oh, man, maybe this ain't the way. But no, you can't see past your nose. And now your career shows. Anyway, uh, let's keep it going, everybody, because he's about to cook for seven minutes. Um, like these small ass interviews, man, like, God, look at this. This guy got 370, 370 subscribers. Now, granted, he's just there filming and, you know, anyone could do that. Uh, but God damn, what an epic video. And I love that these videos that are eight years old, like, hey, let's let's put let's put a like on here. Let, let's let's let them know, man. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my MG. This proves ASJ and Walter so wrong on so many levels thank you for uh capturing history um come on the channel <laughs> any time shout out to mike hex um there we go right there and guys when you comment always like your shit. You know what I'm saying? That's a pro tip. That's a pro tip right there. Hey, when you comment on this shit, like it. All right, now he's about to cook. This is the go. This is the part the actor found, the actor O2. Hopefully in the chat. Show the part where JDF talks. Yeah, I'm about to. I'm about to. I'm about to. Like, goddamn, can I do the show? Like, shit. Shit. <laughs> you thought I wasn't? <laughs> this is the go right here. Like, look at my notes. Look at my notes. Here, here's my notes, guys. What does it say? What does it say right here? 
What's this? Oh, y'all can't see. Like, hear me? That shit small as shit. What the fuck? What's it say? This, what's it say right here? Gold. <laughs> Gold right here. Gold. Look, guys, this is when I be prepping and shit. I'm prepping on my daughter's birthday. Well, not really on her birthday. Um, she was sleeping in the car and I was just like listening to some shit, driving some shit down. Uh, but this is a goat right here. So um, I'm, I'm on it. I'm on it. I, I'm, I got you. I got you. I got you. We're going to get to it. We're going to get to it now. All right. So uh, I got the time zones ready. Let's let her rip. All right. I mean, like, let's talk about that strike and shit. Let's talk about it. When I started the show, and just like when you guys, and we'll get your question next, I promise, man. When I started the show, um, I was like the new guy. So it, it, I, I don't know how people took it. I wasn't there to threaten anyone. I was just there for 10 episodes coming in and out. But Tommy was a cool character. Super cool. Like, I didn't care. I was like, cool, I just want to be done in 10 episodes. Like, I don't want to be a leader. I don't want nothing to do with this stuff. Like, I just want to come in and come out. And then when I started working, I didn't know how the industry was. And then, as you guys know, like three of them kind of wanted more money and all this other stuff. And so, like, I got really like, don't ruin my job. Like, I don't even want to get close to you, man, because I don't want to be dragged into this thing. So it was like me, Dave, and Amy that were like, I don't care. We were a unit. <laughs> we were a unit. Like, no, man. Shut up, bitch. Oh, my goodness. Not a unit. Not a unit. I didn't care. I was like, cool, I just want to be done in 10 episodes. Like, I don't want to be a leader. I don't want nothing to do with this stuff. Like, I just want to come in and come out. And then, when I started working, I didn't know how the industry was. And then, as you guys know, like, three of them kind of wanted more money and all this other stuff. And so, like, I got really, like, don't ruin my job. Like, I don't even want to get close to you, man, because I don't want to be dragged into this thing. So, it was, like, me, Dave, and Amy that were like, I don't care what we get paid, man. Like, I love the job. And then those three had their things. And those three asked us to join. And if we all join, then we can get more money. And so, now there's bitter bitter feelings because we didn't join them but that's not me and they're saying we wanted to better you but i am better already so when that started happening it started getting weird like i just want to show up to set and just work man and do my did you hear that did y'all catch that i didn't i didn't talk over or i didn't say anything uh in short he said them three wanted more money the asj uh twee and walter they wanted more money they came to those three who did not, who were comfortable and happy with the way things were going. And he said, hey, if you work with us, we can have more money. He was like, no, 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 I'm not with that shit. And look, guys, people are like, no, man, they're they're telling the truth. He's just lying. He's lying, guy. <laughs> you know, that shit. You know, he's lying. They're telling the truth. His word versus, you know, their word. But, you know, his word is kind of consistent where their word is like, mm. <laughs> it was only three of us who went to go see the lawyer. <laughs> I thought we were a unit. I don't know how people took it. I wasn't there to threaten anyone. I was just there for 10 episodes coming in and out. But Tommy was a cool character. Hold on. Super cool. Um, so you had mentioned that uh, you kept in like you kept in touch with a few of the original uh -huh. cast members. So when you first met them, did they Look, sort of, like, like not happy and not striking is two different things. Like, who cares? Was he with the strike? Yes or no, man. So you got to go for the, the for the straight questions. Not like, well, he's not happy. What the fuck does that mean? Was he striking? Did he go meet with the lawyer? Was he was he with them or not? Ask the, the straight up questions because what they're going to do is they're going to talk through like, oh, I wasn't happy with the contract. All right. Well, did you go strike? Like, did you meet with Saban? Did you meet with Walter? Like, those are fucking qualifying questions. Saying people not happy like that don't mean shit to me. All right. Anyway, let's keep going. Oh, welcome back, Brent. <laughs> um, that's an interesting question. When I started the show, just like when you guys, we'll get your question next, I promise. Man. When I started the show, um, I was like the new guy. So it, it, I, I don't know how people took it. I wasn't there to threaten anyone. I was just there for 10 episodes coming in and out. But Tommy was a cool character. Super cool. Like, I didn't care. I was like, cool, I just want to be done in 10 episodes. Like, I don't want to be a leader. I don't want nothing to do with this stuff. Like, I just want to come in and come out. Then when I started working, I didn't know how the industry was. And then, as you guys know, like three of them kind of wanted more money and all this other stuff. And so, like, I got really like, don't ruin my job. Like, I don't even want to get close to you, man, because I don't want to be dragged into this thing. So it was like me, Dave, and Amy that were like, I don't care what we get paid, man. Like, I love the job. And then those three had their things. And those three asked us to join. And if we all join, then we can get more money. And so now there's bitter, bitter feelings because we didn't join them. But that's not me. And they're saying we want to better you, but I am better already. So when that started happening, it started getting weird. Like, I just want to show up to set and just work, man, and do my job. And then when they left, they kind of just left like that. And so we had to get stunt doubles to come in. 
so we have a guy that was dressed in red, then we had a girl that was dressed in yellow, and then we're trying to do a scene, so we're shooting over shoulders, and I'm thinking, man, this is just a big mess. Like, where did the original Power Rangers go? And so I didn't want, at that time, I didn't want nothing to break me apart with money or anything like that. So the new guys came, and I was like, oh, I wonder if they're going to be here a long time. Because being a Ranger is not easy. I know it's 16 hour days, six days a week, there's no partying, there's no drinking, there's no coming on set with, with a hangover, none of that. We gotta just be there at work, you know what I mean? And uh, so when the new guys came, I was like, ah, you know, you kind of build your walls. I said, all right, I let it, man. Then they started changing, <laughs> then Steve changed. It just was like so much craziness going on that when I came in and the producers and said, hey, you need to go, and there was a huge pay difference from everybody, all right? There was, but I didn't ask for it. Uh, but look, hey, look, you, you know he was making more money and shit. Uh, the original three did make more money, and then after, uh, after, um, Trying to remember my Power Ranger history correctly. After Jason and uh, Amy, uh, Amy, Amy Joe Johnson uh, left the show. Remember, the producer said they were all getting bonuses. David, Amy, and Jason. When those two left the show, they stopped giving David the bonus, and he just walked off with his whole happy ass. He's like, nah, I ain't with that shit. I'm like, oh, well, see you, peace. I didn't ask for money. They just gave me money. So I went in and said, hey, you need to go back to the other Rangers. Let's make this fair. Let's. Tired of hearing it all, I'm tired of getting singled out, and I'm like, you know, this guy from the show doing this. So they just offered me more money to stay, and they don't want pats on the back, so I left. And people are like, you're silly, you got offered more money, but I can't be bothered. If I don't like you, you ain't coming up to me and gonna pay me and say, say this or say that. I can do it for free and say, good luck, I wanna have good fans, but I can't be bought. And so, even in my Black Bill Academy, you gotta earn a Black Bill. But you're not gonna come there for six, to six, you know, six months to get a Black Bill. I can't be sold out like that. Never been sold out. That's why I don't take appearance fees on these shows. I can't be sold out. So I left the show. Um, then the other, and they started this thing where they changed every year because they don't want actors to have power. And there's a thing called. Ah, look, man. <laughs> JDF be standing on business. Limerence, where you're all excited about your job, and six months later, when it burns out, and you start wanting to say, Where's my trailer? Where's this? Well, new cast members were in. So they had this theory if they just keep hiring new people all the time, then they would do their best on set. They won't go on strike. They won't leave. They won't do this. So that's the reason why they changed cast members. Then Dino Thunder came up. They said, Hey, man, you want to do Dino Thunder? It's owned by Disney. I said, sure, man, I'll do it. I need to pick up ratings. There's two friends of mine that did it. And I said, I'll do it. Let me just read the script. Then I went into Disney, and we're going to do the deal. Then the Disney, who was the pre uh, president of Disney, said, hey, we need you to audition for Tommy. I said, okay, cool. All right, I'm out. And they're like, oh, Jason's in town. I said, dude, that is so dumb, Gary, to audition for what I created. So he's like, all right, we'll cross that out. And he's like, well, you know, we heard you all were pretty wild on set when you guys were 18. I said, hey, I said, Gary, I said, I'm 30 years old now. What were you doing in Woodstock? I'm just asking. <laughs> oh my! Look, man, he is cooking right here. I don't even know if y'all y'all catch all the gems he's dropping right here. God damn! This cop, this, like this interview has aged like a fine wine. This panel uh, thing right here. <laughs> Everyone was kicking me under the table. Like, hey man, just be cool. And I says, I'm gonna either do the job, and I'm gonna do favorite nation. Then I'm gonna get paid what everyone else is getting paid. But I'm not doing it because I'm not gonna go in there. And be the guy that's going to grab millions of dollars and think like I'm I'm this and I'm that walking in there. It feels uncomfortable. So I did Favorite Nation. And then when Megaforce came, they offered me the thing. And it's the same thing. We all get paid the same. I don't want no one pointing fingers at Ah, uh, look, man. He learned his lesson, right? He learned his lesson. He's like, look, man, that that more pay, is it comes with shit. Like when Robert Downey Jr., uh, he went from, he wasn't the highest paid man in Iron Man. It was actually Terrence Howard. Uh, then after the success of Iron Man 1, um, they was like, look, Terrence Howard, we need you to take a pay cut because <laughs> uh, we need money to pay Robert Downey Jr. And that's when, uh, you know, Terrence Howard was like, all right, I'm out. <laughs> I'm not taking the pay cut. He's like, all right, we'll see you, man. Uh, but Jason is like, look, I just want favorite nations. I want everyone to make the same. Uh, because if everyone makes the same, there's no like, oh, we got to go talk to Jason. Uh, because, you know, despite Jason making having favorite nations with MMPR, uh, he was the golden boy. He was the show. He was the he was Saban's favorite. He would you know how many people did Saban take to dinner? Right? How many? How many people went to Saban's house? Uh, how many Rangers? Look, Karen Ashley. He didn't even fucking know her. <laughs> Shit. Uh, I'm like, bro, man. So the favorite nation's contract is a way to eliminate people coming to him to be the poster boy to ask for more money. 
let me know more and saying that. So when you don't ask for stuff, you get. But I really loved my job, and I loved doing what I did. But it wasn't the fame. It wasn't. It, it was. It wasn't the power. It started. It started getting weird. You know. So I, I'm friends with Johnny. Like I talked to him. I haven't seen Austin in a long time. I talked to Walter, but. My, <laughs> yeah, he talked to Walter. All right. Challenging my manhood. Theory. When someone's gone that long, you stay connected to your fans. I don't care where you're at. You got internet. You can stay connected to your fans. Don't come out and just do it because everyone's doing cons now. And there's money to be made. Maybe that's what they need to do, but I don't want to be like that. So I don't want to sell out like that. You know what I mean? Um, and I just love acting and I love doing what I did. So we stay, I talk to Johnny, I talk to Dave all the time. I haven't seen Amy. I'd like to talk to her. You know, I, I talked to her sometimes. I've done some Kickstarter things for her and promoted her a little bit. I want to do a green and pink tour. I asked her about, she's in Rhode Island right now. Um, you know, so. You know, some people fear crowds, and she has a little bit of anxiety when it comes to big crowds and stuff like that. Um, so, but we'll see what happens. You know, and if you do something good, I'd like to do something that has all that's all positive, and fans can really interact and do it. There's things that I don't tell fans that really don't need to know. Ah, look, all that evidence that he had from back in the day. Uh, just think that, like. The shit that Francis showed me, I'm like, yo, that will really fuck some people up. Um, but yeah, he's been sparing a lot of people. Um, and people have been doing his name wrong. They've been talking shit behind his back. Because I want you guys to love everybody. That's the idea behind Power Rangers. Nobody wants to be separated here and choose this guy and choose that guy. We're all family. Even though we don't tour together and do stuff, the stuff like that, questions with Austin, and you have beef with JDF, and you have this, this is so old and so over with, and we don't. But I just want everyone to enjoy what you enjoyed as a kid. There's always backstories and stuff, but that's not stuff. We live, I try to, my life is 70% positive, 30% negative. We all have the ups and downs. I deal with a lot of stuff, depression, I deal with ADD, I deal with just life is like this, and I think that's why fans can relate to me, that we all have issues and problems, but we gotta get through them, you know what I mean? And, and you gotta change your thought process. My instructor used to say, stinking thinking. When you start thinking like bad, you're only worth as much as your mouth is. You know, if you say you're worth and you can do it for you too, you be an actor, you just gotta keep saying I can. I've been told so many times, Power Rangers will never make it. I got turned down by every agency, even in conventions. I'll never do good at conventions. You'll never have this, you'll never have that. You'll never have big karate schools. Never, 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 never. It drove me to be more disciplined and dedicated and always say I can. To prove people wrong, but not for just, you know, Proving you wrong when nice to people, even when they shine me off or say I was a wash up or a has been, when I see them, I'm nice to them. I just might not be their friend. You know, and everything's stored in my mind. I just take mental notes of when I'm in the green room and when I'm at conventions, I see everything. People signing, actors treating different people. I store it all here to say that I want to be the best in my head. You know what I mean? So, anyway, this guy's doing All right, God damn, clap it up for JDF. Uh, uh, giving you guys an earful, giving you some motivational speech, uh, giving you guys uh, the charity event that Francis talked about that like, that he said he wanted to do and t saying you like, hey, I'm never with the strike. You saw like two videos, uh, which is about what, seven years apart where he said, no, 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 I was never with the strike from day one. I told him, get the fuck away from me with that shit. So all that unit and all that other stuff that, you know, that that uh, JDF propaganda that people like Brent subscribe to, um, it, it's just misleading the fans. According to Jason, now you can say, well, Jason's not here and Jason is lying. <laughs> he was lying back then. He was lying. No, uh, you have to you have to go by um, uh, something that, you know, everyone should be asking. Who benefits from the lie? Is it Jason? Does he benefit from saying he was never with the strike? That shows him not being a teammate, right? Like, oh, we're a team. He said he's not with the strike. Well, it's not a teammate. Or does it benefit uh, Walter and ASJ for saying that we agreed to strike and then three changed their mind? Uh, because, you know, that that insinuates that, you know, Jason was he backstabbed him and J Frank Jason douche. And all that good stuff, but the questions that, you know, that you won't get Walter or, I mean, not Walter, uh, you won't get David or Amy Joe like, to get an interview and say, hey, can you just put this shit to rest once and for all? Show show him this interview and say, hey, he said from day one he was not with the strike. Uh, can you speak to that? Yeah, it's true. He was never with the strike. Um, I mean, it's, it's stuff like that. 
Don't say like, oh, well, he was upset with the contracts. I'm sure they all wanted more money. But who is willing to sit down in the office and pull the the Zordon or the original Yellow Ranger and say, look, 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 we need more money. We need more money. And if we don't get more money, we walking off with fake ass Jerry Maguire with no plan. OK, guys, that's the worst thing you can ever do if you're going to fucking quit a job. Quit one when you got one lined up. Don't quit one because you want to make a stance because then you'll be broke and then you end up having to, uh, you know, be an EMT in Kuwait. Uh, anywho, uh, let's get on to everyone's favorite. Karen Ashley, guys, with the Indiegogo that was that was a no-go. Anyway, I'm sorry. Like the video, subscribe, and all the good stuff, and I'll see you next video. Peace. All right, anyway, hey, what did y'all think of that shit, though, man? <laughs> Look, when I, when I got that clip, oh, where is it at? When I got this clip, I th- did I, Dust, did I send this to you, Dust? Did I send it to you, Dust? Did I say, yo, we got to go. I think I did send it to Dust. Um, like me and Dust, like me and my people be talking, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> we be talking and shit, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> we be talking and shit. Um, uh, I know, like, who I be talking to a lot? Dust, April, Cheyenne, uh, the people who be helping out with the show, uh, the actor, uh, Drew, even Brent, even Brent be hitting me up with some shit like, oh, but he don't be having nothing to contradict what, um, like, here's the thing, right? <laughs> Let's get into it. Let's get into it. Of all the clips that, uh, Brent be sending me, he has yet to send me a clip that proves ASJ and Walter were telling the truth about Jason, David, and Amy, but we have plenty of clips to disprove ASJ and Walter, you, that's really, I, I just, I literally just thought of that in my head at this moment. You're like, wait, wait, he's the clip master. Um, like, <laughs> where is, where is, where is the one where Jason was like, yeah, I was with them. And then I, and I backstabbed him like that shit don't exist. It does not exist. All right. So anyway, uh, let's get to the order guy. What do you guys think? I'll, I'll reach out for a second. I'll reach out for a second. I love Neymar. Uh, he was fine. Who the fuck is Neymar? Like, I don't know who the hell y'all be talking about sometimes. Kui Khan. That's what, that's a streamer. I know <laughs> like Kukan. He up in here. He'd be talking Twitch stuff. I don't know. Anyway. I'm looking forward to the next appearance. You know, anyway, I don't know what y'all, y'all talking about T'Challa. Um, I saw someone say um, Terrence Howard was stupid. Yeah, he was stupid, man. He would have made life changing money. He would have never took that Lucian Lion role for, for one if he would have been in MCU. And if he would have just stayed in MCU. Uh, but some people just can't do it. They just can't. They can't stick it out. They don't see the learn long term game go. And I don't know. Was it communicated to um Terrence Howard that that Marvel <laughs> that Marvel was like yo we have a 20 year deal and we're paying uh movie rates for what's essentially a soap opera for grown adults um do you want in on that he's like no 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 y'all trying to lower my rate and give the money to Robert Downey Jr. now here's the thing with Robert Downey Jr. He suffered the same thing Jason David Frank did because Robert Downey Jr. oh once he got the leverage See, he had real leverage over the franchise. He, how did he get it? He did three Iron Man. He, he, he started doing the Iron Man movies. And what was happening is they was working him into so many storylines. And then he was like, OK, we're going to have to renegotiate my contract. Um, and I think he had like some clause in there like, um, oh, shit, it was so masterful. Um, the benchmarks that he had to get, like if the movie did a certain amount that gives him opportunity to to. Um, to uh, restructure his contract. It got to the point where they were paying him $20 million for 15 minutes of work. All right. And that was in the Spider-Man movie. And the only reason he got that is because, Hey, he did. He Iron Man popped off. Okay. Iron Man one popped off. Okay. What are we going to do? We going to make him the face of the franchise. All he got to do is not pull a goddamn Jonathan major shit. Uh, Robert Downey Jr. We'll get, we'll get to Karen Ashley, but like, look, how much is he worth right now? Um, how much is Robert Downey Jr. worth, right? Uh, 300 million, god damn, in his most known role, <laughs> his most known role is Iron Man. And he was, they got him on a bargain. I think he did the first Iron Man movie for, for, for pennies because he was coming off a of DUI and drug shit. And then he was like, hey, I'm gonna do this shit. And then, oh. In game due to a profit sharing. See right here, profit sharing agreement. Hey, he's the franchise. <laughs> he's the franchise. Uh, Tony Stark Iron Man MCU, which reportedly earned him around seventy-five million. 
uh, from Avengers Endgame. God damn. Could you imagine doing a movie and making 75 million just because you got a profit sharing in the goddamn agreement? But you can't get to that unless you do Iron Man for, for free, <laughs> practically. Like, like, hey, you got to do Iron Man for free. If this shit worked, then um, we could we could talk if it worked. But if it don't work, uh, at least we try. Right. God damn, man. But he didn't get that shit till in game. Not <laughs> not Infinity War in game. Literally the last movie of the first uh, whatchamacallit. Um, so you have to see. You have to whatchamacallit, right? Oh, it was sag after. Dude, it doesn't matter. You're missing the fucking point, right? You just, you just got fucking bricks in your ears, man. Ugh, it's just ears. You gotta eat the shit. You gotta eat the shit up front. You gotta eat the shit up front. And that's what Walter and ASJ wasn't willing to do. Uh, how much was all right, then we get back to then we'll get back to Robert Downey Jr. pay for Iron Man one. How much was he paid for? Five hundred thousand dollars. Are you serious? Are you serious? Look, then he earned ten million from Iron Man two, and seventy million from the third movie. You know why he earned seventy million for the third movie? Because by then the franchise was established. He had been appearing in all this other shit. He was the fucking plan. But look, the first movie half a million, and then after you give your agent what 10 15 percent, maybe it's 20 percent. So we talking 20 percent, we talking a hundred thousand to your agent. You talking taxes, they probably waxing his ass for uh 30 percent on taxes. So uh, that 500,000 is 400,000 after taxes. What is it? Uh, 28 to 28,000. Like, guys, I'd be doing this shit in my math times 0. 0.7. Yep, 280,000. So he got 280,000 after taxes. <laughs> oh, my. And agent fees for his for, for Iron Man. Right. And how much did Iron Man make? Right. How much did it make? Oh, man. Like, this is crazy. Oh, man, like this, this is what Power Rangers don't be seeing. Half a half a billion dollars, <laughs> half a billion dollars. He may uh, got uh, like one percent of that one <laughs> percent. Which Power Ranger is willing to bet on themselves and do that? Not one of them. Nah, not one of them. <laughs> not one of them. Not one of them. Oh, my goodness. Half a million. Oh, my. How much? Now, look here. Now, let, let this let this show in comparison. Um. Uh. Terrence Howard paid for Iron Man. Terrence. I think he got paid like 20 million or something. Oh, 4.5 million. So 4.5 million. <laughs> did he did he act for favorite nations contracts? Nope. He's like, I should be making what Tony's making. And he wasn't even the goddamn main character. He was not the main character. He was the supporting cast. And what happened? What happened? Hey, man, I'm not taking a pay cut. Dude, you're getting less lines. The contract is the contract. Now, I get it. The contract is the contract. I've been I'm going through like, hey, the divorce settlement was a divorce settlement. Um, but he wanted more money and he didn't see the long term gain. And Robert Downey Jr. was like five hundred thousand. Yeah, man. Five hundred thousand. Five hundred thousand. Yeah, man. That's all we got for you, man. You coming off a goddamn DUI. You know, you coming out of rehab and shit. Uh, we, we taking a chance on you, Robert. He's like, all right, man. I appreciate you taking a chance on me. Five hundred thousand. I'm going to turn my life around and let's go. Oh, shit. Five hundred thousand. Yeah. Oh, man. Movie made half a billion dollars. Great. Thank you for uh, giving us your talent at a discount. Uh, you probably had some performance thing in your contract. And now guess what? Now you, your salary is going up. And the guy who wanted more money, who wanted to honor his contract for less less time, just you know, hold people hostage to the contract. Uh, we replaced his ass. <laughs> yeah, he's out of there, um, and he missed out on being in goddamn man. He would have been in so many movies. He would have been done. He would have been set. He would have been set. Now y'all are silly if you arguing union versus non union shit. Y'all missing the point. Don't don't. I'm telling you, don't let Brent trap y'all he just a troll y'all he just be trolling um and once y'all give him attention i'll be like y'all just i just fall for it all right let's get to his girlfriend speaking of brent let's get to the love of his life love of my life uh karen ashley oh the order Uh uh-oh what's what's going on what's going on what's going on all right guys so you know karen ashley i'm saying I not really should be clipping this shit um oh i forgot sometimes what happens guys if i if my sound is clipping you got to let me know, um, because sometimes what happens is these older interviews, 
the sound is so low that I have to uh, boost it electronically. Okay. I have to boost it electronically. And then that gets into some issues. Let me turn my heat down. God damn. Um, give me one second. I got to turn my heat down. And my phone is not connecting to it real quick. Now I'm over here sweating and shit. Um, or, or, do we, or do we got some connection? We got some connectivity? All right. Looks like we good. We good. All right. So, anywho. Uh, this is the order, guys. Now, like, if you go to their website, like, look, look, guys. Remember, Indiegogo, how it works. Uh, we know Michael Copon, that shit failed. You know what I'm saying? But the order... The order succeeded. The order was trying to raise um, God knows how much money because they kicked it off. Um, so here's the story. Um, pfft, man, we're going to be here for a little bit, not a long time. Um, and then <laughs> uh, we can we'll get we'll get there, guys. So the way Indiegogo works is kind of like this, guys. Remember when I said I wanted a desktop. I was like, hey, guys, I really want a desktop. I am tired of lagging. And I think, you know, every every super chat, every ad revenue, everything is going to it. Um, order. Um, everything is going to it. And y'all was like, OK, Henry, we believe in you. We enjoy the we enjoy uh, what you're doing. We support you and y'all donate it. And lo and behold, uh, San, who is still here today, she specked out the, the desktop. And once we got to the go, uh, I think it was like thirty five hundred or something. Um, I added some money to it and I got, you know, a nice desktop. Um, but imagine if. You, we said that, and I said, "Hey, we hit the go." And I said, "Sorry, guys, uh, my ex-wife is suing me, and I'm using the money I saved up for the desktop for lawyer fees, and I'm going to keep streaming, and eventually, I'm going to get that. I'm going to get that that desktop. I think a lot of you would be very upset, and disappointed. Uh, maybe you might feel betrayed. You might feel lied to." Um, I don't know how you feel or maybe you're like, well, you know, he's going through a divorce. So everything is all cool. You know, some shit like that. And then guess what? I'm still lagging. My camera is still grainy. <laughs> my, my sound is still not the best. I still can't run OBS. I'm running StreamYard and I'm lagging and shit's not good. You will probably look at me like, yo, Henry's a scammer. Henry's a scammer. Whatever he says he's doing and putting the money to, he's not doing it. Um, you you may you may you may feel that type of way, uh, but this is the order. This is the order from Karen Ashley and <sighs> Icarus Rising is just supposed to be like some trailer. Get your copies today at the order comic. Now, look, let's do this live. Let's see if it's still available. It's still a website. Uh Oh, website is a no go. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So you have that. You, uh, these projects be failing, but let's see what it's about. Yeah. This is about it's only a minute. It's only a minute, you know what I'm saying? The Order Icarus Rising, the thrilling graphic novel prequel now, to the upcoming. <laughs> this is the prequel to the movie. Now look, the the like you can the marketing plan is fine. From my perspective, the marketing plan is fine. You you launch the comic to further the movie. Okay. <laughs> Comfortably numb, Henry. Keep going. Uh you would you know what I'm saying? You would this is fine. This is good. This is not a bad idea. This is not a horrible idea. An action-packed film, The Order. <laughs> Why do you? I hate the blicky on the screen. Hostage is priority one. <laughs> like remember guys remember it's like 20 what circa is this uh this is 2019 and they're still betting on austin st john um which you know not probably not the best bet not the safest bet but they're betting on him because uh amongst uh zach taylor mcginnis and power rangers you know outside of of jason it's him 
it's Jason, and then you probably got Amy Joe Johnson, then you got Austin St. John. That, that's just the way the cookie crumbles. Now, order has been lost. The fight for power increases. Chaos is formed. <laughs> that katana, like anytime I see a katana, I'm automatically thinking Austin St. John's 900 year old katana. All right. So this was like, oh, okay. Now here's the here's the here's the thing though, right? Here's the thing, right? When it comes to marketing, you know, you want to put out some free shit. I'm not gonna lie. You want to do some shit for free. The goal of marketing should be, hey, you got look, the internet is free, guys. You want to put out some free stuff to attract people and then say, hey, the, the payout is gonna be paying the ticket to buy the order or go see it in movie theaters. Um, so, you know, it's available now at the ordercomic.com. I don't know if it was for sale or for buy, but I imagine given the nature of the group of people who made the video, who were anti doing a free comic con, uh, you probably had to pay for it. Again, this novel does not replace the order movie. So slow your roll. So it's great production, uh, uh, throughout the way. Now look, let's go to, this is the YouTube page. Now, it's only a couple videos that you really have to watch, right? It's, like, it's a couple of them that you have to watch. You have her video talking about the order. Um, you have another event with Austin St. John. And then you have pretty much the fucking end of the order. You're like, wait, 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 wait. Well, what do you mean? It's three videos. Now, look, we don't need to watch all of them. But you, you I want you guys to get a background for it. Remember when we were covering... Um, I forget which Ranger stream it was where she was talking to everybody and she was like, would you guys be open to doing a Ranger film? Well, that Ranger film was her film and here let's her journey. Let's hear her talk about it. I mean, we obviously not about to listen to all 15 minutes of this, uh, but I do have a couple of notes here that maybe that's of importance, Um, but they were trying to raise a significant amount of money. Let's see if the Indiegogo uh website says it sorry guys you're like henry what the hell what the hell i thought you i thought you did this i thought you looked it up like no 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 order update order update order update i want to see if the first one had the original um the amount hey have you got your copy of the prequel season for the order of horizon series will take place blah 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 i'm looking oh see more updates here we go see more updates i am looking for the original number guys and sorry i you know I had my daughter today. I know it's no excuse, but, um, you know, I didn't have time to do my research. Like, like I normally would like go in. Um, da, 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 da. so they're selling merch. They're selling these order shirts. What about the order movie.com? Is this, is this up? <laughs> um, let me see. I want to see it. Um, band wear risk. Let's proceed. Advance. Let's see if I get hacked. Uh, dude, let me proceed. Let me go. I'm not a robot. Click allow to confirm. All right, all right. The website's down. All right, all right. All right. I just ha I had to confirm for myself. All right, I had to confirm for myself. Sorry, y'all. Sorry, 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 sorry. Um, all right. Anyway, let's get back to Karen Ashley. Um, this was her talking about it and we don't have this brain's girlfriend or allegedly they was at a concert together. We're met up there. Does it, does it, is it semantics? No, that that's his girlfriend. No, we just met at the con. No, we were, we just happened to be at the same place at the same time. I don't know. Hey guys, it's me, Karen Ashley. How are you? Oh my gosh. We have started this journey on this order journey. Gosh, it's, it's been almost two months since we started, you know, dropping hints and kicking off our Indiegogo campaign. I want to start off by telling you guys, thank you so very much. All of you who have contributed, all of you who have commented on the trailer and the teasers and have shared them on your pages. Like I've literally been going from Comic-Con to Comic-Con, traveling constantly, and it is blowing my mind, the response that you guys are giving us. Like we literally have people walking up to the table go, you are, and you guys know everything about it. And it is just crazy. We've got um, the most amazing team, you know, working to help get the word out. And now to be fair to, I don't think she's a scammer per se. However, you know, I think she bit off more than she could chew. But the part that people are probably going to take issue with is mm, the money, the money portion. 
that's really, you guys know the power of social media. That's really one of the biggest things that has helped our journey is Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. You know, we've been able to communicate with you. But I also know that you guys have so many questions and you want to know exactly what our plan is. And um, so, you know, this is the, the story is, is that I had an idea. I think we've all been talking about it for years. So I can't even own that idea of, of wanting to work together again. I think that the last day that we worked together and every day in between, we have wanted to figure out a way to work again together. <laughs> um, the cast, as you know, a lot of us are really, really good friends. We get along so well and we here's the thing guys the order the order came about out of uh necessity right um say you want to be in a movie but they won't cast you so as a result of people not casting you like well what can i do they like shit how about we make our own movie how about we do that how about we bet on ourselves okay cool let's make our own movie and uh, and that is oh shit i ain't use this 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 one in a in a, in a while let me see something. Let me see something. Uh, I don't know if I like it. Mm, I don't like it. I don't like it. Sorry. Sorry, not sorry. Anyway. Um, so let me get in. Let me let me tighten it up. Sorry. Right, anyway. Um, so they had to do this out of necessity. Like, hey, I'm trying to get on. And they're like, well, not today. Um, uh, we trouble getting casted because hey, Power Ranger actors, you know, they're not probably, you know, considered the best actors, you know what I'm saying? adore each other <laughs> so i've always wanted to do a project that where we could do that you know and i kind of wanted to do something different i wanted to do an action movie um you know i always make the joke like i, I could have hired a bunch of power rangers and we could have done a romantic comedy but i think you guys want action you guys want to see us fighting um so we started to create this idea and the minute that david fielding and i teamed up together and started tinkering around with the script um it guys if you want to make a movie a romantic comedy is the easiest thing to make easiest thing to make you don't have to do cgi you don't have to deal with guns there's no stunts it's just lines and cameras and you can make a good one with like five people but the problem is maybe this was hey this is this is our way to maximize our fandom and i hate to say leech off of them but i mean you know milk them a little bit it was magic. We literally started to put this thing together and it came together really fast. And once it came together, I knew at that moment I had to team up with my boy, Johnny Bosch. Johnny and I produced a movie years ago called Devin's Ghost and we had so much fun. And, and I mean, literally, we walked away from Johnny Young Bosch. Hey, hey, hey. Not going, gosh, when are we going to do this again? We've got to do this again. And every time we see each other, we talk about how much fun that was. And so I knew right then that he needed to be my partner, my executive producing partner. I knew that I could handle all of the logistics of shooting, all the producing and planning. And I knew that he could handle all of the action. And together, we're really both good um, creative contributors. So, you know, we could rewrite scenes on the fly. And um, and the funny thing was, is he instantly, I was throwing around, you know, director names, and he instantly said, we need David Wald. David Wald, for those of you who don't know, he used to work on Power Rangers also. He actually, he said his, one of his first jobs as a stunt guy was he was uh, hired to be a putty. <laughs> and, all right, so guys, you, you kind of get the gist, right? It's all Power Ranger people um in this film and it's all power ranger people except for jason david frank and amy joe johnson so you know there you have that right there but you know amy was not like a hater or, or anything like that in fact amy joe johnson was actually quite supportive amy joe johnson was supportive of them doing it and shout out to dust i think dust sent me this clip i think dust sent me this clip um, I mean, she did take a shot at some people, but she was supportive. It was so popular. We went to do this, um, like, live show at the university to, like, come out, rip our helmets off. And then so scary. I went home that night and I had awful, awful nightmares. It scared the crap out of me, you guys. I didn't like Well, you were a I was a gymnast. I, yeah, I can't. Hold on, maybe it might be early. I don't have a chance to ask. Um, so we're so excited to have you here today. Your role as a Doom Ranger, um, for personally for me, that was like one of the first like badass roles on screen that I ever saw, which is so awesome. Um, what's it like to see that show? Um, did you expect that it would be as big when you first started it, for one, and then for it to continue through so many generations and now being rebooted? You know, when we shot the pilot, it was, what year was that? We had no idea, no idea that it would be popular. I don't be rich. Wouldn't that be awesome? <laughs> <laughs> but, getting paid like six hundred dollars an episode, which was great at you know, nineteen years old, but it's totally non-union. 
Whoa, 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 whoa. $600 a week is great at 19 years old. Did, did, did I hear correctly? Did I hear correctly? Um, and the reason why it was great, because it was phenomenal, guys. If you look up the cost of living and what people were making back in the day, uh, 600 bucks a week was, I'm not, it's not the best salary, uh, but it's definitely more than you'll be making if you're working at McDonald's or any other fast food place. Three times five. We had no idea, and then we went to, so we shot the pilot, and then we shot like <clears throat> maybe 12 episodes, getting paid like $600 an episode, which was great at you know, 19 years old, but it was totally non-union. Do you guys know what that means? Whoa, 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 $600 an episode? Eh, 24,000. What do y'all think? So, yeah. like, that's it. Like, so, I, when you watch the show now, like, you don't get a dime. You know, which is totally fine. <laughs> I, <don't. laughs> I would be really rich. Wouldn't that be awesome? <laughs> <laughs> but, anyway, um, so we didn't know that it was going to be popular, and then it aired in September and then it was just like overnight it was crazy. It was so popular. And we went to do this um like live show at the Universal Amphitheater. Yeah. And they had to they, I remember pulling up on the bus and we were stuck in the traffic without everybody trying to get in. We were all on the bus. And they had to make I think four other shows that day because Universal Amphitheater, which I think holds this is the show that Walter and ASJ always talk about. They say, hey, we sold it out. We did this. We did that. We should we should be, we sold all the stuff out. And I always try to like explain to people, you didn't sell out shit. Power Rangers sold it out. The people knew Power Rangers, not Walter Jones, not Austin St. John, Power Rangers. So, you know, that's something to uh take into consideration, if you will, because people get jaded. They get jaded when they're doing Comic Cons and they're getting paid thousands on the weekend and all that good stuff. Um damn it. Anyway, let's keep going. It sold out like four times that though. Oh my gosh. It was insane. Yeah. And then we get to like come out, rip our helmets off and then was like screaming and, and I remember I was like <clears throat> I had the microphone and I was so nervous and I kept yelling into the microphone because everyone's going Woo! and I remember I, didn't, I heard it was going to be like a probably like they're just going to keep going I guess and shout out to Wanda you know what I'm saying I see you donating girl hey you've been consistent salute to you Wanda and you be sharing my links I appreciate that too depends on how the first one all right, she's about to talk about the order. Um, I'm happy I heard that six that six hundred dollars an episode was not that bad. Uh, but you know, some people, hey, hey, man, the six hundred is horrible when you're making a billion dollars. Well, what about a half a million when you're making five hundred and eighty uh, billion million dollars? Like, uh, you know, some shit got to change, right? It looks cool, though, right? Are you guys excited for that? Yeah. Don't forget about us little original ones. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Hi. So, so my question is related to movies as well. Like the order movies. Uh, the order release. About the which movie? The order movie. Oh, the order movie. I thought so, you said the order movie because you know that movie that all the other rangers are making <laughs> called the order movie. Oh, you guys should check it out. Go to the what is it? Why didn't no one ask her? Why are you a part of it? Like. These are the questions I'll be like, yo, why is it literally every ranger uh, from present and past except for you and Jason in the movie? Uh, why are you not in the ranger movie? Um, I think we all know the answer is because she fucking hate Power Ranger shit, but that's the only thing people know her for. And she wish you knew people would make know her for her music. Uh, but apparently that's just that's just not making the happening. So now she's making movies and maybe people will know her for that. But uh, the Power Rangers fandom will always be in her shadow. You know what I'm saying? Ordermovie.com or something. So Karen Ashley and David Yost <laughs> and I think actually John Young, Bosch and Karen are the producers. 
And then, yeah, you got to check it out. They, so they just raised, I think, like $134,000 or something like that on Indiegogo. And they're going to shoot in October. And they're gonna, they have already written the script and they're going to make this, like, like, it's not a Power Rangers movie by any means, but it's, like, all, I think there's, like, 20 people from different, um, what do you call them, generations of Power Rangers that are in, in the film. Yeah, it's pretty cool. No, 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 no. 600 is not good enough. You know, they didn't have enough money to throw parties and buy mom's, you know, groceries and shit. Like, they they were in the trenches. No, what happened is they just got jealous. They felt like they were getting taken advantage of. Emphasis on the word felt. Uh, they led with their emotions about it. Uh, but, you know, Amy Jo, she plugged this shit. She was like, yeah, man, go, go check them out. You know, all that good stuff. Uh, you never know with the order, you know, look, she, she did not come off like a hater, even though there's like, Hey, you want to be in it? She was like, um, nope, no, 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 no. Y'all got that shit. Y'all, y'all, y'all got, y'all, y'all got it under control. You know how it'd be when people be like, Hey, um, you want to be in this movie? They'd be like, nah, man, but I wish you luck. But anyway, let's get back to Karen. What's up with this delay? Is this a YouTube thing? He obviously is amazing and he became the blue ranger stuff double for a very long time and so all those amazing you know things david you know yost obviously can handle his own stunts and he's an amazing gymnast but david wald was that guy who was in the suit that i mean we all had someone that made us look better than we made than i could have ever looked so so he's that guy and all right so you see the cast now according to my notes you could have been in this video right and i think i want to do one of these sound bites from here uh eight minutes is the perks uh so she talks about some of the perks guys um, and guys, when you want to do a, when you want to fund a video, a movie or something, I mean, a lot of people, a lot of YouTubers do offer perks. Like, Hey, if you join my Patreon and you do this, we'll do that. You know what I'm saying? Like, Oh, we'll put your name at the end or, uh, we'll do streams and you know, at a certain level, uh, I'll be your friend. We've got people with speaking roles and, you know, we created the action hero part different videos of us scouting locations and us, you know, having meetings and doing all those things. And some of you have chosen parks to where you're actually going to be in the order. That is crazy. I you literally could have donated enough to be in her movie. Now you have to think, right? It's a good marketing tool on her end. Hey, give me the thousand dollars. We will cast you as an extra. Now, the thing about extras is I, I don't know, man. I don't know how this works. Um, and when we get to the SAG portion, because think about it, right? This is a union production. So if, you know, what I know about the union, right? If this is a union production, literally every member who is in this video, this movie has to, you know, be in the union. That That's just typically how it works. That's how they kind of, uh, this is why unions are like, for a better word, they're, they're not appreciated by employers, right? Like, you know, I have a union that um, I'm not a part of a union, but I do have to work with a union as when we replace somebody, the position has to get approved by a union. It kind of can slow things down. It kind of kind of handcuff you. But for a certain amount of money, you could be in her movie. Uh, you know, we've got people with speaking roles and, you know, we created the action hero park because a lot of people watch Power Rangers and they went on to become like lethal martial artists. So. We thought, what would be cooler than for those people, you know, to be a part of an action scene, you know, and in some sort of way, whether it be dodging bullets, whether it be flying and ducking and I don't know. I mean, there's so many things. We've got some, some elaborate things that we've got to um, have and we've got to have a lot of bodies. And I mean, there's gonna, it's just going to be amazing. You guys are going to get really <laughs> an experience. Yo. That's yo, yo. <laughs> yo. Sorry, guys. Sorry. Look, someone said, yo, if Austin said that he could have made the same amount of money working at McDonald's as he did working on the show. Why didn't he start working at the fast food chain after Power Rangers? Facts. That's a truth. <laughs> because he couldn't. I, we did the math. I did. I, I debunked this theory uh, before uh, because I looked up the minimum wage and it was like five and four, four and some change. And he would have had to work 120 hours just to get six, to grow 600. That's what we want. We want you to actually be on set. We want you to. To walk away going, I was on a professional set. Um, to walk away going, I just worked with the guy who, you know, was a stunt double on Mission Impossible. Like, I mean, you're going to be working alongside professionals that are amazing in this business. This shit um, sounds so great, right? Some of you love getting hats. You love getting T-shirts. We have all that stuff coming. We got a whole slew of merchandise that we're going to be um, that are currently on Indiegogo, but we're adding more things to Indiegogo so that you can be, you can have your order gear ready. You know. <laughs> Um, there are more perks that are just fun. Like some of you go to Comic Cons and you want to hang out with us a little bit longer than the time you get at the table when you're getting 
Now, she, I believe, does Ranger Stop Orlando. She or Ranger Stop Atlanta. She she puts together one of these cons. Um, I, I can't remember off the top of my head. Maybe it's Atlanta. It's, it's Atlanta. Your autograph, your photo out. So we've got, right. you know, uh, a VIP after PMC. We've got um, a paintball, you know, half a day paintball with Austin St. John. I mean, who doesn't want to go paintball shooting with Austin St. John? Um, we've got. Now, I know what you guys are thinking. You're probably like, wait, 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 Henry, 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 Henry. We could go paintballing with Austin St. John. Tell me that's not true. Tell me that that's a lie. No, 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 no. That, oh, shit, that shit's real. Um, so look, they were doing any and everything uh, to get people um, to what you call Austin St. John. You like, damn, you can go paintball with Austin St. John right here. Here we go, right here. This is Austin St. John, Jason known as the original Red Ranger back in the 90s, man. I am looking to play paintball with you. Are you bad enough? You see, like, here, here's the thing, right? When you have to say, um, like, when when Denzel Washington introduces himself, I know this app is oranges. He just said, oh, I'm Denzel Washington, you know, I'm an actor. When you when people only know you for one thing, you got to say, oh, I'm Austin St. John. You might remember me from the original Power Rangers. You might be over 30 or your parent is over 30 and they made you watch my shit. Like my daughter, she would, she would recognize him in uniform, not with the helmet off. Come hang. Can you handle a weapon? You think you can take me out? You better come get some because I'm coming for you. Let's have a paintball battle. We're setting it up as one of the perks for the order. I don't know if you can handle it. I'm going to be there. We're going to do it in California after PMC, the Monday following the PMC event. I'd love to come play either with you on my team or against you if you dare. Let me know how you want to roll, baby. I'm coming. <laughs> yeah, he's he's coming. Be there. Hey, he he's coming. Now here's the thing, right? I don't think this shit ever happened. <laughs> I don't know. I can't say it didn't happen, but I most certainly cannot say it did happen. Uh because it was so long ago and people just wasn't really documenting that shit. And with these tailored or um highly moderated comment sections you would never know if it happened or not because if you say hey this shit didn't happen i want my money back they'd be like delete block <laughs> got zoom calls like it's like a skype you know video chat that you can do with an actor all by, by yourself like it could be you and that guy or you and that girl um so we just wanted to create opportunities so that you're not just donating to our project and but you're actually getting something also so hopefully if you guys have suggestions for perks or if you guys really want to see something we've got 30 days left by all means throw the suggestions out there i can't promise that we'll use everything but you know we need all the help we can get so maybe we create something <laughs> that it just blows all of us away and sends our campaign over the top <laughs> Well, they 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 hit their campaign, but now they're about to talk about movie release, guys. Uh, think about this. Um, but a lot of you have been asking, what is the plan for the movie? Is it going to be on DVD? Is it going to be straight to video? Is it going to be, you know, you, you guys are, are really knowledgeable of the business. Um, what we have planned, we obviously are going to go for everything. We're going to try to get this baby place um, and get it, you know, uh, the best possible situation. But we're not going to know that until a little bit later. So what we're doing right now is securing all the funds. Once we have all the funds secured, um, we have a management team that's actually working with us. Um, a nice, really big Hollywood management team. And they are going to potentially pre-sell the movie. You know, we may take one of those deals. Um, that pre-sell the movie. This is like straight to DVD, guy. When you, hey, I'm a pre-sell that shit. Chances are it's going to be straight to DVD. And how does a pre-sell work, guys? Um, a lot of people do this with Netflix. Squid, Squid Games uh, was a pre-sell to, hey, they tried to sell it to pretty much every streaming agency around. But uh, Squid Games uh, on Netflix, I believe it was sold for like $1 million. And it generated so many... Um, new uh users uh for it how much was i'm sorry guys i, I know we we getting a little in the week squid game <laughs> sold for sorry look look, look. Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, it doesn't say but it did generate 900 million dollars um da -da 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 I'm, I'm doing a research right now um, here. I, I'll put it up on screen. So y'all not like, yo, hear me. What the hell are you looking at? Uh, so they Netflix made nine hundred million dollars and the creators received zero dollars in residuals. And that that's something that uh, that they're trying to fight now. Uh, but here's the thing. It's one of those things where the contract is the contract, man. 
Uh, you do business with Netflix. The residuals is kind of like a thing of the past. So what you want to do when you're when you're selling your your shit is to negotiate a bigger price up front. Like, hey, um, I know this is going to generate 10 million a year for 20 years or something. Uh, so what you want to sell it for 20, 200 million. Then you have to worry about uh, <laughs> what you gonna call it. Then you have to worry about it. Uh, but she's like, hey, we're going to sell it, which kind of means straight to DVD. Now, let's get into this before we get into the fall. So this shit all seems good. Hey, we we raising the money. We going with the Indiegogo route. People are loving the order. We have merch, merch for sale, kind of like, hey, all this shit go back. All of it go back. This is all cool and all. Cool, 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 cool beans, cool beans, cool beans. But the campaign was completed. you like, well, the campaign is completed. What's going on? What's going on with the money? Like, here's some things, guys. Here, here we go. The, this is the most, this is the last update, I believe. Hey, hope this email finds you well. I know it's been a minute since we have had an update. I am sorry that I didn't update you sooner. We have been working hard to repackage this project. Uh, we had the opportunity to pitch this project to networks. We are super excited, but this process is a very long process. My team and I feel like we should exhaust all options before we move in any direction. If we have the event, the slightest chance to make this project to the next level, we have to try and take it. I know I've asked for your patience. Guys, trust me. Anytime you give people money and you're like, hey, you reached a goal. You said you were going to film by this. Where is the product? Kind of like when I was like, hey, as soon as I get the money, I should have the, 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 the desktop within a week. And then we're going to go straight to OBS and we'll just work out the problems as it go. What happened? What ha Guys, what happened? Soon as I got the money, I said, hey, I'm going to get the desktop this day or whatever. Here's a picture of the desktop. Here's my old laptop. Here's my old camera. Hey, here's my new camera. Uh, I think Dust was like, hey, man, you need to get a new light. And then he shot me a donation. And I was like, hey, Dust, here's the new light, man. I, I, I did put the money. You know, you know, shit like that. I was like, hey, dot my eyes and cross my T's. Um, but anyway, um, I'll ask for your patience and pray prayers, <laughs> not prayers. <laughs> hey, pulling on, pulling on the guy heartstrings. I have seen so many of you at Comic-Con. I love it when you uh, come and say hello or just ask, what is the latest update? Continue to do that. Continue to do that, guys. Continue to do that. So I want all of you people who go to see her at, at Comic-Con and you get your ticket. Hey, what's going on with the order? <laughs> Just ask, hey, can I get an update on the order? Hey, when's it coming out? Is, is the comic book going still? Is Icarus still coming out? Um, She's going to be like, uh, nope. And security might tell you, hey, man, hey, 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 man, you, you causing trouble and shit. <laughs> you, uh, you might see Mike Bradley escort your ass out. You never know. Uh, It lights that fire inside of me every time I see you. The connection we have all made through your support of this project has been priceless. Once I have any further updates, you will be the first to know. Thanks again, being rock stars, Karen Ashley. Now let's go to her video, right? You like, shit, what the hell happened? What the hell happened? What happened? Because it's not too many like, hey guys, just want to let you know, we got, we got all the money. Thank you for all of the goddamn money. We appreciate it. We love that shit. And we gonna eat it up. <laughs> we gonna run it up for you. Uh, no, 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 no. You don't get that shit. You get this. Hey, everybody! It's me, Karen Ashley. I'm joined by my comrades and <laughs> war. I know this is a long stream, but when you hear what happened to the money, you're gonna be like, "Wait a minute! What the fuck?" You're gonna be like, "Hey, yo! What the fuck?" Wait, what do you mean? Hot, look, guys. Be careful. Look, I never tell you who to give your money to and who not to give your money to. Um, and, and, and I know it's rumored that it was used to bail out ASJ. Um, we cannot confirm or deny it, but you're actually going to hear them talk about it and shit. Like, now, I could not have no goddamn pie eating grin on my face as I come to deliver to all my fans that the movie that you spent your hard earned money on. It's been a setback. Now you're like, well, what was the setback? Guys, you guys don't remember. Uh, ASJ said this. Uh, um, I was uh, researching you uh, a couple nights ago. What project you did was the order. Um, yep. A couple, uh, you know, Star Trek alums, Marina Sirtis, Michelle Nichols, the Australian James Bond. And then I was like, so, how many other Power Rangers are in this? And it was like, here's David Yost, here's Walt Jones, here's Aaron Cahill. Again, again. Talk about how that came about um, and, you know, is, is it a Power Rangers reunion show? So the idea was was developed by... Now watch his answer and then watch him start shuffling, right? He's going to have to shuffle real quick. 
Um, because he like, man, we, we didn't took that goddamn money and shit. And, uh, we bust that shit down 20 ways to Sunday. Aaron Ashley, she, uh, she's producing. She's the one that's in charge of that, uh, that behemoth. And, uh, she, she did a great job. In fact, her design, her writing, uh, she did an incredible job, but we all teamed up to, to really get it out there to the fans. And, uh, she coordinated most of that. So I really have to give her credit for 99.9% .9 of it and she reached out to all of us and everybody loves her. She's like our little ray of sunshine She's just <laughs> hey, she was like hey, 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 you having trouble getting cast too? All right, I'm having trouble getting cast too Um, how about this? How about this? How about this? How about since we all having trouble getting cast? How about we just you know, we band together We band together And we put this movie out you think we could band together and put this movie out y'all we I mean, we ain't getting cast. This motherfucker is fucking us over. Uh, we ain't getting the wizard con. Uh, but, you know, maybe if we make this movie and shit, uh, we could do it. Well, we don't got no money for the movie. Well, don't worry about that. And, you know, this he like, I ain't doing nothing for free. <laughs> he ain't doing shit for free. I ain't going to be showing up nowhere for free. Don't worry. I got you. I got you. We going we gonna to do an Indiegogo and we're going to get money from there. And once we get the money from there, then we could we could y'all could charge me all your appearance fees. We're going to shoot this shit and then it's just going to get mysteriously shut down. All right, all right, all right. All right, cool. Sounds like a great plan. Let's go. All right, let's go. Sweet and bright and everybody loves her. And she wanted to put something together that had that brought all of the Rangers from multiple generations together for the fans. And uh, she did. She created the order. She wrote a script. We all flew to L.A. And, well, I flew. Most a lot of them were already out there, and we were on set, ready to film, and we had permission from SAG, which is the union. <laughs> if you're an actor, and they all gave us permission, we were ready. Yeah, pretty much, right? You, you're spot on, right? He's like, yo, know, like you see what he's doing? He's like, oh man, this was all Karen, <laughs> Karen Ashley shit, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out to my man Dust. I think I I did see him. Sorry about that. Uh, gifted memberships out here. Um, I didn't see who got it, but somebody better uh, spam that dust emoji. I didn't even see it. Uh, Y'all are ungrateful. Ungrateful. Un or maybe Pisano got it. I don't know. Uh, but basically, ASJ is trying to do any and everything to say, hey, this shit was Karen Ashley's project. If y'all want to update, go to the horse's mouth. Go ask Karen Ashley. I just got my check and I just got offset. We had stunts there. We were, I was choreographing my first fight for the movie. And uh, the union came in the day before we filmed and shut it. Yo, he was always choreogra choreographing his fights, yo. I noticed that, like, he, he is he does he does he ever have any choreography credits, ever? But let him tell it. He be choreographing all of his fucking fights. It's just like, well, what does the what does the choreographer do? Nothing. Austin is gonna be there. He gonna do the fight. So now she's uh, she's repackaging it, and I think she's working on trying to turn it into a TV series. And um, the last I heard from her, maybe a, a couple of weeks ago, she's having some great talks and good conversations, and uh, she holds out high hopes to, to get it to a series, and, and then we'll start again. <laughs> oh, that's Cap, Cap, Cap. Stop the Cap. Stop the, that's Big Cap. And this was a year ago, right? This was a year ago. Hey, this is, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. This was May 2022. 2022. Not a year ago. Not quite. Almost two years ago. Uh, but two years ago, hey, we still going to do this shit. You like, but you haven't had an update on the website in two years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, but we still, we trying to get into a TV show, man. We, trust me, guys. That shit has never come into fruition. Um, and you're going to hear what they told the fans about it. I promise you. <laughs> but like, you got to be like, yo, what the? F and here's the thing, right? Let me put a PSA out. If you donated to the orders Indiegogo and you have any type of communication or have been blocked or maybe you, you heard from Karen Ashley in a positive level, please reach out to me because that was one thing I was trying to do. Like I was on Reddit looking around and people just calling her a scammer, but I couldn't have I didn't find that one person that said I donated and I was supposed to be on a show and I haven't heard anything from them. Now, those are the people I'm looking for to tell their stories because, you know, they probably been blocked. Um, they probably been shunned. They probably maybe it was like, oh, no, the TV show's coming. I, I spoke to Karen Ashley yesterday. 
I was at the con, and then from the con, we went to go see uh, New Edition, and then, uh, you know, I kissed her on the cheek, and she said, the 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 order is definitely coming. And, you know, you know, and no, my name is not Brent, but it started with a beat. You know what I'm saying? Like, shit like that. Mm. <laughs> um, you have to be be weary of this. So, Brent, when you go see your girlfriend, be like, hey, what's up with the order and shit? What happened to the money? Now, we gonna hit, you're going to hear what happened to the money, uh, but it ain't what you think. You'd be like, wait, did they spend that shit? Like, somebody got it. Cast of folks out there. Um. Yeah. All right, so that was the end of that. Now let's get back to the pie eating grin. <laughs> this, look, look at this. Like, look at you just fucking laughing to the goddamn bank right here. You like <laughs> now, cat. Look, I mean, Catherine. She don't look too happy, but she like. <laughs> she like how <laughs> they feel. Like, hey, we pulled a lick, didn't we? <laughs> we pulled a lick, then we we got we got the ass good boy. We got them good. We gonna do it again in about five years. We're going to do it again in about five years. We're going to call it order part two and shit. You know what I'm saying? Mm. <laughs> anywho, anywho, what is, what is, what is it say? <laughs> hey, at least with the donations here, we literally see where the money going and it's well spent. Hey, man, I am a man of my word. <laughs> I'm a man of my word. Um, Everything y'all told me to get. Now, I do owe y'all some shelves in the background. I do owe y'all some shelves. I'll, I'll right hand the guy. I do owe y'all some shelves. Um, I just haven't got around to it yet. I am not lying. I've been so busy, but uh, salute to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, guys, most of the money just gets put back into the show. Y'all seen it. Y'all seen it. And shout out to the answer. Oh, six class action lawsuit might be in the future. Nah, 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 nah. Here's the thing, man. And Brent said it earlier. Some of these Indiegogos, you can't sue because of the fine print. And, you know, um, when you give, you know, give to give. If you give to give and... You never expect nothing in return. You would never be disappointed. But if you say you gave Karen Ashley a thousand dollars to be an extra in the goddamn movie and she said, sorry, thank you for the thousand dollars. You would never be an extra in the movie. Go fuck yourself for giving me a thousand dollars to be an extra. Well, she didn't say go fuck yourself. But, you know, you, you see how you see how it's going. <laughs> you see how it's going. Hey, I paid you a thousand dollars to be in the movie, and now I'm not gonna be in the movie. Can I get my thousand dollars back? Because that's a service that you know I was expecting to receive. And she like, well, the Indiegogo fine print says otherwise. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You like, hey yo, what the fuck? Wait, wait, what? <laughs> what? What? <laughs> what? What do you mean? Yeah, you ain't read the Indiegogo fine print, man. It said black, black, no trade back. You know what I'm saying? Let me stop. 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 All right. Uh, shout out to with answer L6 again. What does he say? Uh, with all these failed projects, it do be so many failed projects, but you know, if they don't reach the goal, um, then the money gets refunded per Indiegogo's rules. But um, this one actually met their goal. So that's the thing. When, when, well, then it's a good scam. It is. It is, man. It is. So look, this would this is what you do. You start small, <laughs> you start small and you say, hey, I'm going to do um, an Indiegogo for this amount for $100 and I am going to make a movie. And then you hit it and you're like, oh, I ran into some issues. I'm going to need $200. <laughs> and then you just keep going and you just keep revving up until people start smarting up on your ass. And then, you know, the shit go. Now, look, they are going to they're going to go into some flat earth territory, right? Uh, they're going to be like. It was weird, guys. You're going to be like, what, 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 what? All right. Anyway, let's get to it because we kind of late. We running late. We running late. We got to be done with this in 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> this is the official order update. I know you guys have been chomping at the bit. We have been chomping at the bit. It has been quite the journey. And I know that there are a million questions and a lot of people have been wondering what the status is. Um, but before we dive into that, I want to introduce everybody. You guys know everybody, but I'll introduce for those who don't know. I'm Karen Ashley. I'm working as um, executive producer and producer on this film. We have David Fielding, who is also a producer and writer on this film. And I invited two of my favorite cast members, not my all-time favorites, because the guys will kill me if they know that the <laughs> are more of my favorites. I'm not saying the truth. <laughs> right, the truth. Um, um, Nakia Baris and Catherine Sutherland, who are both a part of the film, and really have kind of been um, like on the team, uh, team order, way before there was a team order. They have been working hard behind the scenes. Um, we've had meetings, several meetings at... Oh, fair use. Let me say fair use and shit. Even though the stream demonetized already, I think I got it demonetized early. 
uh, maybe for profanity or showing Blicky's on screen, uh, but fair use. Blicky is how they have been there through the beginning. They were probably the first people we told about the script and about the idea. So it's fitting that they're here. Cheerleaders, cheerleaders. Whoop, whoop, whoop. <laughs> Our connection is shaky. So for whatever reason, if, if the video was kind of shaky, um, you guys should still be able to hear us. We apologize for the technical difficulties. Um, but I'll okay. try to introduce Hey, what do y'all think they did with the money, though? Like, seriously, put 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 it in before it's it low key gets revealed. And I think they accidentally revealed it. Cat. That's the cat's name. Oh, cat, I can't do this other one. Oh, it must have cut out. It's all right. Hello. <laughs> Here, yes, I'm sorry. So, guys, the official update. As you know, we had a huge fundraising Indiegogo campaign, which was remarkable. The fans, you guys turned out in droves. You guys donated. You guys reposted. You guys supported us. It was fantastic. That put us in a position to be able to move forward with the film. And we had started um, pre-production last year in um, December, January, and we're gearing up to start filming in February. And we were all very excited. I mean, we had director in town, we had locations paid for, we had rehearsals um, being learned. The cast was actually in the middle of rehearsing their fight. Um, had- <laughs> hey, ASJ was like, hey, I was choreographer for my shit. Now here's the thing, guys, if you go back to the first movie, she was like, I'm gonna post us scouting locations and all this other stuff, and I, in all honesty, I don't think she ever posted it. So there, there, that should have been like a red flag. Like, oh shit, they got the, they got the money. She didn't post the scouting shit. Permits paid for. I mean, everything that goes into making a film. Um, we were exactly one week away from um, shooting, and um, we it was a, a, a union production, and we had been approved by the union. And we, one week away, got a phone call that basically gutted us. Um, I don't know any other way. There's no way to sugarcoat it. There's no way to make it. Um, Sound okay, but it basically ripped the rug out from under us. We had um, someone who called the union. Um, I don't know what, what their intentions were, if it were to stop the shoot or if it were just to make a call. I don't know. I, I never could focus on um, the, the reason, but needless to say, we were uh, basically shut down. Um, they stopped our production. We were put under investigation. Um, we had to hire legal counsel. We had to go through numerous calls. We worked vigorously um, for a week to try to just get in the in the right in the right position so that so as you see hey we did everything by the book and we got a phone call that gutted us now typically you know i i'm i am overseeing like well i wouldn't say i'm overseeing i'm a part of like a uh, 28 million dollar project for my current employer um and it's a lot of people involved in that shit and you know not only me my boss but we got like our design firm and then our consultant firm and then we got like a person on on site at all times for this construction project it's a lot of people involved and before all of that started before one you know you know one shovel was dug up some piece of earth was moved so many people had to approve it so for right then and there for her to say we had all of our ducks in a row and we got all the shit approved obviously it's something y'all overlooked or an oversight but when you start hearing her explain it, you're going to be like, wait, 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 wait. This should, this should not make sense. We can move forward and we could continue. Um, we even contemplated postponing the shoot, maybe moving it back a week. Um, but through this investigation, we were hit with penalties. We were hit with um, uh, the that we would have to make for the, we, we basically. Okay, so penalties. All right, look, guys, I hate to get all technical and legalese on you. But if you want to erect the building, you got to get a building permit. If you want to move earth, you got to get a permit from like the city uh, that says, hey, you want to do it. I wanted to get an upgrade on my house. I had to go through the goddamn HOA and the architectural board to like, OK, yeah, that we approve that shit. Um, but when you start getting penalties, it's because you missed something. Your team overlooked something. Get in the, in the right in the right position. <laughs> So that we could move forward and we could continue. Um, we even contemplated postponing the shoot, maybe moving it back a week. Um, but through this investigation, we were hit with penalties. <coughs> we were hit with um, uh, deposits that we would have to make for the. We, we basically all the actors were locked into, you know, and, until we got approved by them, we, the actors could not work, or it would jeopardize their personal careers. So we couldn't just say, hey, guys, come, let's just shoot it anyway. We had to um, abide by whatever they were, whatever rules they were giving us. Um, and we had to, we were given a very steep deposit um, that we would have to pay in full, which was probably three times the amount that would have been normally put on us. Um, okay, uh, let me break this down. Uh, a lot of people ask, why didn't Walter never come back to the show? Walter could not come back to the show because after he left, he immediately joined SAG. 
um, and did the space cases uh, thing. So in Power Rangers was like, we never going to be sack. So the people like uh, ASJ who became EMTs and, you know, couldn't get work elsewhere uh, in the active industry was like, oh, yeah, I'll come back. I'll do forever. Red. OK, I'll be the go ranger because he wasn't in SAG. Now, Walter, like, you know, only the only reason I know this because I'm like low key becoming a, a Power Ranger historian. He was permitted to do voiceover work, but never on film. And the only reason he did the 30th, because, hey, it was a union thing. Once you join a union, you can't work a non-union job. That's like one of the, the big no-nos. And for a while, anyone who worked on Saban shit was per, was banned from the union. It's like, oh, you did Saban? Oh, you done. Um, we had to pay. I mean, I, I just can't even tell you all the things that have to happen. But we did have to hire a very expensive, high-powered lawyer to help us navigate and no negotiate through this situation. Um, and we had to call the shoot. I had a big meeting. I, I basically called the, the, the cast, you know, thought that they were coming to a uh, table read. And at this table read, we had to um, tearfully and um, we had to call off the shoot. There was no tearfully ends means that it's over guys like yeah 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 it's tearfully but it's done i know austin austin st john said a tv show they're pitching it and they're hopeful um but you know if you believe that then you probably also believe jdf was part of the strike and he quit no way around it um we were handcuffed and um we would have had to come up with hundreds of thousands of dollars more to move forward um so because of this we uh, had to call the shoot. We had to call things off. We instantly went into recovery mode. Um, and what that means is we were trying to recover the funds that were spent on location, the things that we could salvage. Because when you go into a, once we, when we were in pre production, I mean, we literally had probably 20 people working to get us to the shoot. And those 20 people and the crew had been hired. Um, so we went into recovery mode. And some people, more understanding <laughs> and it sounded like they were top heavy now look now here's the thing with when you um and i don't know if you, anyone I'd ever paid for a wedding and shit um those deposits are non-refundable and shit and certain up to the date you're you're on on the hook for a certain portion of the money uh because hey look if you book a location as a as a power ranger or as a, or a producer and let's just say it's a high in demand you know area and they say hey you want to shoot here is twenty thousand dollars and, you know, a deposit is 10,000. You can cancel, um, you know, up to, you know, a week before, but the, the $10,000 is gone. You're like, oh, cool, cool, cool. If you cancel too soon or uh, too late, then you owe us another 5,000 or maybe another 10,000, the whole thing. Uh, that's how it works. And then she's about to go on to explain like, yeah, somebody did that shit to us. And we're like, here's your refund. Call us when you're ready. This happens. And, you know, it's a business. Some people couldn't be. They, they kept our money, and um, rightfully so. They, they were put in a position also. Um, so we had to go through that phase and try and do whatever we can. The hardest part was me sitting in front of the cast and the crew and basically saying, you know, we can't get out of this hole. We basically been, um, we basically have a hole we can't dig ourselves out of. Yeah, and the fans they can't do it now. Look, here's the thing, right? Um, someone said Bat and the Sun are putting in work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, Bat and the Sun, they say, hey, we're doing a campaign. We're trying to raise this amount of money to see uh, the Green Ranger fight Scorpion. If we hit our goal, we'll put that shit together. And guess what? They hit their goal. Like, hey, yeah, we're filming Green Ranger versus Scorpion right now. Uh, that shit will be out pretty soon. Um, I'm happy we we hit the goal that the fans stood up and they they came for it. It's it's very look that builds trust. So when they say, "Hey, we're doing this uh, for Legend of the White Dragon," people are like, "All right, well, we know that they're gonna put that shit out because uh, they have a track record of doing this." Uh, but when you come on this and you say, "Hey, we're trying to do a movie," and you see movie after movie fail after fail, like ASJ, Michael Copen, uh, and then the order finally succeeds because it had all the star power in there, telling everyone to donate to their movie, even though it was like, you know, her and his movie and shit, or the Zach Taylor McGinnis movie, because at some point he represented all these people in a birds of a feather. Sometimes they flock to fucking gather. Uh, but let's let her keep going. Um, but we are a resilient group. 
<laughs> I, I was uplifted in that moment by the, by the cast and the crew because they were like, we're never giving up. <laughs> we started this film for the fans. We're going to do this film for the fans. We don't care what happens. Um, we're we're going to do whatever shit. we have to oh, do. Shit. So I know that we've been on the road for the last year. and That shit sound good, don't it? Don't it sound good? Hey, no, nah, man, we're we going to do the order. I promise you, we're going to do the order. We're going to do that shit. We never giving up on that shit. We love the fans. Like, thank you for that. Or oh, saying, or oh, someone said, ten k each. We've been seeing all of you. I've tried to talk. I've literally answered hundreds of emails. I've talked to hundreds of contributors, um, people who were going to participate in the film. I've spoken to almost every single one of them. Um, we have tried to answer your questions. We've tried to be as transparent. Yo, can any one of y'all come forward? Anyone that she talked to, please come forward. I want to know what was the trade off. Now I can see her saying, Hey, look, I'll make this shit right. I'll give you some tickets to Ranger Stop, you know, some shit like that. I'll give you a VIP dinner with me and shit. We could do a Skype call. As long as you, I don't see your ass on Henry Resilience channel talking about you ain't get what you, you set out to be. Um, uh, but I let's let her cook though as possible because I feel like you guys got to know what happened. Um, you got to know that we weren't just, you know, uh, spending money all willy nilly. We had a plan. We were executing that plan. And unfortunately, we were stopped by things we could not foresee. Um, so now we are here because we want to give you an update. And the update is that we have not given up. I've, I've, I've <laughs> well, look, guys, I'll, I'll let you know. I'll give you the update. The website is down. The website for the comic book is down. The website for the movie is down. Uh, so I'm a hey, this is a hey, Brent. You got an actual fucking girl. Like, yo, what's up with that website? What's up with the order? What's up with the order? You no, know, I've been posting for months that we are working on a distribution deal. And we are. We're actually talking to. A couple of different. No way. No way. No way. You're working on a distribution deal. You don't have shit filmed other than a trailer and you're just got blocked by SAG according. No way you got a distribution deal up. Now, look, guys, you have to think about this, right? If you had a distribution deal up, distribution is like, oh, we're going to put that shit on Netflix. Oh, we're going to sell that shit to Warner Brothers. Oh, we're going to sell that shit to Fox. They're going to run that shit. This is 2018. It's 2024. The shit, the, the ship is sailed, guys. It's not coming. You can ask her. You'll probably piss her off. And then she'll say it was a failed project. Opportunities that have been presented to us and a couple of different people. Um, and we haven't figured it all out legally, but we will. Um, <laughs> we, thankfully, go ahead, David, jump in. Uh, and, and just to, just to uh, uh, reiterate what Karen's saying, a lot of the things that we're telling you uh, we're telling you in the best way that we can. Some things we can't go into detail about because they're under NDA and we can't talk about them. So why would you oh, man, under NDA with who? Hey, look, guys. Hey, this is this is this is how we do it. Uh, yeah. Um, here we go right here. Here we go right here. Uh, our construction was delayed. Why was it delayed? We went for an easement on a private property. We went to go buy it. The owner asked for too much. We had to redesign. Uh, to complete the project without getting the easement on their property. Point blank, simple, uh, cut to the chase. Hey, our project got shut down because of ABC. Uh, we were in violation of DEF. It cost us GHI. You know, you know, you, you keep, you don't have to put out a 16 minute video to say the shit's not happening. It could have been a five minute video. Hey, we really wanted to do this shit. Um, we ran into some issues. It was, you got to take some accountability, uh, but they're not going to take accountability. They're going to blame Jermaine. In fact, they're going to blame, uh, I ain't going to say who they're going to blame, but you got to hear for yourself. You got to hear from the horse's mouth. Uh, when we say things like distribution deals and stuff like that, there are <laughs> elements of those deals that we can't, we can't give any information about because it's, it's all under contract and it's, it's all, uh, kept under that umbrella. So, uh, you know, I said, Hey, this sounds like a bunch of bullshit. You signed the NDA with SAG after they shut you down. As much as we would like to give you as many details as possible, uh, we're sort of, uh, legally bound by the fact that we can't do that. Yeah. Nakia, go ahead. I just now Nakia, I think she let the cat out the bag, but it's it's not till we get to the end when she lets it out. I just wanted to also piggyback on what Karen was saying. Um, the fact that we were in line with SAG rules. 
we were approved. Everything that we were doing was completely legal. Everything was, uh, everything was right in line. So the fees and all of these things that we were pretty much under attack were pretty outlandish and to the fact where some of the attorneys were, were baffled at how we were being slammed with this fee or that fee and why this was coming up that why that was coming up. It was almost as if it was a vendetta to shut us down with no um, explanation. So I just want, I just want to recognize the fact that we were in line with everything. Wait, wait, wait. Who in the hell would want them to get shut down, right? You have to think about this. Look, you got to hear, hey, someone someone had a vendetta to shut down the order. And you like, the order, They look, you say the order now to anyone in Hollywood, they'd be like, with who? Well, you know, Austin St. John, they like, who? Who's that? You know, the Red Ranger from Power Rangers, you like, which, like, Rocky? Like, which, which Ranger? We got time for it. We got all these other shits. You like, wait, it was, it was, it was odd that we got shut down. Like, wait, 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 wait. By who? Well, you know, you know who shut us down. The fact that we were in line with SAG rules. We were approved. Everything that we were doing was completely legal. Everything was, uh, everything was right in line. So the fees and all of these things that we were pretty much under attack were pretty outlandish and to the fact where some of the attorneys were, were baffled at how we were <laughs> being slammed with this fee or that fee and why this was coming up that why that was coming up it was almost as if it was a vendetta to shut us down with no no way um, man. explanation so i just want i just you want to you think saban was like hey put the a hey, hey, i see they i see the people out in fire have mobilized call sack <laughs> Call SAG up. Call them up. <laughs> Shut their asses down. Like, uh, I don't know. Like, yo, Brent, you got to get to the bottom of this, man. We we need Brent to get on the job. He's he's our reporter on the Comic-Con floor. The fact that we were in line with everything. Karen had covered, Karen and her team had covered every single aspect of that to make sure that all of the money was spent the way that it was supposed to be spent on the permits that were supposed to be spent, on the location, on everything. So some of the, these fees, again, which were completely outlandish, were just like, hey, let's hit them with this. Oh, you know what, that didn't work, let's hit them with this. And they try to get meetings as well to try to discuss this with, with um, the union. And that was just a whole nother can of worms as well. So I just yeah. wanted you guys to know that. Yeah, they didn't want to meet us face to face. Go ahead. No, I come on, man. Like, look, man, these stories are crazy. Hey, we violated this rule. You can't be under like, are you really under NDA to say you can't you didn't violate a certain rule? I just I just it's hard for me to buy it. Maybe maybe other people are buying it. Maybe you a Karen Ashley fan like, no, she was, the, you know, you know, how sometimes black people are like, why are you attacking black people? I'm like, well, what the fuck? What happened to the hundred fifty thousand she collected? I was just going to say, um, I want you guys to know, uh, Karen and David started this all because of the fans. This was all driven Who because cares? we were getting so many people asking us to read, to team up together again. And, um, this was just all a love project for them. And, uh, they were, they worked her, they, them and their team worked so hard and it was so <laughs> devastating so to see <laughs> as a friend, her, you know, she's our best friend and how hard she had worked for years to make this dream come possible to see it just um, taken from her in such a uh, devastating way. When we were, we were literally on set rehearsing our stunt fights, which was so much fun and the ma amazing costumes. And we were talking about makeup and hair. Like, we were a week away from shooting this film. It was happening. And it was such a, a disappointment for all of us involved. And, um, especially for her because she had put so much into it so i don't want you to you know this is this update is just too vague guys it's too like well you know they did this and they did that well what did they do we were in violent we had to pay so many fees what is the normal fee and what was the the fee like the three times rate free you know what i, I really suspect maybe they were in violation of sag and in order to stay sag they had to pay a fine Hey, y'all violate who who put this production together? Now, granted, you got 19, 20 people in there. 
Ain't no one is working for max deals. Everyone's working for the free. This is just a legend. I have no idea what the hell happened. Um, but there, th- this update is too vague. If I gave you guys a thousand dollars to be in the in the movie as an extra, and this is the update I get that is we got a phone call that shut down production and everything was on the up and up, and you like everything was on the up and up. Why you got shut down? Well, it was it was not our fault. It was you know it seemed like someone was against us putting the shit out, and you like it's twenty. 20 actors from Power Rangers who haven't been in nothing too noteworthy since then. Um, why would people want to shut you guys down? I think for one minute that this was just like, oh, well, you know, it didn't happen. Oh, well, it was, ne- it, I mean, and they are relentless about making this happen for you. So we yeah. shall prevail. No. <laughs> we are going to pursue she, gets, she brings up a good uh, point because the reality was is that this started long before the Indiegogo campaign. We, David and I had worked on this project a year. Um, I do believe that. They they probably cooked up this idea with probably good intentions, but then that shit went to like, it went to shit um, because somebody didn't do their job. I don't think this was like some huge plot to shut down former Power Rangers. Just writing it, planning it figuring it out, getting people attached. I mean, it, we had been working on it. Um, we're going on three years <laughs> working on the order. Um, but with that being said, I don't want this to be a Debbie Downer uh, update for you guys. I want you to know that we had, um, we have a huge plan. As you know, you saw when we were doing our Indiegogo campaign, we had a huge marketing plan. We have that for the film. There are quite a number of projects that we have that we basically just stopped everything. But there are a couple of things that we um, stopped at, that were supposed to coincide with the release of the movie. We've decided because, you know, um, because we're still working out the particulars of the movie, we're going to go ahead and start working on those things. And we're actually going to start giving you some really cool things that are going to premiere this year. And it basically is going to be some simple stuff to kind of get you ready for the order. Um, the order, in my mind, and God right. willing, from my mouth to God's ear, we'll be shooting by, you know, December. As you guys know, we're in a different city every weekend. Everybody is, you know. All right. It still ain't got to the part where uh, Nikia uh, lets the cat out the bag. But you, you kind of see this, right? Um you kind of see like where it's going like oh no we're still going to do this shit you like okay if you're still going to do it why are you crying at the shoot like here's the thing guys if you're not if you know something's done you're not crying it's like ah oh, it's just a minor delay we'll be shooting in december uh where i put this video out in in march so we'll be shooting about you know uh 9 months from now it's not over the problem is when y'all had that meeting you knew that shit was over it was done though it, it was, it was, I wonder, did someone say, Hey, we're not buying that shit. I don't know. I don't, I can't, I can't see it being sag shutting you down when you say everything was above board. Everything was, we dyed our eyes and crossed our T's. So, um, on the Comic-Con circuit, we, the majority of our cast, they travel heavily. So there's no way that we could schedule a film at any time. It's the 25th anniversary of Power Rangers. So there's going to be a lot of stuff that goes along with that. Um, but there is always a break. Uh, around the holidays, November, December, January, where the industry basically quiets down, the Comic-Con industry quiets down. I'm seeing that as our window to shoot this film. Now, hopefully we're shooting this major movie that we wanted to shoot and all our dreams come true, Um, or we're shooting a very independent film. But either way, we're shooting something. (laughs) We are... um, I think hey, they shot themselves in their foot on any more um, Ranger projects collecting donations that she's attached to. Uh, I'm just saying, like, if the biggest one, you're you are the first group of Power Rangers to uh, reach the goal of your campaign. And then you have nothing to show for. And then Nakia is about to like, I think she's about to spill the beans about what happened with the money. You're going to be like, uh... all of this. Uh, journey and I think that all of the obstacles and all of the things that we were blindsided with um, did nothing more but convince us that we've got to get this film done. It convinced us that we have to stay resilient 
as a, a family, it's as a cast, as a crew. And um, <laughs> like I said, if I could have had many more Rangers on this chat, I know they would have been here. Um, but we wanted to keep it at a certain length so that you can watch it and you can kind of know. And so it's a lot of waffling. Stay tuned because we are going to have another update in a few weeks. Come on, Something Nikia. really cool that we're going to be kicking off that kind of coincides with the Order movie. Um, and do you guys have anything else you want to chime in and say? I think yeah. it's hard because I, I have a list of things, but once you start talking, you forget. <laughs> well, I just wanted to reiterate the fact that um, – uh, we started off with, you know, what we started off with, but because of all of the fees and all of the attorney fees and all of this union fees, uh, one of the other reasons why we're not filming, you know, independently is because our budget has been cut tremendously. Yeah. There it go. There it go. Where, where did all the money go? Lawyer fees. Uh, I'll let it back. I'll, I'll let it back. I'm not ready. It's like some crawling on me. Oh, it was. Sorry. Um, there we go. I run it back. When I heard this, I'm like, wait, 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 wait. You're not about to tell me you collected how much? How much did they collect, guys? Sorry. Let, let's go. Let's go to the tape. Let's speak accurately. They collected approximately a hundred and forty, um, hundred and forty-two thousand from sixteen hundred people. And you say, hey, um, where did the money go? And you're like, well, our budget has shrunk tremendously. Well, why did your budget shrink tremendously? You, 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 you met the goals. What happened? Well, we'll let Nakia, we'll let Nakia tell you what happened. She knows what happened. It's with the order movie. Um, and do you guys have anything else you want to chime in and say? I, it's hard because I, I have a list of things, but once you start talking, you forget. <laughs> well, I just wanted to reiterate the fact that, um, uh, we started off with, you know, what we started off with, but because of all of the fees and all of the attorney fees and all of this union fees, uh, one of the other reasons why we're not filming, you know, independently is because our budget has been cut tremendously. Yeah. And so that is the reason why we have not filmed thus far. Uh, Karen and David are trying to work a deal where we can have a fantastic film and it would be very, very difficult to film anything on what we've been left with after the Indiegogo. Right. So Absolutely. that just needed to be said. Yeah. Um, and just know, like, I think I kind of touched on it earlier, you know, the Hey, hey, y'all yeah, heard it from the horse's mouth, man. You heard it from the horse's mouth. Um, so everyone who was you thought he was going to be a part of the show. Um, I mean, even a comment, I believe someone said right here. Uh, it would be nice to get an update at some point. Leaves are leaves a sour taste in your mouth when they completely stop communicating. I would agree. I would agree. Hey, of course, there's a status update in this project. You know, two years ago, when is this happening? I'm here for it. You know, all this. Well, Apparently, this is a no go now. Look, this is Zachary D. Williams. Uh, maybe Zachary D. Williams actually gave him some goddamn money. That goddamn money, you know what I'm saying? Because uh, the way Indiegogo works, I think I pointed it out after 15 days, uh, Indiegogo will put the money in your account. Right here. Here you go, right here. Funds raised sent to your bank account, uh, less Indigo fees within 15 days after your funding campaign's deadline. Ooh, so they got paid in 15, or somebody got paid in 15 days, and it was a hundred and forty-three thousand minus the fee. I mean, we could figure out exactly how much they, how much, how much is the Indiegogo fee. And I did have a special guest. I want oh five percent. Um, so 95, they get 95% of it. Um, so, uh, what are we looking at? What are we looking at? Where's my calendar? So they get 135,000. All right. Good for 135,000. Now look guys, that's steep. That's steep. 135,000. You saw the trailer. You saw what happened. How do you feel about it? Let me, let me text somebody. Um, they are supposed to be coming on the show. Hey, hey, hey. Still coming. All right. Anywho, uh, God is dead. She's like, yo, I'm late. <laughs> yo, I'm late. Hey, hey, hey. I'm just saying, like, um, if guys, I've been getting sued since you guys fucking met me. <laughs> Could you imagine? I said, hey, um, surprise, she's suing me. Um, all the money you gave me for the desktop, um, I just put it towards a lawyer and 
That's 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 where the money's going, guys. Uh, sorry, no desktops coming. Um, content is still going to be lagging. Content still going to be what it is, but uh, no, no, what you call. In fact, I was only streaming to get lawyer fees, and since you guys paid it, um, I'm no longer going to be streaming anymore. But thank you for everyone who donated me, and then I just shut down the page. <laughs> if I did that shit, you'd be like, "Hey, yo, what the fuck?" <laughs> All right, he's seen it. Let's see what he say. Now I did have, yeah. All right, cool, 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 cool. All right, let me drop the link for this special guest and special guest only to tell a story. Someone I spoke with recently, and contrary to popular belief, Francis was on the call. You like what? Francis ain't fucking with you. I'm like, look, man, I can't help it if I tell people. <laughs> how to conduct themselves and they don't listen. I can't I can't be held responsible for that. All right. So let me get everything going. But what do you guys think, man? I can reach at. I can reach at. <laughs> I miss you, Henry. <laughs> what? Oh, you. Oh, I'm like, you know, <laughs> look, man, I'll be missing y'all, man. I'll be missing y'all for real, for real, for real. All right. Uh, enter the studio. Um, Dropping. Link in chat now, or maybe I should. Oh shit! I got my my like me and my daughter be streaming. I got like my daddy thing up <laughs> when we stream. You like you and your daughter stream? Like yeah, we stream and shit. Um, I'm like guys, I didn't really go too hard in on them, but you better be damn for sure that uh people you give your money to is actually gonna deliver. Uh, because some of them won't. And this person is a content creator with a Walter story. All right. Uh, anyway, what do you guys think? This link is for the special person, not for Brent to come up here and try to give his weak ass. Like, I didn't twist our words. I'm like, bro, I looked at the links you sent. I was like, this is some Mickey Mouse shit. But anywho, um, link is dropped. I'll pin it for the special guest um, who I was on stream with, with Francis, me and Francis. And this gentleman did do a stream together. And I don't know if he recorded it or if he gonna post it or anything like that. I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, what do you guys think? Is it Ray? Um, no, y'all like Ray? Oh, man, she got all the she got all the information, but she be um she be acting like like she don't wanna whatchamacallit. Like people wanna do content, but like Camming up <laughs> is a whole thing. Um, and she may be she may not be free tonight and shit, right? Uh, but what did you guys think? Anyone else want to come up? I know Brent just wanna like. Oh, he's he's getting ready. He's getting ready. This is not Chanzo's father, okay? Don't don't think it's Chanzo's father. Um, but this is a special guest of mine. That um, I spoke with yesterday when I had my daughter acting crazy. Is you are you ready, Ken? He said yes, yes, yes. All right, all right. Are you good? Boy, what's going on, bro? What's going on? <clears throat> you tell me now. Anyone else want to come up? Uh, hit the link. Hit the link, guys. For everyone else who want to come up, y'all gonna be in the back chilling while I talk to <laughs> Ken Low. Uh, because he, he 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 could bear witness to some of the bullshit that I've been up against, uh, dealing dealing with uh, certain individuals, and you know, uh, he know damn well that they were warned and they were told how to conduct themselves. But people being they, I told you yesterday I was on her side. Oh uh, yeah, he, I'm, not, I'm not backing down on that. I'm on her side. But you know, all right, I told you this. <laughs> all right. So I'm not trying to hit you, but did did. <laughs> Was she aware of what to do and what not to do on stream? Did I tell her that? I mean, what did I tell you yesterday? <laughs> I knew warned her, but I mean, what did I tell you? Uh, anyway, what, but what we, did I? I didn't know. And let me make sure. I'm gonna see. I did not record it. It was just oh, between us three. I, don't, I mean, I would, me, me, guys. Look, when I do streams with people, I anticipate they ask recording that shit. Um, so I say shit just in case they record it and put it. I'm like, yeah, I was talking that shit. What now? I was, I was giving it up. I wasn't playing. Well, and she was smiling too. What? And she was like. <laughs> <laughs> 
Why were you so funny? Oh, but she was bad with your ass. I didn't even lie. She was bad with your I ass. Know. I didn't tell her she was a liar. It wasn't me, you know what I'm saying? So I don't know why well, she's mad she, at me. She wasn't mad with you for that point. You knew she wasn't mad with you for that. I told her, like, look, I say, look, he gon he hates JDF. He don't think anything you should you say is true. Why are you wasting time arguing? Hey, twist them my words. I'm like, who the fuck cares? Anyway. And that, and I told you. I told you. I said, that's the thing that she was mad about because the words got twisted. Who cares? And it's it's content what, creation. The, I know. I'm a content creator. And I told you this. I said, you know, people have called me scammers. I told you this yesterday because of what I was doing. I told you this. And you was like, but, but no. Your people, if people but, here, they call you scammers. And I mean, but see, people call me scammers, and they're getting uh, people are getting product. Let's, so how you gonna get product and you scam? Let Let's give so Ken, who are you, and why are you important? Let's okay. go right there. All right, guys. My name is Kenny Lowe. I am a content creator. I I am important because I have to talk about Walter Jones. <sighs> Yeah, I I um, got together yesterday with Francis and um, Henry because when Henry was exposing, you know, uh, AJS, hold on, AJF, I mean, it's <laughs> AJ, AJ, yeah. bad boys, bad boys. Well, I, just, I just say Austin because right now my brain ain't working. So, so exposing Austin and Walter, mm-hmm. I had a story that I had, you know, went to Ranger Stop in Atlanta because I live in Atlanta. I went to Ranger Stop and I met Walter Jones, who I am a big fan of until I got in line. Nobody was in line. Mm. I go to his line and me and my friend, we was there. We was chilling and talking to him. Now, mind you, we bought $400 passes. VIP, may I add. Nobody was in line. Him and I go up and we started talking to Walter. Two people decided they want to come behind us. So he's like, what you want? And I was like, man, we would just come to introduce ourselves and everything. You know, just to because the main thing I told him is I can't buy anything from you because the three ladies in the back broke me. Okay. He so, told... Okay, go ahead. All right. So, guys, before he gets to what happened, he's at Ranger Stop in Atlanta. That's where he lives. <laughs> Um, and he goes to you know Ranger Stop. He got a VIP pass, so you know you already know. Yeah, you know I'm saying I got he got money. Um, but what ends up happening? I'm broke. Don't do that. I'm broke. <laughs> he got money. He like he like I'm. He like you know he went to them guys like I'm living on a fixed income. He like well how much is the fixed income? About ten thousand a month. Just some small. Oh, that's a lot. I wish. <laughs> <laughs> he like some small. Just ten thousand. A little ten thousand a month. All right. So he go to Ranger I Stop wish. Atlanta because he he's a fan. He's he, he's been a part of it. Uh, and he goes to see the girls. You know what I'm saying? I know, I know what y'all yeah, thinking. That brother's starving. I know. He goes to see the girls. They they bend him over, break his pockets. He happy. <laughs> then he goes see his favorite ranger. Right? This all, never meet your heroes, guys. Never meet your heroes. Goes to see his favorite ranger. He got no line. He's like, this is my opportunity. And what happened? Go ahead. You got the floor, Kenny. Okay, so after Karen, Nakia, and uh, Catherine willingly broke me because it was a willingly thing. I I wanted them to. I go to him and I tell him, I said, the ladies broke me, so I don't have any money. I literally had $175 left walking out of Ranger Stop. Uh He basically, his prices were like, um, I think it was $70 for autograph, $80 for... um, picture and for a combo was like 120. Uh-huh. I was like, oh bro, I ain't got that kind of money. I'm broke. <laughs> so then he tells me, so when I tell him the girl you broke me, why you go to them? I'm, broke. I'm the OG. You come to me. So I told him, who the hell for the in line for two damn hours and wait on your ass oh. when I could be going to watch everybody else is spending my money first. I said this. <laughs> Let him Why come. would I? I'm not gonna stand in no, hour, no two hour line for you. I'm not gonna do it. I didn't even stand in line for carrying them that long. Their lines were short, but I mean, considering what we were, their lines would have been a little bit longer, to be honest. And I'm not even lying, but this was after the 30th anniversary. So after I said that, he kind of, you know, slammed the table like, 
I, you supposed to come to me. I'm the OG. I'm the Black Ranger. You supposed, I'm the one that started it all. So I was like, bro. Oh, man. So I'm laughing. I'm just laughing. So he tells me and my friend, okay, so since y'all ain't got nothing, I need y'all to move out the way to let other people who wants to support me come forward. Ooh, that- like, y'all have no idea how bad I laughed walking off. <laughs> I was like, bro, I know you ain't finna feel salty because I went to see some people over there who I actually do like, and I do like him, but I will not be supporting his ass again. Damn. You know, I I always wonder when you hear experiences like yours and, uh, you know, um, some other people's experience, you could probably even throw mine in there before before I, you know, went off the rails, I suppose. Um, how many other people are like that that have bad experiences with rangers where they're like, look, I don't want to meet this person again. I don't want to, I don't want to give them money again. I don't want to support them again. Um, and just be done with it. Man, I'ma tell you, Nakia can all I will always support her. I'm not gonna lie. If you find any dirt on her, I'm still support. Okay, so <laughs> speak, so you said Nakia, so all right. Uh so what do you think about some of the money that was spent for the movie uh going now, to I'ma lawyer fees? You, I'm going to tell you, I've been in the bed watching this, and I'm like, I never even, I think I heard about the order, <laughs> but I never spent any money, so I had kind of died out of it because I wasn't keeping up with it, so I really didn't know this until you brought it up. But I think I did hear about the order, but I didn't know Nakia and Kat was in it. I knew Austin was because of that, you know, blonde hairstyle he had. I saw that, but I was like, I didn't even know this. And I didn't even know she was the one that was putting it together. Damn, damn! It, I it's didn't. always like that. Um, and what, I do you, didn't. what do you think about the uh, ASJ JDF saying from day one he wasn't part of the strike? Man, <laughs> I'm gonna tell you, I always thought it was a collective thing, and like I told you yesterday, I didn't know any of this. All I knew, those three left, and I and the word that was said was all of them was supposed to go together. Till you start bringing this up, I'm like, I can't believe this. Out of all these years, I always thought it was Austin, um, Walter, and Twee leaving. And, you know, the other three, the other three would have too, but they never did. But come to find out, the other three said, hell no, nah, plus Twee, but we she got manipulated into leaving. Well, you don't know she got manipulated. Well, I don't that was know, still her choice. I, I, I don't know, but you <laughs> know, I'm going to just speculate. I'm going to speculate. My opinion. I'm going to speculate. I think I think what happened is she got injured and there was no medical care. And then she said, I'm walking too. That could be true because she has, bro- she has said she has broken, you know, um, body parts doing, you know, um, stunts and stuff. So that could have been another reason. So that we can just say that was her reason for leaving. Um, so. and, and guys, uh, people like April, y'all can cam up. I mean, you don't have to always cam up to combat Brent. Like, all, like <laughs> seriously, guys. Oh, yes. And Brent, let me tell you, because oh. um, you was the one that was that um, <laughs> told me that you that Walter do talk to people because I saw your comment under mine. I may not have been that lucky person that he just stood up there and talked to like that. He literally tried to embarrass me in front of those two people that were standing up there. So for you to say that Walter, you know, stands there and talk to people, that may be true. I wasn't that one. So my experience from them other people, I can't, you know, I can't speak for them. I can only speak for myself. He wanted to embarrass me because I went to the ladies first and not him. Damn. I can't help a diva attitude. I'm not going to support that. Karen didn't do that to me. Um, Kat didn't do that to me. Uh, Nakia didn't do that. Um, Rory, uh, Rory D. Travis didn't do that. All the other Rangers that was there, ne- they, even Johnny Young Bosch did not push me from that table. And I didn't have any money. And I told him straight up. He said, bro, that's cool. If I'm here next year, I told him I'll support you. Okay. He handshaked me. I sent him a picture and we went on. Why well, couldn't Walter do that? Well, you know, he, he was a line. I mean, the two didn't you say like two people came behind you or something? Yeah, it was two people. Okay, like I told you, when I walked up, nobody was there. Me and my friend, we were the only two there. 
we turned around there was two people so we was like we weren't gonna hold him up too long so but you know we just really wanted to finish the conversation and he asked us what do you want i'm looking at his prices i already <laughs> knew i didn't have the damn money so i was like i really just wanted to come and introduce myself because i met you at um dragon con in 2017 but i didn't have the money or but you was over there dancing so i really couldn't you know really talk to you so i just was coming to tell you that i saw you at dragon con and i wanted to get to you know introduce myself that's when he just proceeded to go to diva mode so i'm just saying and, I uh, can help that. you you were supposed to bring someone else when you came up kenny you didn't do well, it. Well, that person told me she was not coming. Uh, <laughs> so wait, wait. She wait. said she was not going to be able to make it tonight. Did, did you she... barely? You barely got me because I told you I wasn't going to be able to come. <laughs> hold because... on, hold on. Did she okay. not agree to come on stream yesterday? She did. All she right, said right, only if I came. But hold on, hold on. All right. She did say only if I had came. Okay. She did. Okay. But. You almost didn't get me because you know you do these like nineteen hours. I streams. look, man. Like we, I, I, <laughs> I probably cooked. I was cooking a little longer. Um, I didn't do. I, I didn't do too many skits in between. Normally, we no, have like a comedic did. segment. It was just boom, 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 boom. No, you did because I, I was, I was getting up going to um, Atlanta Comic Con tomorrow. That's why I was telling you. I'm any Rangers? Not any Rangers gonna be there tomorrow? Ooh. And you just talked about him tonight too. Who? Mike. Mike Bradley. Mike. Mm-mm. Um. What's it? Uh. Lucas. Um, Time Force. Oh, Time Michael. Force. Michael Copen. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Ask us. Ask what happened to the Indiegogo. <laughs> ask him about the allegations of uh, groping. I was not going age. to see him. I was going to see Lenore Zane. <laughs> okay. That's who I was going to see. I wasn't even going to see. Well, look, I got to bring up some other people. I see um, our uh, Dominatrix is back there. Oh, yeah, Dominatrix. She said <laughs> she was at the Atlanta, and she remembered exactly what I was talking about. I see we got our uh, Vietnamese VP in there burning the extra oil in the office. Yeah, you know I'm saying? That boy don't never stop working. Money is always on Brent's mind. It's money and Power Rangers. Um, and yeah, I see I San and Sean. So um, I'm going to bring up San... Uh, then uh, Stephanie, then Sean. I think that's the order of operations y'all came. And uh, <laughs> then we'll be that. But thank you, Ken, for sharing your story, man. I really no appreciate problem, it. No problem, my friend. And if hopefully you, come back, you can record ahead. this and put it on your channel. And, uh, you know. I was what? not recording this. I mean, I was you could. If you, want. you could clip it. You I can clip was, it. No, you gave me permission, but I wasn't set up to. I was in bed. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, the, the upload to stay up. The Power Ranger streams don't get deleted. Only the Twitch ones do. Okay. I All can right. get my friend. I can have her to clip it for me. So, All right. And edit it up. All right, my All right, friend. man. Enjoy, enjoy the con tomorrow. All right. Peace. All right, that was Ken Lola, guys. We were as we was chatting it up. All right, we got our domin our favorite dominatrix. If you in a cosplay and getting dominated, you want to be a pay pig out here. You know what I'm saying? Uh, go see Stephanie. Uh, she will get you where you need to be. Stephanie, wh what do you got for me tonight? Well, it actually goes even into Atlanta. Um, I actually first had asked Catherine Sutherland about it and she she evaded it she evaded the whole thing with the order she she did not want to talk about it at all oh not my girl she Kat. did not want no. to talk about it at all no um, <laughs> that's my that's my that's the one who gave me great advice i mean she did yeah, send me she, i was a controversial streamer but um you know i i guess if well, it is what it is i think the whole thing with the order kind of made her leery with a lot of it because like when i mean when you hear it is you've got something you're passionate about it and then nothing there's no no feedback no nothing coming from it and when you're on it and you're not hearing anything it's like okay this is now making me nervous nakia she she even said she was like sad kind of screwed us she only How? said that how if I'm everything thinking, was on the up and up i'm thinking and th this is only where from the last conversation which was with kath which was with karen at GalaxyCon richmond when i had asked this about her and she's like 
somebody had called it in and there's only two people that could have called it. One of them doesn't like controversies at this point because of the fact that he's been in too many. Take a wild guess on who. Who's the one, that, who have we been talking about that's way too controversial at this point? Austin St. John? Who is, no, Zach. Oh. Think like, about it. Austin Zach. is Zach. Austin is Zach's pride and joy. You got, when here it is, Zach's, Zach's not in on this. Oh, he's not getting the cut. Mm-hmm. Wow. So if he's not getting his cut, uh, Where do you think his loyalties are going to lie? He's uh, going to screw over anybody he can. No way. This is a crazy rumor. This is a crazy rumor. Zach Taylor McGinnis, guys, the former agent, he would call it in on on, on their asses? Oh, he man. Get his gut from Austin. Ooh, what else? What else you got for us? <laughs> what else you got for us? Well, Ken was right on the whole thing with Walter. I regard? witnessed the whole thing. Wait, wait, you witnessed I, you witnessed his interaction? I, yep. I was security. I was working security at Atlanta. Oh, wow. 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 What year was this? 2023. Holy shit. Wow, yeah. kid, 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 you got someone to corroborate your story. Uh, how does I it witnessed the whole thing and after you know being around him in Fayetteville and everything I was cool I was like all right you know Fayetteville you're 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 back you're starting to get back on the up and up you had a line a mile and a half long because Fayetteville had everybody for the JDF tribute uh-huh I mean there was I think six or seven that didn't come but you had so many that were there supporting the whole thing for JDF, supporting the whole, you know, mental health awareness and talking about, you know, JDF's presence. Walter had a line in a mile and a half from, from like one area all the way down and it wrapped. And he was like three hours long. There was never a break for him unless he forced it. So, and Atlanta had that same thing. He had spurts. Orlando, eh, it depended. But everything was all 30th anniversary. But if you weren't willing to spend money, he wasn't caring. All right. There he wasn't was... caring unless you were in his inner circle or unless you knew the people he knew. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to sit here and say I haven't done it. I've been around them off the clock <laughs> I, i've been around them when, when we when the parties had happened. that was orlando 2022 <laughs> all right well thank you uh stephanie for clarifying and backing up ken's statement we appreciate you all right and we hope the dominatrix thing work out for you all right sand and then sean let's go <laughs> All right, San, how are you? I'm good. <laughs> how have you been? Uh, Where are the girls at? Are they all hiding from the camera? They're passed out of sleep. They've been sick. <laughs> oh, shit. Everyone's getting sick. Everyone's getting uh, sick. Oh, stomach bug, yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> what do you have to add to the night? What do you think about? I mean, you helped spec out my desktop. What would happen if I would have said, sorry, I'm getting sued. I, I need to get a lawyer. Um, appreciate the donations, but uh, because uh, of the lawyers. It, <laughs> it, okay, so two scenarios. You disappear. We're hunting you down. <laughs> <laughs> We're petty like that, like, but, and we're talking day ones. Where we're petty, <laughs> um, but like if you if you come up and said to us from the start, "Hey, I've got these problems. I need to fundraise," um, we'd support you, and that'd be fine. No. But if you lie, that's no, that's no, different. We, we good. I I I offered her fifty thousand. Let's see if she takes. I bet you. I bet you she asked for more. 
I bet you Probably. she knew. I bet you she's like, well, if you got 50, you can give me 60. Yeah. You know, some stupid shit like that. So she can say um, she got the last word. Uh, but in, anywho, what do you think about the um, Austin St. John and JDF saying, hey, I was never part of the strike? I never believed that Jason was part of the strike. Uh, why would he be? Uh, and I've commented about this in a couple streams. Why would somebody who they had to beg to change shows again and become the white ranger why would he be like no I, i'm gonna join a strike and i'm going to take the money that they're offering me and uh and say fuck it um yeah, yeah. it and doesn't you, make any sense yeah and you also got uh david yost who i don't know if you remember uh his living conditions were like shit prior to power rangers taking off and the thing is is you, why would anybody listen to an 18 year old kid who knows nothing? <laughs> I'm sorry. I remember being 18 and being a stupid 18 year old. Um, nobody was going to listen to me. And so why would they listen to him? Right. Um, especially with how kind of off the chain he was. Um, so no, I don't, I never believed that, you know, Jason or Amy. At least for them, or even um, David, that they were like, "Yeah, we're gonna leave." Why would you give up a a good job? Six hundred dollars may not seem like a lot to some people. That I don't even make that now. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! A oh, week? I don't make that. I, um, Jesus, saying. I mean, I don't know. Every, everyone's cost of living is different, though. You know, like in some places, uh, 500 a week will get you by. Like if you were the South, you're the deep South, where, you know, every, every, uh, they mess it with their sisters and cousins and all that, uh, repopulating, the, keep, keeping it all yeah. in the family, it may be enough. Yeah. And, and I have a family. Like if you're single, $600 is a lot of money. Um, it is. It is. You know, if you're a single guy, 18 years old, that is a ton of money. If you don't know how to handle it and budget, that's your problem. Um, but as far as I don't believe anything that ASJ says anymore, like <laughs> maybe, maybe. I mean, I think years like, here's ago. the thing. I think he does own a uh, old katana, but I don't think it's 900 years old. You know what I'm saying? Okay. <laughs> I, I own three. He said it was 900 years old. <laughs> Oh my God. I own three katanas and they're all under 20 years old and nobody touches them. <laughs> you sure nobody. you don't got a 900 year old katana hanging out somewhere that you've been preserving? If I, okay, I'm going to be honest. If I have that kind of thing sitting around in my house, I am saying, I'm going to open a center and you can come see it and I'm going to take money from it. Yes, yes. You know, and, and because I know enough people in that world who love weapons, who love martial arts and stuff like that, they would. They would. Kill I'd have for a nine hundred year old uh, katana, <laughs> like one of the first gen katanas. Yeah, you would have billionaires coming to you and saying, "I want this. I want the. You know, I want to buy it from you. You could auction that and make billions just right. from that." Right. So no. <laughs> you can't complain and say, oh, my mom needed money and, you know, my mom needed groceries and all of that. And, yeah, he and needs, like, my mom that, was like, sick and I need to get her medication and I can have enough for groceries and I'm throwing these sick ass parties in L.A. Come party with us. Yes. All this other shit. Look, man, his story, his math ain't math. Ain't. But anything else, no. you, anything else you want to add um, before you leave? Okay. I'm going to say because uh, I didn't get to say it last time. And this is for Brent because Brent said Why something. Why does everyone want a piece of Brent? Oh my god! This is this is not about Power Rangers. This is actually about the stream, the the okay. community. Uh -huh. We care. We care what you're saying. We care that if we're in a stream and we're talking, we're having a good time. It, it matters to us when you want to raise your voice. And so the thing is, is that for day ones um we actually care about this community we care about building it um we wouldn't be here otherwise you know because we don't always you know 
I didn't know anything about Twitch when I started watching. I watched to support you. <laughs> I watch it now because I find it like dramatic and interesting. It is. But, you know, we're here to support this channel. And so that that's the most important thing to a lot of us is the channel is is that. not causing you know is not causing drama it's not doing any of the you know the extra stuff that's gonna you know i'm sorry it's gonna hurt certain people's feelings and <laughs> rightfully so i'm sorry sorry henry but I, you know you always say pick a side and i'm on francis's side on this one what, what, um, what's, what side is francis side on because you know it even though I streamed her yesterday, there was no, uh, there was no like communication with. It. What side is she on? She, you know, I think that she feels like he's twisted her words all the time. You know that he's, and I get it. Like I understand <laughs> he's got an opinion. <laughs> nothing's gonna, nothing's gonna change that. He, he is gonna, and I'm fine with that. I'm just like, okay, you know what? I'm, I'm enjoying. Who cares? Um, Who cares? Nobody cares. But she cares, and that you know that's important too. Because okay, here's the you know, thing: that was a you should never care about what your enemy's opinion of you is. You should never care. I think that. Well, I think that's the thing. I I don't think she thought of him as an enemy. Would she think of him as a friend? No, but at least just you know that they weren't that far. You know that they were in the channel. They were having. They didn't see eye to eye. Not that they were enemies. <laughs> Look at uh, me, he fucking fuming back there. Like, oh, I love Francis, but I fucking hate Jason David Frank. <laughs> you know? Well, yeah. Like, he knows so he it's, hates him, but uh, not tell people that he does. But he's not going to go it, Zach Taylor McGinnis and put put out a, a dumbass tweet or whatever. <laughs> no, and I'm, you know, like I said, I'm, I don't care if you have an opinion. Everybody has one. It's fine. Look, People people tell me when I be talking about Twitch to go put my head in a noose. They tell me I'm stupid. Yeah. They tell me I'm ugly. They they yeah. tell me so many stupid things. Now imagine if I let that get to me. You would never get another stream. And probably not. And <laughs> you know, and that's you know, but it's not the same for everybody. And on that one, um, like I said, with Brent, it's just understand that this is our channel just as much as it is. Yeah, this is true. You know. Well, he he, uh, he survived the day. Today was a test. Oh, he survived. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think people were and, waiting. Uh, <laughs> he survived. Oh, yeah. We were. We were. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, uh oh, April says that. she'll come on after, Brent. What is this? She on, she on the uh, member. Uh, <laughs> what was that one girl's name? I mean, you know her name. You know what I'm saying? Henry, fuck you and yeah. your fake ass. And <laughs> so, from, honestly, just that, just to remember that this is not just one person's community it's it's uh, everybody y'all really be like bring get y'all out of shape he can't he, he can and like for me it's not that it's oh, like I'm just gonna show everyone how to block him okay guys for the people who do not want to hear brent all you have to do is left click his name if you're not a mod or no sorry uh yeah left click his name and it should be a block since I'm a mod, I only have like put user and timeout and shit. But not yeah. mods, you can click his name and then click block. And guess what? You would never see anything you write again. I want to say yeah. I did it on someone else's stream just as a test, but um, <laughs> and you can go to your, yeah, your settings and block them too. You can go to your settings and type in his name, Brent Fam, um, and you can just block him. And then guess what, guys? No matter, he'll just literally eventually be talking to himself. And like I said, I um I have no problem with him having an opinion, anything. I just want him to remember that we're a community. That's all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? All right. Well, thank you, Sam. I appreciate I think I see Team Francis in the house, even though I spoke to Francis and she know what it is, but she on some bullshit. So anywho, uh thank you, uh Sam. Hey. I see my man Drew Danger. We got Sean Rhea. Sean Rhea gotta come up. Yeah, you know I'm saying. Thank you, Sam. I appreciate you. Uh, Sean Rhea, the guy. What's up, man? How are you, man? Um, just so everybody knows, Amy Jo Johnson will be in um, Motor City May seventeenth uh, through the nineteenth. Um, so if they plan on going to see her and asking her some questions, she's gonna be there. Like I said, 
if she, uh, I know she's watching this channel, and I'm coming for you <laughs> to ask you some questions. So I'm telling you, ask so, her about the strike, man. Was she with the strike? Uh, Walter and uh, in a Walter and ASJ saying everyone was with strike, and then they changed their mind. <laughs> yeah, see, the thing with that though is, um, my friend told me about fan work today, and I already know about that. He's like Austin and and Walter was saying that, uh, saying something about the strike, and I'm like. See, it's easy for you to lie on somebody when the two people that are key factors besides David Yost and, and Amy and Joe Johnson ain't here. Twee's not here. Uh, Jason David Frank's not here. So, of course, you're going to lie after the people are gone, after the fact. So um, I told my friend Rick, I said, look, I can't trust Walter or ASJ as far as I can throw them. And I know they're watching. I can't trust y'all motherfuckers. <laughs> Holy shit. So, so, so what, Holy shit. All right, Sean. What do you think so about my the order team, using the money for uh, lawyer fees, man? What do you think about that? I, I think that they should do some type of charity thing to reimburse them somehow. Um, give them something. Tickets, um, you know, a cameo, free cameo or something. Um, free autographs. I mean, do something because it's not nobody else's fault that that it happened to them. And everybody else now is out of money. Like everybody's have to suffer that put something into it and ain't getting nothing out of it. So, I mean, at the end of the day, um, you have to be a good person and do what's right. I feel like um, you know, lead by example. And that's what I feel, you know, so. <laughs> I'm tripping. Okay. All right. Well, but thank it, you, Sean. I appreciate and, it. Uh, just so you know, I, I offered Brent, I offered him a peaceful to come to Motor City so I could talk to him. It was no animosity towards us or nothing. <laughs> I, I just wanted to sit down and, and ask him some questions, pick his brain, because I do think, even though I disagree with Brent a lot, I do think he does. Uh, on the contrary of what people think in the chat, I do think that Brent does have a uh, mind of a genius, but um, his opinion is his opinion. But I offered him to maybe I'm going to be down there to come and, and sit with me, even take five minutes with me. He's like, I don't plan on coming there. Like, so All it right. is what it is. Well, thank you, so. Sean, for offering the olive branch to Brent. We got our guy Drew Danger coming up next. Uh, he does have a front of the line pass, so I'm going to bring him on up. All right, let's All right. go. Thank you, Sean. All right, Drew Danger. Look, man, we got look, man, we gotta get the we gotta get the Drew Danger stream. <laughs> uh ready. soon. Um I gotta I gotta check my streaming schedule. You are ready, man. You stay ready. Uh how how, how have you been, Drew? See that? <laughs> oh, with the signature. Holy shit. Oh man, look guys, we came across a real one out here. Yeah, you know I'm saying a real one. Look, the oh, women, wait. Wi women. Hold in on. <laughs> Holy shit. Okay. Check uh -huh. out the wedding ring. Oh no, we got the the green the green band. Check Yo. out the hoodie. Yo, you you was you was and wait, look. dripped out. See dripped the shirt? Out. I see it. You ready? Okay, you are ready. ready. You are How ready. How are you, my friend? What's going on? I am good, man. I am good. Just trying to navigate these streets. I got these women trying to team up on me and shit. God damn. They're like, you oh, not. <laughs> I want to say happy birthday to your daughter. Oh, thank you, man. Thank you. I, welcome, I appreciate it. She had, a, she had a great time good. today. Um, ironically, she's just like me on my birthday. I do uh, the simple things that I enjoy doing. Um, and it's kind of like the same every year. And she was like, oh, I just want to go to the places that we normally go. And I'm like, all right, we'll go to Chuck E. Cheese. We'll go to this children's spot. We'll go to this, um, whatchamacallit. Um, <laughs> um, we'll go to this other place that we always go. And she's just like, I just want to do that. And I want to have a sleepover, daddy. And I'm like, cool. So we have my, my cousin, my niece, her friend, they slept over last night. We stayed up, we watched Wish, uh, woke up, had chocolate chip pancakes, and then we hit oh them street. We hit them streets, you know what I'm saying? We was, uh, how, how, do, how do I say it? How do I say it? God. In these streets. It was in them streets. Uh, but anywho, wow, what, <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here streaming. I'm here streaming. Uh, Good job, man. I got a seven-year-old, so I understand. Ah, 
Nah, boy or girl? Little boy. We just had his birthday uh, two weeks ago. So I just paid for an expensive <laughs> party with about nine of his other seven-year-old little friends. Now, do you do you put your your son on to? Uh, <laughs> do you put your son on the Power Rangers? They, women, yes, women is yes. coming at me hard in the chat. Like God damn. Yeah, I, I actually I do. His favorite <laughs> Ranger is is Jason Font. Actually, ah, that's probably no, one of the best Red Rangers to be. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to be he, when I of. when I saw JDF last. You remember I told you I saw him a couple months before he died. Jason Font was there. So they were there together. <laughs> wait, wait. And my son is holding the helmet in the picture and he's super excited, you know, and he's just hanging out with Jason Font the whole time and asking him questions. So he he loves Jason Font, man. And my wife was like, okay, we got to go. And he, and he was like, no, no, no. So we came back a couple of times. <laughs> Yo, I, I should have brought the picture because I have an autograph, a photo of them um, together, Font and Jason David Frank, autographed by both of them the same day. <laughs> Holy it's shit. It's like a gold frame. I got a gold frame and it's got green, a green border with a red border and a white border. So it's got all their colors. Wait, wait, wait. And it's together. He's put, wait, wait, wait. Brent's putting comments about Francis on fan work. <laughs> oh no! What? Maybe on fanware Instagram, but not fanware. Yo, hey, send me the comments. <laughs> send me the comments. I'm curious what they say. Um, but anywho, uh, Drew, you yeah. have to be one of the most wholesome guys we have ever had on this stream. Like you, like you got the family, you got the kid, uh, you surviving MS. Um, yeah. you got the facts. Like they don't make them like you. You're married. Like you got the fat. Like Jesus, I've man. Been married. 12 years almost I'll be it'll be 13 very in November holy shit yeah. oh man well hey I'm I'm happy you happy to you and your love of your life. life um Thank I hope y'all stay married for forever good luck my oh friend. it's happening yeah um, we, we worked we worked really hard putting that together and uh we're, we're a team you I know? I believe it I believe it. Um, so what do you think about the whole the order movie and the 143,000 or 138 after uh, they take their fee? Uh, allegedly going to like legal fees and uh, not oh. making the movie. OK, here we go. So I met Karen Ashley. I've met her. I've met her twice now. Uh, she's seems like a very nice young lady. Um, but here's the thing. <laughs> here we go you cannot do you can't you cannot do something like that even okay so let's say everything's on the up and up and it's all good everything that happened was was something that they didn't prepare for that pay a lot of money they got to handle legal stuff that whole 16 minute videos if i'm going to spend 16 minutes on taking somebody's or somebody's money people they're taking yeah. their money i'm going to go like you said I got passes. I'm going to do a dinner. It's on me. I got it covered. I I'm going to do something in person. Okay. If you guys, I'm going to be, I'm, what I would do is I would go, I'm traveling to these cities. So everybody that donated, let me know what cities you're in. Okay, cool. I'm going to travel to those cities. I'm going to meet with you guys. Uh, we're going to hang out and I, I'm, I'm going to make it up to you guys because I wasn't expecting this. I'm so sorry. This was not supposed to happen, but it did, you know, and let's say she can't travel. It's like, OK, well, I'm going to mail you out something special, like some T-shirts some something to go towards that to 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 put a sign of good faith. Right. That like, hey, look, I, I'm trying to make this right. But the vibe I was getting was. Now, I'm not trying to downplay her, but it was like, I'm embarrassed. This didn't go well, and I don't know what to do. But, uh, yeah, the money, uh, it it went it went somewhere. <laughs> and I'm like, that's not good. You know, like, <sighs> you you got to, you, you know, and then David, she's like, okay, David, go ahead and take it. David Fielder going, uh, yes, yes, and the NDAs that we have. <laughs> NDAs, like, come on! That's not looking good. And then they're like, "Okay, Nakia, you you say your part." And it's like Nakia and Catherine, uh, they didn't have any. You could tell they didn't have anything to do with that stuff. But like, they're there to like back her up. That's why they're there, you know. 
and David Fielding can make stuff sound really smart. You know, that's why she's talking. Unless they sped up the camera, her camera sped up. She's talking a million miles. Oh, I was, uh, I sped it up. I sped it up so we can get through it. Okay, Uh, never mind it. Well, (laughs) you know, she's trying to, but the way she's moving, she she's trying to get this thing over with. Everybody else is kind of paced and like, okay, guys, this is what happened. She's like, okay, yeah, yeah. She's trying to get out of there because she doesn't want to slip up or make it sound like she did anything weird. And that's the thing. It's a weird situation, but I'm going to tell you something. Something they didn't plan for happened, and they were not prepared for it. Or I should say she was not prepared for it because everybody's going, talk to Karen, right? I should be saying she the whole time because Austin's saying, uh, talk to Karen. Everybody's saying, talk to Karen. Talk to Karen. Karen knows. <laughs> Karen so, knows, yeah. She, yeah, hey, Karen well, knows. Okay, so here's the thing, right? How much money was spent on legal fees and SAG fees, whatever you want. Yeah. And how much was left over and what was done with the money that was left over? See, that that's that's the thing. How much money was left over? If you ask me, okay. I, I think they split that shit amongst themselves. Uh probably. And they were they probably, probably on the brink of getting kicked out the union. They hired the lawyer to make sure they stayed in the union, pay whatever fines that was imposed, yeah. and then bust down the rest amongst the uh the, the uh cast. But the I, cast yeah. was showing up. Yeah, it, it, see, that would make sense. And then they're like, well, we, we, we don't have any more money. They said, oh, we got only this much left. No, there's there's no money. There's no money left. They, they Like you said, they probably did split that up or spend it on something else, you know, and then they paid their legal fees and their SAG violations, you know, or here's the other thing. They could have got hit also with um, filming locations because you have to get filming permits. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and if your filming permits aren't in order, you know, the correct way, you can get fined for that, you okay. know, and that stuff has to be up and up. And if anybody, especially my friend Brent, if he's got anything he wants to say, when I left the law enforcement world, I went to work on movies because that was always my dream. So I worked in special effects. I worked in stunts. I did acting. I'm on IMDb. Mm-hmm. Okay, Brent. So I'm going to tell you how it really works. Oh, that stuff has to be in order. If it is not in order, they will tax you, rape you, and steal your pants by the time they're done with you. If it's not right. And if it's a union, if it's a union deal, and they were all union, right? Okay. So if it's a union deal, their their union's horrible. If you're not union, you can get away with stuff. No, union's good. <laughs> If you're working, but I'm just saying on paper, like when you weigh everything, when you're working and you're like the person in charge of the money and you're the director or producer or the investors or anybody, then you have to worry about, okay, they can only work 10 hours. Yeah. Yep. Then Then they have to worry about, is there enough food? Then they have to worry about, is there enough water? Then they have to worry about all those things like that. When you're not union, they don't have to give a care about any of that stuff. That's why Saban, see Saban, he did it that way because then he didn't have to worry about all that other stuff, healthcare and this and that. He didn't have to worry about that. Union, they if it's not right, you know you can call a representative, right? And the representative can come down to the set. And the representative will sit there like this with the book yeah. and go, violation, violation. We have a guy... That's we, not right. <laughs> we have a guy on our property right now that okay. sits down and oversees the uh, the construction. And if there's any issues, he's to stop them and notify us immediately. And yeah. then we when then we have a meeting and see where we go from there. Yeah, um, they have to. They could stop the work for the day. Then they have to have a meeting, talk with everybody, vote, see what's going on, check on things, make sure things in order, get back to their people, and then decide if production continues for the rest of the day. That's how everything works. And a lot of people, unless you know how the business truly works, you you have no idea. Like <laughs> it's it's a whole list. But they took that money. They definitely took that money. Because if they're trying to say they spent all their money on legal stuff, as an example, if that happens to be true, they really messed up something. Because that's a lot of money they'd have to pay. Like they really, really messed up something. Maybe, maybe <laughs> I don't mean to be funny, but maybe Austin, you know, they, they 
he did some uh, some illegal oh, scenes shit. on the side. Now, and, uh, speaking of Austin, they up on set and said, "Hey, you got this guy right here. Uh, he owes us some money." <laughs> what do you think of the rumor or the allegation that Zach Taylor McGinnis made the call to shut it down because he wasn't getting a cut? You know what? I have seen some scummy people in my life. And I, I'm i going to tell you real quick. I had a run-in with 20th Century Fox when I was doing a project. And we were doing a tribute film. And uh, I'll tell you the whole story if you ever want to hear it sometime. But I'm not going to get But I'm just going to say I ran into them at San Diego Comic-Con. And when they found out who we were, they played cool, right? When we left the convention center, in the um, our, our film company email – was a cease and assist letter from 20th Century Fox in less than two hours. Okay. So our production got shut down and we were there specifically to promote for that movie at San Diego Comic-Con. That's right. So boys and girls, it's not out of the realm for somebody to make a call and somebody to use a connection to shut you down if they have that much power. How much power he has, I don't know. But if he does have power like that or he owes somebody a favor or is going to do a favor to get that done, um, it's not out of the realm of possibilities. Because uh, we got shut down. Yeah, just like that. Damn. So, I mean, it is, it's not out of the realm for people to do stuff like that. And if this guy, this guy's a piece of work, as we know. So, I mean, he could have gotten mad and said, you know, where's my package deal price? I'm not, I'm not getting you know, everybody else's money up front. And those guys used to work for me and they don't anymore. Or these guys still work for me and they didn't cut me in on all that. So yeah, I'm going to go, hello. Yes. There might be a union violation or did you check these permits? Oh, oh you didn't. Oh, they didn't file it. Oh, you might want to go look. I've, I've seen people do that and, and it's over. And it, it literally stops like right there overnight. Like, but I should say in five minutes, it's done. Production's done. They don't, you got 24 hours to do this, or you got 36 hours to do this. When they show up, when film people show up, it's done. It's done. It's done today. Pack up your stuff now. We want you gone now. It's over. You know, we'll call the police to make sure and sit here that you pack up your stuff and then leave. They don't really play with that sort of thing. Damn. You know, it's, it's serious. So film, film's a serious deal. So Drew is saying that there could be some stuff about it. <laughs> there, there could be. Some you know, truth and to Karen it. Karen could just be embarrassed, you know. But again, she also could have just taken the money and, and ran. Um, I hate to say that. Um, and also I say that because uh, she mentioned, uh, you know, at, at times like this, uh, you know, some people don't believe in God. I believe in God. But I see a lot of people when they're in trouble. They tend to throw God out there, and she oh, did that. She's like, God's gonna, God's gonna prayers. God's gonna, God's gonna be it. because they do some shady stuff. Look at, at T.D. Jakes, right? Look at T.D. Jakes. Swallow. Jesse Flannis and all those guys, right? All these TVN guys. They, oh we're gonna, shit! We're gonna, pray. we're gonna pray over, and it's like because you're in trouble. You're oh, in trouble. So now, yeah, 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 you're yeah. trying to defend yourself, hoping God won't strike you by lightning, and you're trying to defend yourself against all the people going, huh, I got some questions. They go, you know, God's going to bless it. So whatever you got to say, you can say to me because it's good. I may have done that. I may not have done it, but guess what? God's going to bless it. And it's like, it doesn't work that way, buddy. Right. You got to deal with what you, you know, what you sell, reap what you sell. So, you got to own up to it. So when I hear people start talking like that, I'm kind of like, now you want to mention God because it's looking like you're running out of stuff to say and you're looking like you're in trouble. That's not a good sign at all. You know, you mark my words when Austin is uh, getting sentenced for his tax thing, <laughs> he's going to be, shit. he's going to put on a, a priest, a, a priest rope, and he's going to be talking about God and slamming the Bible down. A million miles an hour before that happens, you know? So, I mean, it's just, it's, it's kind of like little signs like that, that you notice like, Hmm, you know, when people usually do that, they're, they're in trouble because they're not trying to own up to anything. And I did catch your comment about, uh, about, you know, people going, why are you going in hard on people? You know, she's black. 
Oh, you know, yeah. <laughs> you, you know, you, okay. you probably okay. if you if you ever had to arrest a black person, they'll call you a seller. Like, what, what uh, they doing? Yes. Some, they doing some illegal shit. What you want me to do? Let's go on a pass because they're black. Uh, you know, here's well, the thing. Looked, I was yeah. I was covering like I went above and beyond on this investigation for this black guy to say, uh-huh. hey, we we should do right by him. We get to the hearing. This guy lies on me. Just flat uh-huh. out lies, thinking he's yep. about to make himself look better. And I'm like, my boss is my, my white boss is looking at me like they're smiling. They're smiling because they know he's lying and they know we got the whole we both black thing. And they're like, see, it be your own people, don't it? I'm like, God damn. God damn. I tell people that. I mean, OK, you hear my voice, right? Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's yeah. He's yeah. like. Are you a surfer? And I was like, <laughs> yeah, I do surf. I'm from Southern California, you know? So, yeah. So automatically, you know where I'm going. I get heat <laughs> from black people in general. You know, I'm, I'm not exactly a favorite. So I, I have a whole perspective on how that works. You know what because, happens, right? Now, I hate to yeah. get on the black thing, but what what happens is when you reach a certain status financially, you you may grow out of doing like the stereotypical black things and like, well, maybe I want to surf. I mean, I experienced it when I was like, oh, I'm going to start mountain biking. Maybe I'm okay. going to start going to the gun range a little bit more often. You're like, oh, why? that's what white people do. I'm like, you idiot. You just so close minded. You don't know what you're missing out on. And, that's right. And it holds certain black people back. It, it's unfortunate, um, but it it is something that's prevailing in the black community. It, it is. And see, that's the thing. When I worked at the courthouse years ago, before I did investigations, you know, I did court court security. That's what I did for five years. And then I got picked up by an investigator and started training as his, his top agent. And that's kind of what happened. So and this was in California. And, uh, you know, there was people would always walk by me and, and, you know, say sell out and all this because I work in law enforcement. And you know how that goes. And uh, this one guy came in. And he kind of got roughed up by a deputy because he swung at the deputy. Now, to be fair, I never worked in law enforcement, nor have I ever said I worked in law enforcement. But I get from the general gist of things uh, when you when you in like a quote unquote, I don't hate to say superior, a a higher position in someone. And they feel like you may be looking down on them or, you know, you you Uncle Tom and all this other stuff. Um, Oh, yeah. I know exactly uh, what you're talking about. And I'll just be like. Y'all could get to the same level I'm at if you just apply yourself. That's it. It was like, dude, I didn't do anything <laughs> special to get here. Like, it's the same thing. But the guy, he swung on a deputy. And the deputy, he kind of just tackled him. But he was nice about it. He just tackled him real quick. He cuffed him, took him to the back. And the guy came back like this the next day and was trying to file a complaint with the sergeant, right? And he came out to me. And this guy, like, totally snubbed me, like, didn't even notice me the whole time. He didn't say good morning, anything to me. Whatever. That's cool. But guess who he came to when he needed, uh, when he was trying to get a witness for his report? He came to me. Because the skin color. That's what happened. And he went, oh, man, that's my brother. He's, he's, he saw what happened. <laughs> All that stuff like that. Oh, my goodness. Like, yeah, I saw what happened. And he messed up. <laughs> And you got to pay for that one. And he was like, oh, man, now you're a sellout. And I was like, <laughs> oh, my God. oh, here we go. Here we go. Oh, man. All right, man. I could, I, I could talk to Drew about <laughs> – I could talk to Drew for hours, man. Uh, I do it, have a story for you, Henry. Remember I told you I was at that thing when I was 12 with Austin and Twee and Walter. You wanted a reaction of a moment where – We got to save that. Kind of broke. We got to save that. We got to save that for your stream. I got to look at my streaming schedule. Uh, okay. Figure out a good day because, man, um, I think you got to be one of the most wholesome uh, Power Ranger fans I've ever had on the channel. Um, I think <laughs> it, it just is what it is. Um, but no, any, anything else you want to add to everything? <laughs> uh, well, yeah. I mean, I was looking, you know, where where's Brent? Where is he at? Why is he hiding? Brent, I don't think he's hiding. People have, um, I guess he's been talking shit about Francis on other channels. See, he needs to leave Francis alone. What what he said last time, you know, trying to put her out there about the whole twee thing. And look, you know, I've seen the timestamps he sent me. It, it was it was more so he listening. He was like, a friend wouldn't say she felt embarrassed or something. I'm like, dude. 
I, I saw an interview with JDF where he talked about that. And what he said was, Whoa. He felt he felt he felt bad for her because he knew that she had been, you know, tricked in so many ways. Like she followed Austin. You know, she followed Austin and Walter. And then things didn't go. They tried to do Karate Warrior. They were trying to do all those signings. You know, I was at one of the signings. And then when it was over, you know, it was done. That was it. You know, and then there wasn't whoa, whoa, anything. Whoa. You, just, you just dropped a bombshell. Do you have a vi- there's a video out there where he talks about that he felt bad for Twee? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's yeah. a video out there. I'll yeah. see if I can find it for you. It, it ties into when they auditioned. You know, he he ties that story together, and then he he tells the story. Then I see her at the Japanese restaurant. What you know? No yeah. way! You got that fucking video. No way! I've seen it. Yeah, let me see if it's still out there. But yeah, he said then she he sees her at the Japanese restaurant, and he's like, I I look at her and I'm like, I don't. I'm talking to her, and then I'm like, I I couldn't eat there. He's like, I had to go because whoa, I felt so bad. She, whoa. She was having Drew, to be there like Drew, that, you know? Drew. Drew, Drew, yeah, Drew. Whoa, whoa, whoa! People said they saw that video. What? Yeah, where, 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 how do y'all it's see these there. videos and don't be linking me to them? I'm gonna, I'm gonna find it for you where he talks about that because, like, yeah, he, he held, he held Twee in such high regard. I mean, that's why he picked her. They said pick a girl to work with. You know, he what? out of all the girls, he picked her. So, so wait, he, wait, he, wait, 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 yeah. wait, 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 yeah. wait, 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 wait. <laughs> yeah, you mean Francis got this proof to support Francis, Francis statement? You know, Mister, yeah. I don't believe anything Francis say, Brent. No I, way. I, I got Brent's phone number, man, on speed dial. Don't worry about it. He, yeah, he's not gonna. <laughs> I didn't Francis, talk to Brent. <laughs> I, I, I got nothing but love for you, and I'm not gonna let Brent mess with you. He messes up something. We're going to deal with it. And he messed that up because there is not one. I believe there's two videos where he talks about that, where it comes up. One's longer than the other, but he brings yeah. it up. All right. We got, we got to do the bridge stream. And you got, I mean, not yeah. the bridge stream, but the Drew stream. And we got to do it. The the Bruce, yeah. the, 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 the bridge stream is like two minutes where he just trying to say, uh, a friend wouldn't say another friend felt embarrassed and was fragile. I was just like, this is some Mickey Mouse shit, and I said it. No, it was ridiculous. It's like that's that's what friends really do for you. <sighs> if he was a fake friend, he would just be like, "Oh, hey, it's nice to see you," and whatever, what else? And he'd eat at the restaurant, right? Him and Saban would be laughing it up and 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 serve us their drinks, and they kick their feet up on the table if they didn't care about her. But Jason couldn't even eat there. He was like. I can't get water from her. I can't eat here because this is my friend. <laughs> and she followed these idiots. I'm going to say it. She followed these idiots and it cost her. And so she's sitting here working at a place and being a waitress is respectable. It's just the fact that she made the wrong business and decision move. That's what the issue was with him with that. She made the wrong move and she followed the wrong people. She trusted the wrong people. And you better believe there was probably a conversation where Jason pulled her to the side and was like, don't do this union thing. You know, don't do it. Because w- they were friends. They were close. You know? Wow. So you know he, he talked to her and told her, like, hey. Because remember, he always said, I pull people to the side. And I was like, guys, don't do that because you're going to end up at the um, at the conference. Remember? Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know, I, 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 I played that video, yeah. Conference. He, and there's a story where his brother, remember his brother was cutting up because they were going to make him the Gold Ranger. I've showed that on this channel already. Yeah. And what did he say? He said, freaking Eric, he's like, stop, man. You're going to mess up and be at the peace conference before you know it, man. Stop Holy it. shit, Drew. <laughs> See? He kept telling him. And he's like, I kept telling my brother, stop, stop, stop doing that. Stop doing it. You know, he's like, you got to get a right or else you're going to be at the peace conference. Oh, he told Drew, everybody. man. Drew. He told everybody, which means, check this out, Harry. He told Walter. You know he told Walter. Because they were cool on the show. Uh, it was him and Austin to have problems. Walter always said that, man. Yeah, we were cool on the show. He told him, like, don't do this. You know, I'm telling you, it's not going to work out well. You know, oh, that was the thing. Yo, what the fuck? That's, that's the thing. And yo. then when you get to Zio... You know, 
that was the thing. He was telling everybody, Steve Cardenas, he told him, right? Like, don't, don't do it like yeah, he that. Was, he like, was telling Steve Cardenas, like, hey, you need yeah. to, uh, you need to show up on time. You need to, you know, yeah. put in the work or whatever. And Steve, he was like, he, his heart wasn't into it. He hated it. He said the Power Rangers ruined his life. And look yes, at Steve Cardenas. Was he was thing. he was he was off the show. He quit uh, to do the the dojo shit. But did he really ruin his life, or did he ruin his own life? Hey, about this hey, God damn, Drew! Let him cook. See, you got to think about Drew that. Drew is cooking. Did he not audition? Did he not want to be on Power Rangers? Okay, now you're here. Okay, so then give it your best go and best effort, so you can keep doing the shows, get paid what you want, whatever. And you can start getting that and become a veteran member and up your money, whatever you want to do, right? And just yeah. do what, that's what JDF did. He was like, I want to be here, so I'll I'll do that, you know? And that's what JDF was trying to tell him. It's like, dude, you got to come here on time because he was trying to help him to be there. If people don't give a care when you get on set, they could give a care less if you're late. They could give a care less if you, you know, goofing around on set, if you playing with things you shouldn't be playing with on set or whatever, they don't give a care. I worked on movies. I saw people like if people didn't give a care about you, they just let you do your thing. And then you hung yourself and then, oh, well, right. But he cared enough about everybody on that set where he was telling people, you know, hey, you know what, guys, we got to look at this. Hey, guys, do it this way. That's why I don't get why. Why is Karen Ashley mad at JDF? JDF. Uh, oh, she's mad at him. Like, um, like I, I, I hate to spill the beans. But it was like the 20th anniversary or something. Um, people were trying to do the fucking strike again on some dumb shit, and uh, JDF said no. <laughs> uh, that's the TLDR, but I, I have to oh, get the tapes. Oh, wait a minute. I have to get I the tapes. I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, she went that off. Was she was going off on him. Yeah. That's when they had the big reunion, and then JDF was just like, I'll do it for free. I'll, I'll do the reunion. Yeah. That's cool. And she's like, well, they're not going to pay me. I remember. She did an interview where she said, yes, they look, did not you know. pay me. <laughs> look, I got they the- did not pay me, and they sent me a generic letter that didn't even have my name yeah. on it, and it's just like, Ranger. See, look, me and- <laughs> I was so offended by that, and I didn't want to do it because they didn't make it special for me. But here, you're going to like this. Take that back, Karen, because you said the same thing at the movie premiere when Ham Saban didn't know you. And you were like, that just wounded me. Shit. She said the same thing when they sent that letter. Drew, she wants to oh my God. She no. wants to be acknowledged. She, That's all that is. Where, where, she wants to be special. Acknowledge me. <laughs> she wants to be special. That's all it was. She wants to be special. Drew, oh my goodness. Know. How do you just it's calmly come on stream and just cook? How do you do it? I, 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 I because I'm on one, roll, man. because one, I know about the Karen Ashley thing. I'm like, I'm, I was saving that for when I do her Karen Ashley uh, Ranger stream. Uh, but yeah, she was like, they didn't send me no money. And here's the thing: yeah. this is why people get pissed at JDF because he's the most popular Ranger, and if he's not charging money, then it lowers the value of everyone else because they're like, yeah. well, he's doing it for free, so. I mean, are we going to pay you more than the highest, you know, the most popular Ranger? And then the answer is just, nope. No. So. But see, the thing is about that is because of JDF, <laughs> everybody's making money. Acknowledge me. Little or a lot. They're making, they're making money. And if they hung out with JDF, like Jason Font, Jason Font's perfect example. JDF told him, became cool with him, told him, okay, here's what you need to do. Here's the roadmap, right? Everywhere Jason went. Jason Font went, right? When I told you I met him, Jason Font was there. Holy they were shit. There together. You are they were there together. You know what? You are telling me um something from a private phone call that me and Francis had. You was hacking my phone and shit. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'll tell you what, you give me give me two seconds and I, I need to show you something. Give me two seconds. Hold on. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, guy. Go ahead, no, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go. God no. damn, y'all. Drew is is out here cooking. Oh my goodness. One, he's cooking one. He, he's cooking with information I'm aware of that I'm like I haven't disseminated. I, I've always alluded to it. But I was like, man, she really didn't like JDF. Um, and it had to do primarily with the 20th anniversary. Um, and people were like, we should strike and we should do this. And he was just like, uh, nope. Nope. Cause I know I gotta bring receipts because every people <laughs> like print and everybody's gonna be complaining. You see this? You see those two signatures right there? Damn, he got it. He got That's it from right. the 20th. He got it. That's right. I was there. He was there. 
He was there. That's right. That's how they operated. And Font, listen to him. Font is doing well. Font is second in line, but well, he's behind. He's at, like right next to Amy Joe about being the second most popular, right? He's up there. Yeah, yeah. I would say, I don't both know, man. Them, yeah, both of them are, Amy Joe and him, doing well and high in popularity behind JDF. Why is that? Because they listen to JDF's business plan on how to do the conventions and where to go and how to handle yourself. And guess what? They show up, they're selling out. They got everything set up, right? See, Walter, getting in <laughs> fights with your buddy that was just on the show. You know, yelling at people, right? Yeah. He's not handling this stuff right. ASJ, he got crickets in his lines. Why? <laughs> because he doesn't know how to run his business. They're having problems with Zach because JDF told you, don't do business with Zach. He's not right. I had him. He's not going to work for you guys. Don't take him. But what everybody do? Oh, I'm going to stay. Oh, and, and then the complaint about the money where Walter's, Got to go, I need $1,500. Please <laughs> give it to me. Oh, no. Challenge my right? manhood. He's got to be that guy because he didn't listen. JDF oh, told him. Oh, man. He wanted, and right, what did he say? Take me with you on your shows. <laughs> oh, shit. I can't properly take you with you because you have that agent. And that agent's got you tied into contracts. So I can't take you Damn. unless he agrees. To bring you with me, yo, and Drew, they work a deal. Drew's See? a real one, y'all. He's like, I am. I'm just, I'm telling he's been you, hold, like, like he's, he's a listen. real one. I can't, I can't even hold y'all. Like Drew, he knows, he knows, he probably knows my content better than I know it. But I do remember uh, doing the the Go stream, like um, about uh, JDS brother potentially being the Go Ranger, and then yeah. you know Walter. I mean Austin St. John ended up coming back, uh, which probably was the right choice for the fan for the fandom. Uh, but he was on the table. Like I showed you guys the article of it, but uh, that just goes he to show it. you that Drew was around for, he'd been ninja watching for a while. Why the hell you been ninja watching so, for so long, Drew? Oh man, you know, I I I was at the hospital and doing all these doctor's appointments for so long and it's kind of, you know, slowed down um, where I still go a lot, but not as much. So I'm around more often, you know? So it kind of just worked out and I saw your show because I like to check out people's different shows and I was like, Oh, this Henry guy looks good, you know. <laughs> and I said, let, let me check out this show. So I looked at the show. I said, Oh man, I love this show. I, I gotta get on there. I, I got some stuff for him. Like, oh yeah, man, you know, I, I, hey, you were... see, I was there in 1993 when the show originally came out. I was there when the whole thing happened. I am from Southern California. My father was stuck on the 101 freeway when Universal Studios had the show and it shut down the freeway. My dad was stuck on the freeway and he came home saying, I hate freaking Power Rangers, you know, because the, <laughs> the freeway was shut down. I lived the whole experience. Oh, my goodness. I lived man. it all. I was there when and I was one of the kids that wrote letters to to, to Fox Kids to give to Saban to bring back Jason David Frank. Holy I wrote shit. not one, but I hey, wrote yo, what ten. The fuck? That's right. Oh, That's my right. goodness, my guys. That's Guys. right, because my dad mailed a lot of letters all the time. So I just said, hey, can you mail these letters for me? Yeah. Drew. Drew. So I fought to get JDF back on back on the network. Yeah, that's right. So I was all for it. I showed support in every way. I was part of the original Power Rangers fan club where you get the videotape and all that good stuff. I was in all that. The oh Christmas that the White Ranger came out. <clears throat> I got one for Christmas. I was like the only kid in the neighborhood that had one. And I was one of the few kids that had the Green Ranger, not the small, but the eight inch figure that came with Dragon Zord that they only made like one a box to get. I had one. I was there. I was there for the whole experience. I went through the whole ride. I did everything you could do as a Power Ranger fan as a kid at that time. That's Damn. right. Damn. You know, I was. <laughs> Yeah, I was well, getting, we got a question for right. you. We got a question yeah. for you. How many letters did you write to bring Austin St. John back? Okay. Now, I did write letters to bring back him, Tweet, and Walter. And this is before I met them. So oh. I, I did. I wrote, I wrote probably about three to four for them, you know, together in a thing, you know. And because I, I wanted them back, but I wanted back Jason David Frank more. So he got more letters. But. I did do three to four letters for them. 
and I would have done more um, actually. And then my mom told me about, cause KB toys, this is how old I am. KB toys was selling the tickets at Victor Valley college to meet Austin Twee and Walter. So my mom bought tickets and got me um, uh, an autograph voucher and a picture voucher mm-hmm. to, to get my picture. And they would, it was an Instamac. Remember Instamac? You take the picture and it comes out. Oh, like the Polaroid, the Polaroid. Yeah. The, the yeah. Shake it like then, a Polaroid picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they would, there would be a little tab on the bottom and people could sign it. So you, they could take the picture, it come out, shake it, it clear up, picture looks good. Then all three of them could sign at the bottom right there. So that's 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 what happened. So I, when I met them, I still wanted to push for Walter. I still wanted to push for Twee. But I met Austin. And the way he just he killed it at 12 years old, man. He killed yeah, it. Yeah, you told us. You told and us uh yeah, the last time. What you came I up. didn't tell you was I was in <laughs> line to <laughs> You might, you might want to save some juice for the Drew stream. Okay. You might okay. want to save you some, Drew, some say. juice for all the right. Drew stream. That's all, all right. <laughs> Look, man, anything but else? After that experience, <laughs> I, I, and I liked, I liked Austin a lot on the show, but after I, I experienced that, I didn't write for him at all. I was <laughs> like, I literally separated the guy from the character. And that's how I did it, you know? But I, I've never looked at that guy the same. And I, and I was 12 and I'm 41, you know, I'm going to be 41 in March, I should say. And if I saw him now, I, I couldn't even look at him the same, like to this day, you know, I see him and I'd be like, man, this, this guy, you know, he, he's, he's a piece of work guys. He, he really is. All right. You know. Well, look, Drew. I, uh, you know, we can go on for hours, um, but we gotta say let's, some let's juice for the Drew Street. Let's cook. I'm ready. What, what else? It's, you it's, got? Too, it's it's like it's like one thirty where I'm at right now, man. It's you one thirty. Know, <laughs> I know a lot of people on the East Coast. I know, like uh, April, she she is twelve thirty where she at. Um, any last words, Drew? This is what I'll say, guys. I'm I'm on this show. Because, you know, as I shared with you guys, I saw Jason David Frank two months before he passed and he did a lot for me and he made a video. I sent it to you, Henry. I had to send it through your Facebook messenger, but I sent you the video he sent to me and um, he made it for me and he did a lot for me because I had met him several times. And after his death, I knew that there was something wrong when I saw him. And I should have talked to him then. And I carry that guilt because I felt like maybe if I had talked to him and done it in the way that I should have done it, maybe I could have helped him. So I'm here on the show and I'm battling out with Brit because <laughs> you guy, I'm telling you, you wasting your time trying to battle Brit. He hates Jason David. I'm going to get him. He, he, <laughs> he needs to be remembered correctly. He needs to be remembered for being, the, the guy of love that he was and for all the, I mean, look at all the power protection program and he went there on his own dime, flew out there, rode his motorcycle himself, you know, to try to help people out. That's the kind of guy he was, you know, <laughs> because of him, businesses stayed open. People got into conventions that had never been to places like that. He made things happen for people and we owe it to him to keep his name clear, clean, and right and have justice given to his name. I think that that's right. I think that's only fair. If th- we owe him that because look at all the joy and all the stuff he's done for us. If we saw JDF right now at the store, he'd take pictures, hang out with us, do everything, sign everything, give us some shirts and, and wouldn't think to charge us a dollar. That was him. How many people do that? You saw what happened to your friend with Walter. You're like, what do you want? And he's like, I just came to say hi. He's like, Ann, are you going to get something from me? And they were like, Ugh. And almost looked like they were going to come to blows over the situation. Just that. So you have to think, like, not everyone does that. He was one of a kind. I have not seen a guy like him. And 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 this I this is how much I respect JDF. I mean, he was a hero of mine. Um I haven't seen anybody like him since two people, Bruce Lee and Mark Hamill. Those are my two people. I haven't seen anybody like him since then. 
Yeah, because those are guys would you, you you see Mark Hamill? Mark Hamill will take his shirt off to to talk to somebody and, and give to a fan. Yeah. And, and, and have a lot of love. And Luke Skywalker is my number one hero. And my son's name is Luke because of Luke Skywalker. Holy shit, Drew. Uh, oh my good. All right, Drew. I gotta yeah. end it. I got we we're done. We're done, man. It's too much wholesomeness you going. Hear the too much wholesome. What what's the middle name? Egon. <laughs> oh my god. Ghostbuster. Yeah. Because <laughs> that was the one my wife would let slide. So I was like, what about Egon? Hey, yo, you know, what the fuck? after the Ghostbuster, my wife was like. Okay, that won't be a bit much. I, I think we, I, I like that one. I think we can do that. Oh, man. Okay. All yeah. right, man. Drew, I'm sorry you've been cooking too much. You've you've maxed out your cooking session. I'm going to have to clip this one um, so everyone could get a piece of Drew. And um, let me look at my calendar. Uh, let's see. I got my daughter Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Um, it could put, uh, nope, 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 nope. nope. Mm. Wednesday, what's that? Valentine's Day? Um, oh, yeah, Wednesday is Valentine's Day. I'm gonna do a Valentine's Day stream, y'all. I'm gonna do a Valentine's Day stream for all the for all the lovers out there. Yeah, you know I'm saying. Um, so we're we're probably looking at either the 20th, February 20th, mm-hmm. or and or February 23rd. All right. Let's do the 23rd. Damn, he want that Friday. He want that. He want that weekend spot. All right, all right. I mean, I'll do whatever weekend, day you nigga. want. But all if right. I got a choice, I'll take that. But if you want to do it on the twentieth, I will. Here's make the thing. It Here's the thing. Barring okay. any breaking Twitch news, the twenty third is your date. Now, cool. what I'm gonna need from you is I'll tell you like the same thing I did for April uh, when she wanted to put a, together a, a tribute stream. Uh, the clips you want to play and the timestamps. Okay. Um. And and then then we Gucci and I usually okay. shoot for like one hour of content. That's usually about two hours of talking. And then it would just be me and you. Maybe I'll dip out and just have you have you up here you know saying uh, talking your shit. Uh, but so the 23rd, too, you know? <laughs> the 23rd, the 23rd, the 23rd, um, 23rd. And it's 8 p.m. Okay. to uh, usually about 10 o'clock, about two hours. Okay, that sounds good to me. Check your Facebook Messenger. I checked it. I didn't see nothing. The best messenger, messenger. Yeah, the best way to hit me up is through Instagram, man. And you know, put 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 together a little uh, Instagram account for yourself with some pictures so I can use for thumbnails. Yeah, I've got an Instagram. I'll, I'll yeah, I'll send yeah. that. I'll send, send that it to, to me. you. All right. Well, thank you, Drew. I appreciate that. Um, let me see what the chat says. That was Drew. Everybody. That was Drew coming through cooking, could just could just straight cook, just straight cooking. Let me let me let me get to where we need to be. Uh, straight cooking on the chat. Let's see what the poll said. It's tight. We're at fifty two votes. Fifty two percent said no to Brent. Ooh, <laughs> Brent, what happened? <laughs> Drew invited to the carne asada. Um, Jesus, guys, it is a little late. It is a little late. Uh, I didn't expect to go this late. Uh, you know, Brent's still back there waiting, y'all. He wanna, he wanna clarify things. Um, but let me, let me check. Like, guys, he only wants to talk about Francis and uh, prove, I guess, that he didn't twist her words. If I remember correctly, based on the emails he sent me. Um, but it's it's really about a friend would not say she looked so embarrassed. But we have a video that may be out there, and we got the fourth quarter, Mr. Monsters, always welcome, coming home from the graveyard shift. The graveyard I'll be quick. shift. I'll be quick. <laughs> yeah, pretty much graveyard shift. Uh I mean it's like 10 30. But real quick, because I got because my phone died last time and I, and it is late. Um just want to say to follow up and, and also can add on to this stream because I like this stream. Yeah, had some bombs for this stream, and <laughs> Drew's great, man. He just he took and dropping phenomenal. bomb after bomb. He's just dropping all the bombs. <laughs> I love it. I love it. It's great. Um, but yeah, I want to say the only way I would consider Austin redeemed in any sort of fashion because. It's probably like like Drew said, even back in the day, he probably wasn't like the best person behind the scenes. 
But if he was to uh, get rid of Zach, somehow, somehow I know that that would be all Zach has left is Austin. But if he would just get rid of Zach, and I know that public, I mean, he doesn't want to publicly go out and talk bad about him, whatever. But if he cut himself off from Zach and got a new fucking manager, fucking somehow, some way, uh, uh, Walter Wright, he's not with Zach, right? Uh, uh, who, uh, who, say it again. Uh, April dropped a fire comment in the chat, but go ahead, Mister Monster. Uh, uh, well, because I, I figure modern times Zach is that guy that has that problem. The the, the one that the, the the manager or the the uh, what do you call him? Um, booking agent. Booking agent. Booking booking agent. So I th- I feel like if he got rid of him, and fucking it turned out that. You know, he was just a stooge when it comes to all the money. Then, then maybe he'd be redeemed a little bit. But that's that's what I was trying to say when I got my phone died and then the stream ended, anyways. But to go on today, bro, poor Brett got cooked every freaking stream, <laughs> and I feel I, I I shouldn't feel bad for him. But hey, you know, haters gonna hate, players gonna play. What are you gonna do? Yeah. He's gonna, he's gonna cook his own way. Um, I I would like to see. Brett and Drew go at it, just <laughs> let them go at it at each other. I think that'd be funny. Um, yeah, we'll see. We'll, we'll see. Drew, Drew, you know, tip. If anyone has done a stream with me before, they know that they typically have, for the most part, free reign. You know, yeah. All about you know what happens. I don't really try to intervene uh, too much with it. I try to just say, hey, you got to be entertaining. Um, no, exactly. And these streams have been entertaining, so I am very informative. They've been, they've been entertaining, informative. I put pop it in while I'm at work, or if I'm at home, I'll, you know, listen to it or actually, you know, uh, make a real appearance where I'm not just all after work, whatever. Yeah. Anyways, uh, but but no, I look forward to if you're going to do another stream Valentine's Day or whatever the next day that you do your stream. That'd be cool, and I'm, I'm going to be looking for the, 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 the WWE one. All right. <laughs> Salute to you, Mr. Monster. I appreciate All right, guys. I got Brent in the back, but y'all said don't. Y'all don't want to see Brent. God damn. God damn. What do I do? Y'all voted him out. It's 51 49% with 57 votes. Did you guys vote? Brent needs, I think, about two more votes. Um, but guys, I'm telling you, it's it's very like it's very childish in my mind. In my mind, you know I me mean? like Harry is not childish, just just some shit. I'm like, well, look, man, this shit, this shit just Henry stop hiding the pole. <laughs> oh, he said I'm hiding behind a pole. Like, goddamn, he like acknowledge me. <laughs> look, I'm not hiding behind a pole. I'm just saying, like, you didn't win the pole. Like, this is a democracy, right? It is my channel. But my, my women, the union, we're going to call them the union. <laughs> if you're a woman uh, in my chat, you're part of the union. The union has been very against what you've been saying on other, um, on other, whatchamacallit, on other platforms about Francis. Did he say, like, like, here's the thing, guys. We pretty loose over here. We don't do name calling. We don't do, you know, uh, allegations per se um but we do kind of keep it respectful right is he saying disrespectful stuff about francis on other platforms that he would get banned from my chat from doing like is he trying to do that like you know remember when i got suspended from school and i was like yo i i didn't punch him on school property i punched him on the basketball court and it was like nah 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 it don't matter you still punched him he still go to our school and shit. You can't beat him up at the basketball court. And then, uh, what should we call it? Uh, April says she's supposed to cam up. She's supposed to cam up. Unless she cooking and got the kids. You know how Brent was like, you cooking, you got kids. You don't be saying shit. Um, is, is, is people challenging his manhood? Challenging my manhood? Yeah, I think she probably did. She did probably call me a dumbass. But see, I got thick skin and shit. I mean, like. Look, when people tell me put my head in the noose and then April call me a dumbass, I'm like, all right, well, maybe I am dumb. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Like, well, maybe. I mean, it's my top mod. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. People call me a liar. People call me, look, 
Walter said I'm lying or the summary's a lie. And, you know, I, he didn't say I didn't lie. You know, the semantics. I didn't say she's a liar. I said I don't believe her. <laughs> you know, shit like that. Who who has just popped in? Oh, shit. You then kicked the hornet's nest, Brent. You then kicked it. April, as we live and breathe. You know, April, we we've, we've been had we've been had plenty of uh, conversations. Let's give my mod, my number one mod, the 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 stage she deserves. How are you doing this lovely night, April? Who I've talked to at like two o'clock in the morning, three o'clock <laughs> in the morning, five o'clock in the morning, six o'clock in the morning. Henry, do you sleep? And I'm just like, nope, no. <laughs> What's up? Uh, nothing. I heard you said my name, so I had to come up. <laughs> All right. So what did you think of the whole, um, the order in the money not going back to the people who donated and potentially going to lawyer fees and SAG fees for what I'm assuming to be violations that uh, they had? Greedy. They Greedy. Should, yeah. I mean, because they're taking money from, you know, these fans who support them. They want to be who they are without, you know, their fans, of course. And they're okay with just taking this money. And just paying their, you know, I mean, their own things. And so I don't think that's right. They should have given the money back. Okay. All right, guys. And what you guys don't know, like early on in this channel's career, we were both looking into JD's death simultaneously. And she was finding things and I was finding things. And I told her, I was like, April, just start a channel. She's like, no, 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 no. And I was like, if you start a channel, I'll, I'll give you all the help in the world. She's like, all right, I'll keep that in mind. Uh, but so some of that JD early JDF stuff, April had it, you know, behind the scenes hand in. Um, with that being said, what did you think of Jason saying about the strike? And, you know, from day one, he was never with it. And Amy can vouch and Jason and David can vouch. Uh, what do you what do you think about that? Is he lying like Brent says he is? Well, I mean, I mean, everyone can lie. Right. But the thing with him is he's always been consistent with his story. If he had if he had been telling different stories, then yeah, I wouldn't probably want to believe what he's saying. But he's always been consistent. I actually found a video today um, at a con with him and Amy, and they said the same thing. Oh, yeah. You sending it to me or what? Who are you just sitting on it? <laughs> I'm saving it. I, I can send it to you. Okay, so she's going to send it to me. All right, all right, all right. Well, so guys, uh, you don't know, but me and April talk so much, and uh, we go back and forth, and you know. Uh, this whole Francis no show thing. Francis could legitimately be busy. And I did speak to Francis yesterday. We were on stream for about an hour um, with me, her and Ken. And she was laughing and she was like, yeah, I know you told me, but I still I don't like it. And I'm like, what do you want me to do? So what what do you think about this whole Francis Brent debacle? Because um, you are who's the leader of the union on the channel? The union <laughs> is all the women streamers. They're the union guys. Uh <laughs> And they've been on my ass this stream. They've been on my ass. I'm like, God damn. They like, I told you, Henry, 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 leave this woman alone. And I'm like, all right, okay, go ahead. You you have the floor, April. We told you, Henry. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing. Okay, so I'll open up with this. Like you said it, you said to me before, you know, it's good to have people of different opinions, if, you know, people who are going to say different things because that op you don't want an echo chamber. You don't want just, you know, everyone agreeing. It opens up to, you know, more discussions. But I think Brett is the kind of person who he just kind of goes too far. Um, and he kind of, I feel like he, his dislike for JDF is so strong that anything he hears He's seeing it through his own, I don't like JDF Lynn, so I'm going to try to twist it in a negative way to give me another reason to not like him. Um, like the restaurant story, right? He Speak on it. it. He has his own interpretation of it. He's yes. Like, yes. Right? Like, yeah. I'm happy you bring up this own interpretation of it because in his email, he just says a real friend wouldn't say they looked embarrassed. That That's literally, that's the whole, that's the crux of it. And I'm like, are we really about to do a Brent stream for some for the interpretation of someone being embarrassed and what a real friend would say and what a real friend would not say? I mean, I just don't see the 
I mean, one, I always got to think about entertainment. Uh, and April knows and Francis knows that some things I just do for entertainment purposes. And some things are actually like rooted in truth, like when you see the articles. Uh, but when I say, hey, Francis always coming up with her titties out. Um, I don't I hope you I don't think <laughs> I hope you I don't think she's backstage like, you know, doing some shit like this. It's just a, it's like an inside joke or whatever. She laughs. I laugh. Y'all laugh. Even April laugh. Who even told me, like, stop saying that. And I'm like, you laugh. Right. That's the purpose is entertainment. Um, but um, I just like for the life of me, I'm like a Brent stream for what a friend would say and what a friend would not say about uh, being embarrassed. I'm like, I just don't. I don't know if it's worth it. No, because that's just his opinion on it, and I can give my opinion on it. But that, that, you know what I mean. That's like that, everyone. Vacation. Yes, and I'm like, is that what we about to just argue about opinions on things? And it looks like some people have voted for Brent to come up, guys. Damn. Bring him up. You want you want Brent you want bring you want Brent up. You do you want him up, April? Your phone, your, yeah. your phone is cutting out. Oh, it is? Or it was. You said you want him up. Yeah, bring him up. Now look. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> uh, Brent, 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 you are summoned to the gulag in April wants you to come up. I wasn't going to bring you up today, but April said bring you up and she's my top mod. And she never really asked me for anything. I remember at one point I was paying mods and I was like, you want somebody? She was like, no, there oh, wow. he goes. Oh. Oh. oh wow, you're here. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa! Did we catch I, you at a bad time, Brent. I was, I'm, I was prepared not to do it. Uh, come up because, um, Henry, uh, I send you an email February eighth, two thousand twenty four <laughs> at nine twenty four twenty eight a.m. <laughs> the the real friend uh, does not do that. That was just a small sentence in an entire chain of emails. Uh, I gave you timestamps, <laughs> everything for full context. It wasn't just an opinion. I I have full quotes of what happened. So let don't me pull, pull me. Don't, let don't, me pull it up. Uh, JDF Francis said the following. Uh, Love Twee was upset with Twee multiple times. Stated thought she had a lot of potential. Thought, Here, no Henry, look at February eighth, <laughs> two thousand twenty-four at nine p.m. Maybe it's a uh, twelve p.m. Uh, wherever you are, 12 a.m. February 9th. Like, this is what I'm talking about. Uh, when does 4205 it start? 4205 to 40412. Uh, I have direct quotes, and people could say that I twisted her words, but I could read them <laughs> straight from the direct quotes. He loved Twee. He was upset with Twee that she sided with them and left the show. Okay, right? I'm, I'm, re I'm reading this. He always said that out of everyone, Twee had a lot of potential. Twee was, yes, she was a fragile girl, but she had so much potential and she had like a dynamic aura to her. I, meaning JDF, was very upset that she left. I, JDF, was so embarrassed that to even order something from her. They were once equal characters at a show working together and now she's serving him water. He didn't want to disrespect her like that. It's embarrassing. She said that she looked embarrassed to be waiting on Haim Saban and him. They went somewhere else. Francis agrees with Common that Twee wanted to follow a fake ass Jerry Maguire off the show. That is what is what happened. What, Direct what, quote. What's the and issue with that? I don't there's there's no issue, but people are saying I, I twisted her words. I did not twist her words. I believed everything that she said about Twee, and the video confirms it. So I people say I said she's lied. No, I believe what she said about Twee. Did I twist her words? I did not. You can rewatch the video and it, it will confirm everything that I just said. Are y'all following this? <laughs> I'm like, and if, is, is there a problem in anything she said? Hold on. Hold on, no, April. Is there, did is, she lie? I believe everything that she said. Is Let's there, just, is I, there a problem with anything Francis said? In terms of the, what the message that she brought to JD, like she's relaying the message, but in terms of what JDF did, I absolutely do have a problem with what he did. What did he do um, wrong? He said that she looked embarrassed to be waiting on Heim Zabon and him. That's um, his interpretation, right? Yeah, that's assumption. Right, right, right. But, but as a true friend, you shouldn't do that, in <laughs> <See>? my opinion. <laughs> what do you mean? As a true friend. Why Why are you disclosing that she's in? But why, why is this? Why are you doing that? Why? As a true friend, you wouldn't. Just, if she was embarrassed waiting tables, 
why are you disclosing that? You like, know, she might have been, that might have been very well true, but but if you're a true friend, why does that matter that she's waiting tables? Why does it matter that she was an equal character right. at a show working together? And now she's starting to drink okay. water. Why does that you gotta, matter? You got to be quiet so April could talk. <laughs> I'm down, Brett. Take a deep breath. It's okay. <laughs> right. But here's why she would be embarrassed. You know why? Because she took a stand on the show saying, I'm never going to work for Saban. So no matter and at her and her new job, no matter what, even, oh, I can't work for you on Power Energy. He comes to her new job. Now, no matter what, she has to wait on him hand and foot. Hey, get my, get my water, get this, get that. So then that could be jarring if you're like, oh, Fuck, fuck Brent. I'm never going to work for Brent again. You go get a server job and now you, you're working at Starbucks and Brent comes in there like, yo, I want my uh, caramel uh, frappuccino. And you look up and it's the person you said you would never work for again. And Brent doesn't even recognize you. Oh, yeah. And, and Haim, Haim Sabai doesn't even recognize you. But you recognize him because you're like, hey, I want some more money. And he told you no. So for him to say she looked embarrassed, I'm like, I don't see the issue with that. Divulging that is not like a like a a, a horrible thing. That's his interpretation. Now, now what you're now what we're getting into is your personal um, opinion of how friends should conduct themselves. A different opinion that April would acknowledge as it's a different opinion than what the majority of but the it's like has. it's it's like bigger things that you should. Put your time into in my opinion in my opinion you should put but, your time into bigger thing is, things as opposed to being embarrassed because your channel is is a, accusing but why do friends get so worked up then dude if there's so many big maybe make because she takes issue with me calling her out of what she said and i have direct quotes and why does she take such an issue with it if it's such bigger things to worry about why is she not here i see why did she get so angry you didn't why woke she get up. so angry then you didn't because woke she up. Knows. <laughs> you know? Uh, all right. Well, let's drop Brent down. So oh, we can oh, talk well, about see, see, see the bias. Oh, okay. No, it's not bias, but it's, it is what it is. All right. So, oh. what do you think, April? Let Brent, Brent can stay back there. He worked up. I see, but you brought a big dog up. I saw Dom Rock hit the thing, and he only came up for important reasons. But go ahead, April. You got the floor. He's too heated. He always talks about facts of our feelings, but he's so heated. Calm down, dude. <laughs> These are two people who are no longer alive to retell the story or defend, you know, or say this is how I actually felt, first of all. So <sighs> this is just our assumptions in here, okay? I think the reason why is because the way he's interpreting it is not the way Francis meant for it to come out. And that's their go right there. How how you say things and how people interpret it could be two different things. All right, April, I'm gonna keep you up because you my my new co-host. All right, uh, Dom Rock, what's up, man? You've been with me. You you you've been with me a while, man. For you to cam up, I know it's major. I'm happy to be here, man. I mean, shoot, I think the last time I cammed up was the toxicology stream. But what what happened with this drama that just popped up out of nowhere? I so. Go ahead. So this thing that I just heard, yeah, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I'm sorry. Um, Brent said his he had a a stipulation about the standards of friendship with this whole <laughs> twee thing, right? Right. That was there was an issue with feeling embarrassed because who who feels embarrassed but a human? Why divulge well, they felt embarrassed if that's your friend? Well, I mean, let's let's be frank. I. I think that's a, a fair thing to assume, right? She seemed embarrassed. Well, that seems like a fair observation. I don't think that's like a biased interpretation. Um, but um, if we're talking about the standards of friendship, Brent, I mean, who platformed you, man? Who gave you a screen? Who gives you time? And, you know, like talk about who you are as a person to give them the time and be able to remove yourself like that. But when you get to the point of you know, going other places on the internet, talking underhandedly, calling people liar directly to their face, and they still have the patience for you. I think that says a lot more about you, man, that people are showing you the type of patience they might show their child. They might, <laughs> they to might give fair, you a little... <laughs> to be fair, you know, uh, other content creators would have banned him yeah. Uh, yeah. already. He would have been banned. But me, I'm like, well, I kind of, I kind of get him. I understand where he comes from. I know he hates JDF. <laughs> He won't go Zach Taylor McGinnis on it, uh, but he, he knows I know. Um, so I kind of take it with a grain of salt. And every now and then, guys, you know, Brent does bring gems for us to dissect and stories that we we may have not gotten without him. 
So, you know, it's kind of like, you know, that fine line. But uh, anything else you want to add, Dom? No, I mean, I just think that that's, that's a really good point. The Starbucks analogy was good. But, you know, I think for being someone, yeah, this whole this whole community that I'm so, you know, happy and grateful to be a part of, to have these screens, to have people on the same page. Hey, man, this is a facts over feeling area. I'm And I'm happy that it is because... <laughs> Brent, Brent's gotten away with the hearsay for this long. You know, you brought that up too. Brent's got a lot of he said, she said. We give him the credence and the respect because he goes to the cons, he does the footwork, and then he comes up. And a lot of the times, he sticks by what he says. And I give Brent his respect for that because whether I agree with him or not, he earns the respect by sticking what he says. He does not waver. Yeah, and I don't need to agree with you, but I, I, I see you. You know, you, you get to say what you want to say. But now when, you know personally and this is just this is just a brent because you know he's not here i he's here. i hope he's listening that, i i hope that you take it with some grace that you know you you're making these choices obviously people are seeing you say these things just reel it in a little bit don't put your foot through the cab of the car and go 100 percent and tell henry he's a liar but you know <laughs> but, it it brent, but it you know dom to be all fair i've told brent hey man this is how you should be conducting yourself um to come off better and uh maybe it goes in one ear and not the other maybe he just needs more time to work on it um uh you know i talked to brent off stream as well i know guys shocker i shocker i call him i called him and shit that's when he told me it was a lie april was like how did you know he said you was a liar i'm like because i called his ass i saw him put that shit in the comment section and i was like oh hey hey hold up hold up you know i i called him up and then that's how we got that. But go ahead, April. What do you think about Dom saying, does Brent go too far sometimes? Yes, he does. And going back to um, the Francis, Francis thing, I think Brent is so defensive about this situation. Instead of going, hey, let me, okay, Francis feels upset. Let me just apologize for doing whatever it is that upset her, right? Why does he need to, because he, you put him on tonight and it was immediately guns placed. <laughs> Look, as soon as I put them on to her, boop, 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 yeah. boop, 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 everyone was popping in <laughs> or whatever. Um, look, y'all voted them in. Now y'all voting them off. Like, it's so crazy how, how the vote be swinging uh, because it was when I put them on, it was where he was supposed to be on. Um, but, you know, I think y'all y'all think we can save Brent or is it is he a lost cause? Brent's Brent. You're not going to change him. <laughs> I'm not here to change his mind. I'm just trying to change how he uh, conducts himself and come off. Uh, you never in what, what's happening with Brent. I don't know if you guys notice uh, his dislike for JDF. Now we're talking about something as small as saying someone's embarrassed as being inappropriate. Now, now you went like, oh, that's inappropriate. A real friend wouldn't do that. Where I'm like, I mean, it's just someone being embarrassed. I don't. Some, that's their observation. It's not like he's saying he punched her or he, you know, ordered excessive waters. You know how it'd be when you want to, you know, uh, get under a server skin or anything. Uh, hey, he felt bad for her. She was embarrassed. She had to work for the man uh, that she didn't want to work for, even if he didn't even recognize her. So, mm -hmm. But it's even to the point where if JDF had told the story that Austin St. John told earlier. <laughs> Yo. Talking about if JDF had said that, oh, Brent would have been on it. Now, here's he would... the thing Brent has not brought me one clip to show anything different against JDF with being with the strike. He has not brought one, and I'm sure he's been looking, but he has not one clip of JDF backing up the whatchamacallit, where we've seen several clips of ASJ and Walter Wafflin, and he said they left things out just to, uh, to keep the peace or whatever. So, but thank you, Dom. But it's like the interpretation of hearsay, you know, like how many lawyers <laughs> interpret the hearsay of hearsay. Like, get that shit out of here. Right. You get that stuff out of here. Mm. Tell him, Dom. Tell him, Dom. And Dom, be, <laughs> Dom been champion the Resilient Army for a while. I appreciate you, Dom, man. So, for real, salute, man. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to drop down, Don. Thank you for coming up, man. Uh, Kenny Lowe, let's go. You know, he was, he team Francis. All day. This is the guy I was talking to. This is the guy who Francis was snickering with and I was making her ass laugh. He was <laughs> laughing. And then she was like, I know you told me, Henry, but I don't care. And I'm like, oh, my God, Francis. <laughs> See, he laughing because he's like, yeah, that shit did happen oh. like that. I Actually, I came up here to defend Francis one more time. Go because ahead. Because Britt is missing the point. He's really missing the point. April said it. You said it. 
Francis said it. The problem, bring. I hope you're listening. Nobody's jumping on you. I'm trying to get you to understand why she's upset. You did come up here um, the other night and said that she said Tweet was embarrassed about her job and Jason left because he was embarrassed. No, what she was saying and trying to get you to understand, he was embarrassed for her waiting on him at Hyam. I would be that too. Was, and that's the thing. He had that much uh, respect for her not to want her waiting on them in order for the, you know, you he has some respect for her to leave the restaurant is basically what I'm saying. Francis said that, and you just said she's lying and, you know, call her all, you know, saying, I'm just saying, now we can roll back the tape. He Look, said man, it. it's so juvenile. It's I know it's, it's juvenile, but I know it's juvenile. Look, my head hurt. I need to be in bed because I'm <laughs> going to uh, Atlanta Comic Con in the morning. I need to be up. But I just want to set the record straight. It's not that you, you know, you say you did twist her words, basically, is what I'm saying. You said she was embarrassed. She never said that. Yeah, man. Y'all got me going, man. I mean, it's... Yeah, really. We talked about this yesterday. Well, Thursday. We talked about yeah, this. Yeah, we did. And I was just like, this shit... I, and you knew how you knew my stance. I'm like, this is so petty, I Francis. I, look, I, I'm so I, better I, I than this. He didn't, say, he didn't say it far worse and you'd have brushed it off. And then this shit just hit, hit a nerve. And I'm just like... Oh my God. We had, like for me and friends had like so many things like mapped out. I'm like, okay, this is I was like, okay, you gonna put this out. We but gonna I, then I'ma react and it's just like <sighs> But I also told you too, it wasn't just that. It's the fact of if somebody says that like you say, it's Brent. Everybody knows it. But you got maybe like two, three, four people that come in here hears that. Run somewhere else and spreads it. There goes her credibility. I told you that's why she's more upset than anything. If Brent it's, can destroy your credibility, you ain't have none. It's Francis not even Brent. It's not even Brent. It's not Brent. It's the people who may think, you know, because like I told you, people were saying I'm scamming, but yet they're getting part of it. <laughs> they hey. call me a scammer, and I'm selling books, and people can show you they got books and t-shirts. I don't even get the money, but People was going around, and I have people still saying I'm a scammer. So I'm just telling you, word of mouth, because they were in my comment section. I had a list of people sitting up there. Oh yeah, they're scamming, they're scamming, but that was not true. Okay. So one person can come in. <laughs> Our little they, family. I'm just trying to tell you, this is why she's upset, and it's not. You know, you know she's gonna calm down, but I just want Brent to know. You have to be careful what you say because you can ruin somebody's reputation like that. Well, Just because you mentioned it, Kenny, uh, in April, saying? probably don't know this. Brent accuses uh, Francis of ruining Walter's reputation. You know, that's did that's, I just do that? Did I just do that? Yeah, he. What well, I just told y'all tonight, and I told him and Francis, and Stephanie sat there and told y'all exactly what he did to me. She saw it. So it's not like I'm sitting up here lying. His credibility had went down the drain before I even even met him because I've heard plenty of things about him. I have a friend that does voice acting. She heard stuff about him. Wow. So yes. I mean, all right, look, y'all, look, look, look. I know Kenny, we got to go. I'm I appreciate you coming up and, <laughs> and defending. For, he said he would defend her with his last breath. Uh, Stephanie, we can talk tomorrow unless it's like very pressing. Let's see what she said. Oh, this is uh okay. It's more Brent. Uh, like hey, you know, go ahead. To add real fast, Francis didn't get mad. That's not the first time that Brent's done something, right? This is like probably like the millionth thing that he's done. That finally she's like, you know what? I'm done with this guy. She knows that he's posted about her on Fan Ward. See, I didn't know about that shit. That, y'all get me with this new stuff. I'm like, what? She knows that. And she's glossy, like, okay, whatever. You know, let it slide off her back. She's let a lot of things slide. But this time, she was like, no, I'm done. You know uh, what I mean? I don't know what he's posting on Fan Word. Is, it, is he posting stuff on Fan Word that he would get kicked out or blocked on chat for over here? You know me, yeah. <laughs> oh, it is? Mm-hmm. Send me some screenshots. Not that I don't trust you. Send me some goddamn screenshots. I hope he ain't doing it. I hope he not. I hope it's not true. 
I hope it's not true. I mean, I'm going to have to talk to April again at like 3 o'clock in the goddamn morning. And so is the actor. I don't know his real name, but yeah. Yeah. Send me the proof. I want to see this shit. If he's saying stuff that uh, would get him banned on the channel, then I, I, we will have to, we have to take it. Maybe the union, the new union, the women of the Henry Resilient oh, no. channel, uh, <laughs> could take a vote. You know, I'll be the tiebreaker and decide and vote um, if it's a tie. But the women of the union, that's God is Div, that's Petty, that's Sand, that's Joe Nilda. Um, that's April, um, that's Cheyenne who probably went to sleep. Uh, but we might, we might see people say, hurry up and go delete it. Go screenshot it. Go screenshot it. Y'all All right. Any last words, April? Nope. That was it. <laughs> Thank you for camming up and coming on and, uh, not being scared of everything. And, uh, <laughs> I appreciate it. Uh, who's the, who's the leader of the union? There's no leader. There's no union. Who's the union rep? We got we got to do the union. If you're a woman on the channel, you part of the union, all right? Because the men, y'all let me down tonight. For like for about 10 minutes, it was just all women in the chat talking some women rule the world, and I didn't see no man <laughs> combat it. And I was just like, I couldn't combat it because it was just me. So I was like, oh, shit. And it was my mods. I was like, all right, I ain't going to try to piss them off. All right, well, thank you, April. All right, peace. <laughs> All right, that was April. Dana, uh, Dominatrix, we said we'll talk tomorrow, right? We good on that? Thumbs up on tomorrow? All right, cool, cool, cool. Brent is Brent is in, in purgatory right now. He in purgatory. I got to call him, see what the fuck he been doing on other platforms. Like, God damn, why y'all just now telling me this shit? Why are y'all just now telling me that Brent been talking shit on other uh, platforms? Like, y'all be killing me. Y'all be killing me. Anyway. Uh, send me those clips. Um, I keep trying to stop doing Ranger content, but y'all just keep reeling me back in. Reeling me. Y'all just be reeling me in. I just be like, God damn, God damn. But anyway, um, today was a good stream. Uh, watch out for, uh, because we do like Brent. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> look, see, look, he like, here we stop looking for excuses. Your channel. He like, fuck with them saying he like, just acknowledge me. <laughs> We're like, look, Francis mentioned it yesterday. To who? To me? Shout out to Goddess Div. I said you was part of the union. Look, the if you a woman, you part of the union. Even Petty, yeah, you know I'm saying she a part of the union. I mean, she might, she might, she might try to peg you, but she's still part of the union. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we need a president. I need I need to know who the leader of the union is. Okay, it got to be April or Sand because y'all the mods. So one of y'all got to one of y'all got to sack up. Um, anyway, <laughs> anyway, um, I appreciate. God damn, we kept a solid audience. These Ranger streams are growing um, at a at a large rate, man. Which is which is interesting. Um, we putting up some numbers that maybe like what if i what if i just did dedicate this channel to like rangers and stuff i don't know twitch is where the views are at man it, it, it get crazy and petty like yeah i would peg these dudes out here you know what i'm saying she like you bend over and you get pegged anyway shout out to goddess div you know what i'm saying she is a woman 100 percent, and getting married all that good stuff we wish her the best of luck uh, this was a f damn near almost a what was it five hour stream four and a half hour four four hour stream god damn god breaking me man anyway uh peace love salutations be careful who you donate to especially if you expecting something in return like being an extra in the goddamn movie that shit may not happen but if you go into any any, any of these rangers ask them about the order Ask them about the money. Where did it go? How was it spent? Okay, keep your... <laughs> oh, man. Man, this Power Rangers content is crazy. Someone said, keep your channel open. Power Rangers stuff goes through highs and lows. Um, see, I'm with you. I'm, I'm actually with this statement. Henry, if Brent is doing stuff on other platforms to get him banned... He should be banned here. I agree. I agree with this statement. I haven't seen it though. You know, I hate to I hate to play the the I need the proof guy, but if he's saying like stuff on other channels that would be bannable here, it's like I feel like I have to ban him. I don't know, man. I gotta talk to him, see what the fuck's going on, you know, get every everyone's side of the story. 
Um, always donate to me in these nuts. <laughs> oh man. Um, I don't know what's going on with Brent. Is he going off? <laughs> Is Brent going off? I see him rocking back and forth. Who am I call after? Who should I call after the stream? Brent or April? Put B or A in the chat for who I should call after stream. Brent or April? Both? God damn. Both. God damn. You look Brent like both. Both. Jesus. It's two o'clock in the morning, Brent. Shit. Maybe me first. Oh, shit. What the hell? <laughs> Get proof. See, I kind of want proof. And people said they would miss Brent. Yeah. Uh, you would be lying about the channel's heart. Oh, man. April, April, April. You know what the crazy thing is? Sometimes I don't even have to hit April up and she'd be like, hey. <laughs> Francis, Francis be ignoring me. I called her. She'd be like, fuck you, Henry. Fuck you. I know you told me that I should ignore him, but I can't. I can't do it. I'd be like, oh my God, what the fuck? Anywho. You got to check check out Ranger Board. Uh, there's some old Q and A's. Um, I did go on Ranger Board, and then I think they blocked me and shit. They said I'm clickbait. They said I'm I'm clickbait. It was like you clickbait. I'm like, this is a fucking old interview. They like, nah, you clickbait. I'm like, all right, fuck y'all. <laughs> um, I, that, and that's the thing. The whole side of Reddit on Power Rangers, they have no idea I exist. They have no idea, and they got so many questions on there. But I'm like, I'm blocked. So, um, anywho. But maybe I think I'm going to go to sleep. I think I owe Stephanie a call, Brent a call, April a call. And then we got to got to get this family back together and shit. You know, on my Dominic Toretto, we a family. And I know Brent be pissing people off, but we got to we got to come together and be a family out here and see what the hell's going on with Francis, our fallen sister of the union. Because <laughs> we got a union now. The women on the channel are protected. They didn't unionized against me. Goddamn. God damn. Shit, they challenging my manhood. Challenging my manhood. <laughs> oh, fans. Oh, man. <laughs> you say customers, they call me. All right, anyway, anyway. All right, guys. Uh, peace, love. Um, who, I don't know who y'all got for Super Bowl. We were supposed to talk about that shit, but um, I'm not streaming until, the, uh, whatchamacallit? Uh, Valentine's Day. Um, I don't even know what I'm going to stream about on Valentine's Day, but, you know, shout out to all the lovers. You know what I'm saying? How are you going to handle this? Well, it's hard because Francis don't want to talk. <laughs> so you're like, how are you going to handle it? I'm like, I don't know. She was she was laughing and shit. Like, I don't think she hate me because I didn't say she was fucking lying. I'm just like, come on, girl. You're stronger than that. You're better than that. She's like, no, Henry. Oh. I'm like, oh. But she's standing with a smile on her face. And she ain't blocking me, so I'm like, mm, you know, she'd be loving my ass. You know what I'm saying? Love of my life. She was talking, like, this is how women be, guys. This is how women be. I'm a, Francis is a classic woman. She'd be like, oh, I love you so much. Thank you so much for helping me out. Blah, 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 blah. And the next day, fuck you. <laughs> I'm like, what the hell going on? And I think I was explaining it to somebody. Maybe, oh, you know, I was explaining it to Kenny Lowe. I'm like, I had a plan. I told her the plan, and she's like, I didn't have time to tell her the plan while I was, um, while we were alive, and then she thought I was ignoring her, because you can message me on, uh, private chat, where Britain's, like, ridiculous, looking for excuses, he's, like, screenshot it, you know, uh, stuff like that, um, but I don't see this if I don't have it open, and, like, what people don't realize is I'm looking at one, two, three, four, five six screens is six things i have to keep an eye on so if you are on this page and this tab is not up or my head is not like looking over here i'm not gonna see that shit so then people will say i'm ignoring them so and it just it just goes downhill lee francis she needs her time like what the fuck? <laughs> i swear man only because someone from the union said it the union i like the union i love the union. anyway guys i can keep yapping for for as long as people will talk, I will be yapping. She is not, man. You tripping. You tripping. If she do my stream. <laughs> if she do my stream, oh my God, for the culture. <laughs> um, 
I would lose it. I would lose my shit. I might fan out just a little bit. Then I get I get down to the nitty gritty. Like, hey, um, you know, there's a recent video that um, some people put out saying that you changed your mind about striking. Is there any truth to that you were on board with the strike? You see, I just answer yes or no questions. I don't ask that. Give me an example shit questions. Hey, in, any truth that you were on board with the strike? No, I wasn't. All right, cool, 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 cool. Because Walter said you were. And uh, <laughs> Austin St. <Saint> Lion ass <laughs> John said you were too. You know, Austin, I need the PPP money, said you were. Uh, I just needed to clarify, little mama. So could you tell me out? She's going to be like, oh, no. Anyway, now nah, you guys still got a crush on her, bro. She didn't, she, she didn't seem better days. I'm here to tell you. But maybe she'll join the union. <laughs> maybe we can get, maybe Petty can get her to, uh, if you bring AG on, I will lose my shit, bro. If if I bring a if she come on, I would lose my shit. Like, yo, holy shit. I would fan out for probably like two minutes. Like, and she'd probably be like, do not mention you had a crush on me. Just do don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it, Henry. Don't say you had a crush on me because I fucking know already. <laughs> I know already. Hold on. All right. All right. Last thing before we get out of here. <laughs> last thing, last thing. You'd be like, I do not want to hear that shit. I don't want to hear it. Don't say it. Don't hint at it. Don't allude to it. I'm like, oh, though you want to just see me in a pink spandex and shit. She'd be like, don't fucking do it. And I'd be like, did you know that? <laughs> like, I would fucking, I would fuck it up. I would fuck it up. Like, how do you feel though growing that you know a lot of men uh growing up had a crush on you and <laughs> shit? Like I'm like, yo, we have to address it. It's the elephant in the room. And I'd be like, you know, just say that you're you're flatter and all this other shit. And that, you know, but you're beyond that. And uh and then tell me how Chanzo dropped the ball at the bar. She's like, well, you know, it was this black guy at the bar that I did have something for, and I thought we were gonna do something. <laughs> And then he totally fanned out on me. And then I just was like mortified. <laughs> Kenzo, where you at? Acknowledge me. <laughs> Acknowledge this goddamn story. But anyway, y'all. Anyway, let me stop playing. Uh, if a hey, if he gets if Sean gets her on the on the stream, you gotta co-host it with me, brother. You gotta go host it with me. See, look, everybody had to crush on her. Like, look, even Kenlo, like, look, man, I ain't gonna hold you. But I would chop her down. <laughs> I'll chop her. I'll, hey, look, brother. Hey, when she, when she, when she get this, yeah, you know I'm saying she ain't going back. <laughs> That's all I gotta say. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. I know my mom and grandmother be watching the stream. My mom was over today. She's like, I watch all of them. I hate when you talk about Power Rangers, though. I hate it. I don't. I don't like it. I like when you talk about the other stuff. <laughs> I just be like. I'd be like, hey yo, what the fuck? <laughs> this shit ain't for you. It ain't for you. It's for us and my fans. But anyway, guys, y'all be y'all be easy. Y'all have a good night. Um, I'll see you Wednesday. And um I gotta clip Drew. Um, cause he was cooking. He was cooking. He was cooking. Tell Francis. Tell Francis, um, you know, I this, there's a, a bunch of things that I just want to tell Francis. I just want to tell her that. And that. And we. All right. Make sure y'all tell her that. All right. Cool. Y'all going to tell her that for me. All right. Cool. 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 I'm glad. I'm happy. Y'all going to tell her for me. Um, I, you know, I, I just I just put some stuff out. Maybe y'all gonna relay the message and uh, then we should be cool. You should have her back. <laughs> All right, y'all. Uh, seriously, be nice, be kind, like the stream on the way out. Uh, put the Drews in the chat because Drews was the highlight. Um, and I will see you on Valentine's Day. See all my lonely people, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? See what y'all getting into. Put the Drews in the chat, put the D's in the chat. And with that being said,